Spitfire ground, St Lawrence. The haze is burning off here that we've had this morning and uh, looks like a beautiful day for cricket. And we have what could be an absorbing contest. Well, it will be an absorbing contest, I'm sure, today with Northamptonshire 300 for 7, 195 ahead. Rob Keogh on 101, Gareth Berg on 49. They are well set. They'll want to bat on through the morning, perhaps even a little bit beyond, and then get at Kent this afternoon. Kent hoping for three quick wickets and then a dart at whatever total is left for them to go at. I'm Matt Cole. Alongside me, Andrew Rad. I'll repeat what I said in the preview. Simon Cook, I think he put it beautifully last night, the other Kent coach, delicately poised. Isn't it just? Yes, morning, Matt. Morning, everybody. Uh, it is. It's beautifully poised. And those of us that were... Uh uh, making inquiries as to what the Dartford Crossing is like on a Saturday evening because uh, we thought we were going to be away yesterday. Uh, well, I'm delighted to say we didn't have to worry about that. We've got to worry about it tonight instead. Um, it's it's beautifully poised. Um, I think Northamptonshire, uh, you know, the danger, I suppose, is, is that because the day finished so strongly for Northamptonshire yesterday, they're, you know, the mindset might be, OK, you know, we've, we've almost done it. Well, they haven't. They've still got a lot of work to do. I was talking to Rob Keogh. Um, at some length last night and uh, you know they're, they're very mindful of the fact that they've still got a, a real job of work to do here we were saying off air if Northamptonshire are still batting in an hour's time they will feel that they're definitely in the game because by then you would think given you know re normal rate of scoring they're going to be on, what 230 240 ahead and and that was actually the figure that Rob Keogh was talking about he said if the league can be stretched to around about 230 240 remember it's 195 at the moment um, then although the pitch they do feel and I think Simon Cook made this point as well is probably rolled out and is just flattening out a little bit there is still the odd one doing something and what Rob Keogh said which was quite interesting was that he thought um, if it's a question of maybe chasing four and over, something like that, it might not be that easy to score quickly on mm. if uh, they bowl anything like. But from Kent's point of view, if they can knock the last three over quickly and they're ch only chasing just over 200, 220 or something with, I don't know, what, 80, 85 overs to go, then they'll think, absolutely, we're in the box seat and we ought to win this game. So it's, well, all results possible, and this is absolutely what you want going into the fourth day of a, of a four-day match either side could win it could be a draw could be a tie okay. um, so lots to look forward to and um, the, these two Rob Keogh and Gareth Berg with the job of playing themselves back in again I did like the line did you hear that uh, Rob Keogh was saying about Sam Billings had been uh, saying to him when he was out oh yeah you know, kind of bank holiday weekend in Kent you know lovely finish the game nice and early well that, that one's not going to happen no indeed not um, we are set for I would expect to fall down. unless something extraordinary happens with the with bat or ball. Um, we probably will be right here until the limits, won't we? But uh, Northampton will be hoping that Northamptonshire will be hoping that they uh, get a big score, declare a bit round lunch just after lunch. I think maybe is the plan, yeah. and then and then bowl Kent out for fifty or sixty, and they'll they'll be home a bit early. <laughs> but uh, all things, as you say, all those things are still possible, which is the wonderful yeah, the, thing the, about uh, the first this thing match. That, that, from Northampton's point of view, the first thing is they need these two to play themselves back in yeah. again and and bat. I would have thought for you know for another, let's say half an hour minimum, an hour probably to to really give themselves a a chance of a, of a testing target. But equally, Kent will be determined to uh, for that not to be the case. I was just going to see if Grant Stewart's on the field. Do we know anything about? Uh, I'm not expected to bowl for the rest of the match, no. so I, I think um, actually that's a good question. Just looking around, um, it's precautionary f with him really. Um, they haven't said the nature of the injury, but one they don't want to. Uh, certainly, yes, they weren't risking. I'll just check it out. Hogan will start. He got through a lot of overs yesterday. To Berg, who defends that, and there's no run first ball of the day. Berg is a uh, run shy of a fifty lest we forget the stand at 92 as well so some landmarks may well be um, popping up during the day I think did enjoy the line I was saying to uh, to Rob Keogh that uh, if, there are, if there's a better number nine in uh, in domestic cricket in this country then uh, then I'm, I can't think of them off hand we'll come back to that in a second yeah. give you the punchline is uh, Hogan to Berg who drives that pleasantly into the offside it's fielded by oh there we are there's the, the sub it's James Logan on the offside boundary and that is Gareth Berg's 50 well he had to wait overnight for it but 106 balls seven fours for the uh, 
I would say self-styled, but uh, styled. <laughs> <laughs> Best number nine in county cricket. Well, he was he, Gareth Berg. He said Rob Rob Keogh said that um, he'd actually come up to him, uh, Gareth Berg, come up to Rob during the partnership yesterday and said. Uh, uh, I'm the best number nine in world cricket. Um, so, well, well, yes. It's like backing yourself. Here's uh, Hogan to uh, Keo, who's on uh, 101. Well, he may well prove it today. Who knows, so. Well, I mean, that, that's a bit of a joke. But I mean, the point, the point we, were, and we were saying on commentary yesterday, Matt, mm. is it is unusual to have somebody batting at nine in a in a championship side with a, with an average of first class average of of over 28. And a couple of hundreds, although he hasn't made a first-class hundred for some time. This is his uh, fourth half-century for Northamptonshire since he made the move, and his 31st, I think, in all in all first-class cricket. In comes Hogan for the uh, fourth ball of the morning to Rob Keogh, inside part of the bat, but just moving forward and plays it up to Daniel Belldrum to immediately picks the ball up at mid-on and shines it on the back of his whites. Uh, tending to it now for Michael Hogan and I did say to Simon Cook and uh, the Kent coach last night or ask him said a few more overs than you necessarily want <laughs> your uh, your uh, certainly your opening pair to go through and he said well fortunately we had a light load in the first innings but yeah not ideal he said outside the off stump and actually Keogh moved immediately took a step across his stumps uh, or even further across his stumps outside off and has just let that go through the wicket keeper it's certainly a gorgeous morning. It was it was quite misty where I say where I'm staying out towards the uh, the coast, out Whitstable Way. It was uh, it was very misty this morning, but it's it's lovely here now. There's a bit of cloud around, but uh, forecast is good all day. It's not great for tomorrow. It must be said for your no. your trek up to my part of the world. <laughs> but uh, it's football it's, weather tomorrow. Yeah, football cricket weather today, today. Cricket <laughs> weather today. That's all right. That's fine. It's Hogan Bowles to uh, Keo. Right, solidly behind that, up to mid-off, and there is no run. This uh, this ball is 29 overs old from the very first. I mean, I, I shouldn't, you know, I'm not pressuring the rest of the day by saying it, but from that first over, it didn't feel like there was a lot going on with the ball, and that will be very, very reassuring for uh, Northamptonshire uh, and their camp as well. Simon Cook again saying he thought the, the use of the heavy roller yeah. that this pitch had... He said flattened out a bit. Had sort of three three goes at it, doesn't it? The yeah. heavy roller, yeah, so yeah. it may well have had some effect. Well, it's going to be Joey Everson to commence proceedings from this uh, pavilion end. One of the little records that came out and little stats that came out of yesterday, of course, is Rob Keogh's fifteen hundred for Northamptonshire, which puts him level with several players, including David Capel. We'll come back to that in a second because I know Matt, you need to update BBC Radio. Thank Kent. you very much. Just coming to us now. <laughs> All right. Gardening presenter Andy Garland has predicted the weather all the way through. Everson to bowl now. Bowling to uh, Burke. Ooh, swing and a miss. Loose shot through the wicket keeper. 3017. 47, I should say. Yeah, it's been a fine effort by this Northamptonshire pair. Gareth Berg has just gone to 50. Had to wait overnight to uh, get one more run. And 101 for uh, Rob Keogh. They are the ones that have uh, performed the comeback for Northamptonshire. As I said, it's very fine to watch from a neutral's point of view. If you're a Kent fan, very frustrating indeed. As you said, Andy, yesterday I looked around about lunchtime that Kent might finish off Northamptonshire and have a win within three days. Now Northamptonshire probably have the upper hand. They are 196 ahead now with Kent still to bat again. Kent need quick wickets this morning to press the advantage and hopefully hopefully to knock off the runs in what will be a very exciting day's play. So all the results still possible on the final day and fantastic sunshine as I'm sure you forecast Andy as well as this one is uh, driven out to the boundary by Gareth Berg. Four more to the total so yeah set fair for the day. Beautiful sunshine for the crowd here and surely some absorbing cricket as well. As you say commentary continuing via the BBC Sport website and app. an expansive stroke from uh, Gareth Burke. Yeah, absolutely. Lovely drive. That was through, through the kitchen sink and, and every other part of the uh, the kitchen at that, and takes the lead past 200. And they respond by I was going to say by putting a third slip in, which I've mar marvelously, but it's not. It's uh, it's point where 
leaning heads now. Feels a bit of a sleepy start, not least because there's not a big crowd in. It's no. very sparse today. Yes. So no, and, and that's a shame. And, and it's a, and they sort of missed it yesterday as well, which yeah. is a, which was a great pity as well because uh, you know, there weren't too many in. And yeah, it, admittedly conditions. It was cold. It was it yeah. would have been cold sitting out, but it was a wonderful day's cricket. And uh, today should be likewise. So let's hope if you can, uh, within reach of Canterbury, yeah. can well. Perhaps they've had enough of Easter eggs and they're going to have a little wander down and, and watch some cricket. I'm sure you could bring them in if you want. I'm sure you probably could. <laughs> Here's uh, Joey Everson continuing from the pavilion end. Bowls to Berg. Good ball. Tucks him up a little bit. Plays it out into the covers. And uh, there's no run. So 305 for seven. The lead is exactly 200. As we mentioned just before you had to go and update Radio Kent about David Capel and uh, David Rob. Keogh's 15th first-class 100 puts him level with David Capel in the uh, all-time North Hampshire list, and I think that was something he appreciated very much because David Capel was involved in the earlier part of Rob Keogh's career as Everson comes in, bowls to Berg, and it's an inside edge as he tries to force that away off the back foot, misses the stumps, it happened a couple of times yesterday, yeah. runs down towards short fine leg, Sam Billings sheds a glove, retrieves, and that's the end of the over, 305 for seven, Keogh is 101, Berg is 54, the lead is exactly 200. Um, and yes, Rob Keogh was saying that it was David Capel who basically gave him his first team debut as a, as a T20 cricketer way back in uh, 2011, I think that was. And so he uh, was involved also as he was coming up through the academy. And as he, as he said, I was a boy from Dunstable up to no good in the academy. So uh, yeah, it meant quite a lot to him, I think, to, to be moved into that sort of bracket. So Michael Hogan from the Nackington Road end here. Two slips for Kent. Jordan Cox is a little way away from Sam Billings, but next to Zach Crawley at second slip, left through to uh, the wiki keeper, and there's no run. Just wonder if the, so there have been a, a few um, inside edges past the stumps in this match, and just perhaps betrays the ball still doing something. Yeah. It's still unpredictable. It's not all batter error that by any means, is it? It's it's just they're not quite. No, uh, I'd be surprised the if, it, if the odd one isn't still going to do a, a yeah. little bit. It's a question of, of frequency and degree, I suppose, isn't it? How, how often and, and what it does. So 305 for 7, 101 for Rob Keogh, who faces now both the right-handers. Short ball from Hogan, and it's down the leg side. It's pretty ugly. He apologised to his, his to his wicketkeeper and captain, Sam Billings, for that one, who had to sprawl to his left. They came through for a bye, and uh, as I said yesterday my colleague Ben Watts uh, if he's listening or watching will be grinding his teeth and muttering under his breath he's uh, a firm believer that uh, a wide should be a a wide yeah. much the same as it is in uh, one day cricket but I, uh, think, we are. I think the keeper might feel a little aggrieved yeah, with that one to be, to be perfectly honest but uh, Hogan bowls to uh, Berg pulls that away elegantly and will that be four? Everson is scampering around the boundaries to get it. It's a, a wide open spaces at mid-wick. It's a long boundary that side. I should explain that in just a second, but they come back for a comfortable two, and that is the 100 partnership. 56 of them for Gareth Berg, 39 for Rob Keogh. So uh, a fantastic innings by Gareth Berg. We've been talking a lot about Rob Keogh, but he has been aided and abetted and some uh, by his batting partner here. Hazy sunshine at the moment, but getting pleasantly... Oh, no! Bowled him! Bowled him! Gareth Berg has his middle stump ripped out of the ground. Spectacular sight, but he has done a fantastic job for his side. But that uh, partnership lasts exactly 100. And just uh, perhaps a little bit quicker from Michael Hogan there. Uh, lovely delivery. Kent have a wicket. And uh, there we go. I wasn't trying to commentate his cursive, but saying, well, oh, it doesn't seem to be very much happening. And then suddenly, <laughs> middle stump out of the ground, and the game takes another twist, which is what we love Absolutely. about four day cricket and five day cricket. 308 for eight. So, a chance for Kent, perhaps, but applause for Gareth Berg, and quite rightly so. What an innings that is for a number nine. Well, I think I'm with you. I think there was a little bit of it was a bit of an effort ball. I think from Michael Hogan, it did seem a little bit quicker, and it really did rattle through, as you say, not middle stump out of the ground, much the same as uh, Sam what happened to Sam Whiteman at the hands of uh, Matt Quinn in the first innings when the middle stump went for a walk. But that's the breakthrough that Kent needed. The partnership exactly a hundred. Been pointing out, um, in fact, Rob Kerr was talking about it yesterday that it was it was a year to the day 
um, April the 8th, 2022, that, that the same two batters put on, that was 137, I think, against Gloucestershire for the eighth wicket in the first match of the season up at Wantage Road. So um, they seem to favour that particular date, underline it in the calendar, see what, what happens next year. Now, uh, interestingly, Jack White is coming out at number 10. Uh, this surprises me a little. There may be a, a very good reason for it, because, uh, as I say, Chris Tremaine has a, a first-class 100 to his uh, credit. Jack White is on a king pair, but um, Rob Keogh is having a, a good chat with him. <laughs> I think it may be... There may not be quite enough time for a sort of batting masterclass from, uh, from Rob Keogh, but it is going to be Jack White to face. And, well... As I say, on a king pair, having been bowled by Matt Quinn, first ball in the first innings, one that just clipped the top of off stump. As I say, he's uh, idiosyncratic with the bat, I think it's fair to say, Jack White. Let's see if he can uh, add anything to the total. So Hogan gets a wicket. He's so richly deserved in this, uh, this innings, as we were saying yesterday. But round the wicket to the left-hander, who... Rod's down on that. I mean, he's pushed it straight back at the bowler. I don't want to project too much, but uh, that's uh, a dot ball. Anyway, three or eight for eight. Yes, he was. He, I mean, he has a good eye, and he, yeah. was put, he was put up the order at Cheltenham last year in, in a nice. run chase on the last day. Um, and his his response was, I think, with Brian Rickleton going well at the other end, was was to to go for a reverse sweep first ball, which he actually middled. Uh, but you never quite know what you're going to get with uh, with Jack. We'll certainly have a good time, I think, while he's there. Three slips in, and uh, White up towards his midriff this one, and, yeah, comfortably just uh, moved out into the onside. Joe Denley fields at square leg, and that is uh, a single. They'll probably be quite happy he took, actually, because they'll he'll have the strike for the start of the next over. Applause for Michael Hogan. Um, almost feels like Michael Hogan... He Bowled so well, he's bowled so well in this innings, beaten the bat on a number of occasions, all sorts of, well, pieces of, I'd say terrible luck, but perhaps bad luck as well from a bowling point of view, not to get his first wicket. Feels like justice. This is what I have to do to get a wicket, Michael Hogan's almost saying. <laughs> I well, I have to bowl him <laughs> to, to knock a stump out the ground. Well, he's, uh, obviously, but, uh, Jack, Jack White's then gone in to protect Rob Keogh. Because um, he took the single off the second <laughs> ball, so he's off, he's off a pair at any rate. Well, there we go. So it is going to be. Joey Everson to continue. Bowled a, a decent first over from this end. It's I see it is a glorious sunny morning. Three slips in place, then there's a short mid wicket, backward point, mid off, mid on, and a square leg as Everson comes in, bowls and that jags back in to Jack White, who takes it rather painfully, I suspect, on the top of the thigh pad. But no damage done. Rob Keogh comes down to have a word with him. Keo still there on 101. Still with some work to do, but needs, not that much a need really, a bit of, a bit of a contribution from the tail. As Everson is in, bowls to White, who's not exactly totally in line, but nevertheless plays it solidly enough up to mid off, and there's no run. I think I've got a bit of a statistical. Uh, anomaly here, not an anomaly, uh, just a, a curio is more the word. On. I believe when Lewis McManus went, mm. it was a 41 partnership with Rob Keogh, and Keogh was on 41 not out. Ooh. Here's Everson in again, bowls to White, pushes it up to mid-off again, and there's no run. I'm afraid I've just blown a hole in my own logic. It was a partnership of exactly 100, wasn't yes, it? It was. I was <laughs> for 101 because I was thrown. I was thinking that would be, be a, oh, a yes. weirder one, wouldn't it? Yeah. Keogh was on 101, and the partnership was 101. But anyway. No, it's a partnership. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. no. Do that. Part <laughs> partnership was exactly, uh, it was exactly 100. So I looked uh, up and they'd added well, one. Andrew yeah. Hall and James Middlebrook are safe in the record books for at least the time being, as Everson comes in bowls to White, and again, that just angles back into the left-hander but he gets in behind that one okay plays it up to short mid-wicket and there's no run and now Sam Billings pushes the field out to so try and give White the single if he wants to take it the man at point has gone out onto the boundary similarly the man at square leg has gone out onto the boundary there's a, a, a long leg on the boundary down towards the main scoreboard Here's Everson in bowls to White, who's pushing that out into the covers, and they're taking the single. So there's one ball left in the over. 
Sam Billings is quite happy to give Jack White the single and Jack White's happy to take it. So everybody's happy, um, except possibly Rob Keogh. But uh, anyway, he, he, he set off for it, so he obviously has great confidence in his partner. White is two, Northamptonshire 310 for eight. So the lead is 205. He's just joining us, having... I don't know, had to go, go out to the recycling bin to put all the chocolate wrappings in. Northamptonshire losing the wicket of Gareth Berg early on. Here's Everson in bowls to Keogh, solidly in behind that, plays it back down the pitch. Nicely fielded off his own bowling by Joey Everson. That's the end of his 23rd over of the innings. Three maidens, two for 57. And Northamptonshire 310 for eight, with Keogh on 101, Jack White on two. Uh, yes, Gareth Berg having just brought up the 100 partnership between himself and Rob Keogh at his middle stump knocked out by Michael Hogan. He was out for 56. Partnership exactly 100 in 32 overs together. That was uh, 308 for 8. And just the two singles added, courtesy of Jack White, taking it 310 for 8. Let's start to think about the lead as it is. Simon Cook saying yesterday, as uh, Hogan comes around the wicket to Jack White, and just uh, defends that one, back at the bowl. There's no run. His scenario was quick wickets, 2.20, 2.30, that'll be an interesting chase. I think, but outside that, obviously what he's not going to mm. say, 2.50 becomes yeah, tricky, risky, I would say. The figure Rob Keogh kept coming out with, and he'd said it two or three times in the interview I did with him, was 2.30, 2.40, something yeah. like that, they thought would be would be really interesting. Yeah. Here's uh, Hogan to, oh, it's a lovely delivery, outside the, uh, the off stump. Perhaps made look to look better by a bit of a, a waft outside the off stump by Jack White. He's just a little bit firm footed, isn't he, Jack White? Doesn't use yeah. his doesn't use his feet very much, um, which is a little a little disconcerting at times. We ought to say, of course, uh, happy birthday today to one of the greats of uh, Kent and England cricket, Alan Knott. Indeed, yeah, seventy seven today, I think. Wonderful. Uh, we well, say production line of fantastic wicket keepers, but many would say, well. He's right up there. Here's uh, Hogan to uh, to White. <laughs> I have to be careful what I say in these parts, as you know, with the wicket keepers. Oh, so uh, <laughs> up to <laughs> up to bit on. Are you saying he's better than Godfrey Evans? Well, well, you've um, had some you've had some good ones. Certainly, growing up, he was the he was the one for for yeah. Kent and England for me. So well, he was my my late one of my late mother's favourite cricketers. Mm. It was him and uh, him and Basil Dolivera in the in the sixties and seventies. That she was a big fan of both of them and. Uh, not a bad judge. Two fine cricketers. Three, ten, four, eight. Three slips in behind Jack White. Hogan comes over the wicket now, and uh, ball coming up toward middle stump on a good length. Just uh, driven up to mid on, and there's no run. Um, I may be wrong in this, but it feels like he was very much ahead of his time and probably broke the mould in the in the seventies in the in the way that he kept so fit yes. that fitness was massively important to yeah. a very modern cricketer in that way for ever doing calisthenics wasn't he and, and, and he stretches was, and he was regarded it was a bit faddy wasn't it at the time and people didn't quite uh, didn't quite understand it or appreciate it the uh, Hogan outside the off stump a long way outside White obliged him by having a a little drive at it, but uh, doesn't get the edge, and there's no run. And his son James might be listening. Uh, I know he, he does uh, does follow cricket still closely. James is uh, involved at Stowe School on the Northamptonshire Buckinghamshire board. It does a terrific job there with with the young cricketers there. So if you are listening, morning James. Good morning indeed. But he feels like a very modern wicket keeper, but f 50 years yes. before, and, yeah. I, and and there my knowledge ends in that I'm not sure what keepers looked like before him but if that makes sense is uh, Hogan driven by White a little bit uppish but he's taken a single off the last four of the over <laughs> to Danny Beldrum so Ken would have loved a catch but I don't oh, think dear. they'll be that I'm happy to have six more balls at uh, at, uh, at Jack White, but uh, oh. but yeah, there we go. Alan Knott's birthday today. What a, what a fantastic uh, figure! But it, it just occurred to me that the the his contemporaries at that time were not the same. They weren't the agile, um, all action behind no, the absolutely. stumps keeper, which is a very modern thing, isn't it? No, he was uh, he was a well, fantastic keeper, and I mean as, as a as a batter, and in terms of, can you imagine what he'd be like batting in? In T20 now, the, the, the sort of improvisations that he had, even in, in Test cricket, he had very much his own style, and 
think a lot of cricketers of that sort of era, my goodness, they'd be coining it in, wouldn't they? Here's Everson bowling to Jack White, who is hit that away past short mid-wicket. I must admit, I was looking at the fielder. It was in the air, but it eluded him. It's run out towards the boundary, and they come back for two. So Jack White is clearly intent on shielding Rob Keogh. He goes to eight, and he runs. And Northamptonshire, 318 for eight. I mean, it's one of the joys many many joys of doing what we do in that you think you've seen everything and then you get this sort of situation where the guy's gone out and he's trying to protect the guy on a hundred anyway here's white well he was standing up tall and i think the idea was maybe a a cut at that delivery outside the off stump from joey everson in the end he thought better of it it goes through to sam billings so there's never a dull moment when uh, when jack white's out there 313 for eight the lead is 208 so you'd think Northamptonshire would dearly love another, what, 30 runs? Something like that. Here's Everson. Bowls to White. He's looking to paddle that away around the corner. I think it's hit him on the pad. It, there's a pre-signal there from the umpire. And indeed, it signals a leg by. Runs down towards fine leg. So one more onto the total. 314 for eight. Kent will be very excited now. They're going to get three balls at Rob Keogh, and he's, <laughs> a, he's only got 101 on the board. Yeah, they've got the they've, they've, they've got he's the rally played himself in. They've got the rabbit down that end now. <laughs> so you know, Rob Keogh is he hasn't seen very much of the bowling at all this morning, but he's on 101. Two slips in, and he's facing this ball from Joey Everson. Comes right across his stumps, pushes it up into the gap between backward point and extra cover. There is a man back there sweeping, but he's able to come through for the single. So. Rob Keogh scores his first run of the morning. He goes up to 102. And Northamptonshire to 315 for eight. That's a lead of 210. We will, of course, keep you up to date with what's happening elsewhere around the country because one of the Division One matches finished yesterday with Hampshire beating Nottinghamshire fairly tidily. But all the other matches still in progress. Here's Everson round the wicket to the left-handed White, who plays that away through the covers. More runs for him here. They've come through for one. That's all they'll be, because it was the penultimate ball of the over. So one more to Jack White. He goes to six, and the total to 316 for eight. The lead is 211. Looks as though they may not be, well, I've seen, may not be too much longer at uh, Lords, where Middlesex... Needing 308 to win against Essex or 83 for six. Outside the off stump and Keogh looking to drive a ball that was swinging away from him. He didn't get a touch, luckily for him. It goes into the gloves of Sam Billings and that's the end of another over. Northamptonshire, 316 for eight. Keogh is 102, White is six. The lead is 211. So Middlesex have already lost a wicket this morning. They were five down overnight, six down now. So 83 for six against Essex. Uh, Lancashire, who've been set a target of 444 to beat Surrey at Old Trafford, a 42 for no wicket. And uh, play continuing at Taunton. Warwickshire batting on, 317 for five against Somerset, who bowled out for 284. Remember that? They lost the whole of the first day there mm. to the weather, or the state of the outfield at any rate, and a bit of time on the second day as well. So I think presumably, one imagines they'll be looking at bonus points there. Mike's been in touch on the emails. Good morning, Mike. I've read your email already. As you can tell, there's a laugh in my voice. A drive by White into the offside. Low, and it's fielded by Everson at uh, cover. Mike's saying, Hi, Matt, you're so very fond of telling weekend supporters and visiting friends how bad you are at maths, so why are you trying to dabble in statistics? <laughs> it's a very, very good question to which I have <laughs> no good answer. Uh, Mike, most entertaining when you do, he says, but even I leave them to Mr Bailey. I suggest you might make the same choice. <laughs> Uh, Mike, I take it in the spirit that that's meant. Here's uh, Hogan to uh, to White, just drops on that gently, and the ball up to mid off. Daniel Beldrum and picks it up. He said, um, "The primate of all England is the main reason." P.S. He says, "I am a Kent supporter." Deadly help. He said, "A.P.E." Just in case you didn't twig, I did indeed. The initials, of course, of the, the great Alan Knott. But uh, yeah, what a, uh, a wonderful team that was. We have, of course, we'll set up the first time this season. Well, yes, we have the, <laughs> the Underwood and Knott stand, of course, over yeah, to our left. So. Here's Hogan then to White. A couple of dot balls, and this one comes back into the pads, and White's done pretty well with that. He's just closed the face of the bat down towards backward squared. Logan Fields, and it's another single 317 for eight. 
2.12 the lead. I think Jack White is inspired by looking up to his right at the moment, the Frank Woolley stand, at the, at the elegant, fluent, fluid, languid left-hander. And I think he's, I think he's inspired and he fancies himself so. as a, as a yeah. latter-day Frank Woolley. Maybe not. This may be where his stats start to go stratospheric, <laughs> Jack White. 100 here, yeah. if he's got time. Here's Hogan to Keo Goes outside the off stump again to, to play that. There's Keo walking across, almost taking a step out. And it's driven to Joe Denley at cover. And there's no run. 3.17 at 4.8. So we feel a bit becalmed, but it's a very exciting time. I can imagine there's some Kent fans in the ground at home clutching the edge of their seat almost. Don't want this lead to get any further. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> is it going to be out of reach? They released a couple of North Aperture ones who claimed they were on the edge of their seats yesterday as well, yeah. which is good to hear. What an effort that was from Keo and Berg. Again outside the off stump and stepping across, Keo leaves this one this time through to uh, Sam B Billings, who are dominating the bowler in that respect. Well, there's going to be some interesting team decisions to make, obviously, that, uh, that John Sadler will have to make at, at some point. We're talking about, he, he made it very clear when I had a chat with him a few days ago that they need to rotate the seamers, obviously. Now, we don't know exactly when Ben Sanderson and Tom Taylor will, will come into the picture, hopefully sooner rather than later, but then, then they'll have some, some interesting decisions to make. Yeah. Good problems to have. Yeah, in the collegiate, don't they? But, uh, uh, it's Hogan to Keo, and he's... Uh, danced across again outside the off stump and made room for himself to flick that one down to long lead for a single and he will he will take the strike this time so we'll see something of the ball 318 for eight he's got every reason or excuse to be a, a little bit jaded after yesterday but I, I don't think he needs that much protecting bright sunshine now here at canterbury 318 for eight north Hampton leading by 213 on the final day no i don't think so uh division two latest at derby derbyshire 300 for six in their second innings against worcestershire so they're 140 48 ahead, four wickets remaining, so that still has uh, plenty left in it. Um, at Cardiff, Gloucestershire battling on, 402 for five in their second innings against Glamorgan, leading by 163, having conceded that very big first innings deficit. Here's Joey Everson, starting a fresh over to bowl to Rob Keogh, who pulls away through mid-wicket, going out towards the boundary, but he's only going to get a single, there is a man out there giving Everson a bit of protection, so one more to Keogh, he goes to 104 and Northampton should have 319 for 8, so the lead up to 214. Uh, at Hove, looking very good for Sussex against Durham, the target for them is 231 and Sussex 190 for 5, so 41 more mm. runs to win, 5 wickets left. It's an exciting contest though isn't it? it? Is. One low scoring in the final innings for both sides. Here's Everson, two slips in place as he bowls to Jack, the left-handed Jack White, who drives, pleasantly enough, fielded on the half volley by Everson, and uh, there's no run. Uh, and up at Headingley, Yorkshire 260 for six in their second inning, so building up, having had, lost those three early wickets, and we're wondering if there might be something happening there, but Yorkshire have regrouped pretty well, 260 for six in their second innings against Leicestershire, so they lead uh, by 362, so Leicestershire are going to be facing a a big target there. Here's Everson in bowls. Appeal for LBW and he's out. Very full, just held its line. White looking to flick it away on the onside. And that looked a pretty good shout. And uh, umpire Blackwell wasting no time in sending Jack White on his way. Here's LBW to Joey Everson for seven. And Northamptonshire 319 for nine. So just one wicket remaining now. This has been the start to the day that Kemp wanted, but knocking out a couple early on. And Jack White goes 319 for nine. The lead is 214. And now just one wicket standing, and presumably, assuming there's nothing, nothing awful fate has befallen him, Chris Tremaine will be coming in at number 11. Goodness me, this could be fascinating, couldn't it? Could. If the lead is 220, 230, as you say, this... Um Wow. Well, it's interesting now to see that the 12th man's gone out, Gus Miller's having a chat with Rob Keogh. It's, well, it's an interesting one now how Rob Keogh has to play it. I'm, yeah. I'm assuming he has a, he has a bit of faith in, in Chris Tremaine, who we know um, is, a, is a capable batter. who has got a first-class 100, albeit in, in interesting circumstances, as we've explored during this match. But, uh, yeah, he's... What do you do? Do you just go hell for leather, try and smack everything, get as many as possible or do you say, well no, I've got, got faith in 
Chris Tremaine and will just bat mm. properly and, and try and notch up another 20 30 runs that way. 104 for Rob Keogh, numbers 20 and 21 in consecutive order. Joey Everson has his third wicket of the piece then, 3 for 62. Well, I'll summer cook about him as well and, and said, what have you made of him in the you know, first first home game? The Kent supporters won't have uh, seen him. Many of them won't have seen him in live in action. And um, with a, a gentle smile, I think Simon Cook said, <laughs> words to the effect of, I think I think we knew we got ourselves a good one yeah, last season. Absolutely. So I think he will. Now, so. I think he's a super cricketer. I think he's a very, very good signing. 21 as well, which is an irresponsible age to be that good at cricket, frankly. Don't think it's right, but... 3.19.49 update coming on BBC Radio Kent and then we'll be joined by Fred Atkins uh, writer, broadcaster, filmmaker any more credits to add? There? Veritable yeah. polymath yes here's well, Everson bowling to the number 11 Chris Tremaine who yeah. comes across his stumps and I hope he's trying to leave that or looking to run it down in the end he just goes off an inside edge just runs down into the slip cordon and there's no run stays at 3.19 for 9 so I'll Move out of this seat because I shall have to update BBC Radio Northampton course, at midday. Yeah. So, then you'll join Fred at uh, just after just afternoon. Yes, yeah. that's right. Three hundred and nineteen for nine. Two slips in. Some behind a cloud at the moment as Everson comes in, bowls to Tremaine, who's stretching right forward, playing that out to point, and there's no run. It was a very tentative start that first shot, wasn't it? But yes, it was. Uh, it, I, I think he was possibly in two minds as to whether to play it or leave it and in, in the end just about got some bat on it and having a little consultation now Rob Keogh might be saying well Jack White decided I needed protecting but I don't <laughs> honestly be alright here's Everson in and bowls to Chris Tremaine who's pushing forward straight ball had to play it plays it up to mid on that's the end of the over a successful one for Joey Everson 20 Five overs, three maidens, three for 62 now in the innings for Joey Everson. 319 for nine. Northamptonshire, the lead is 214. Keogh is 104. Chris Tremaine yet to get off the mark. And uh, Fred Atkins to come in and replace me in this seat. Thank you, Andrew Rad. Uh, I may be wrong, but I think Rob Keogh was literally just saying, last ball of the over. And Chris Tremaine looked up and put his arm up and said, his uh, hand up and said, yep, I've clocked it. It's okay. Uh, defender the next ball so um, set update to come for BBC Radio Kent very shortly or certainly should be the gardening show though it's a complicated business sometimes he says knowing nothing about gardening hey well Mike there's another thing I can add to my my list of things that uh, <laughs> I know little or nothing about I'm not getting involved in that I'm not going to pretend so this is uh, Hogan from the Nackington Road end to bowl to Akio, just one slip in for him. Jordan Cox, he's going for this one. It's up in the air. It's over the head of oh, leaning, is it? It is. It's going to bounce once, or has that gone all the way? It's gone all the way, just outside the boundary rope, and six for Rob Keo. And the lead goes on to 220. It's tantalising uh, for uh, Kent and Northampton supporters. The uh, the balance of this match. Hogan's got the ball back, but uh, this needs a conversation between the two of them. Jordan Cox has been dispatched from slip. No need, Jordan. He's going to go to uh, mid-wicket, and the field is fairly spread. We'll bring Fred in. Just going to do an update for BBC Radio Kent, and then we'll uh, we'll welcome him formally. Three, two, five for nine. Almost everyone dispatched the boundary at this point, certainly allowing the single for Keo Dances down that. He slapped that away, and it'll be dot ball they're not taking the single out to Joe Denley just inside the boundary tense stuff this right at the now so Keo settles once again this is delicately poised, I should say so, Andy, here. Northamptonshire, 3 2 5 for 9. Kent have taken two quick wickets as Hogan comes into Keogh. He'll take a single into the onside, may even scamper through 4 2. I'm commentating as we do the update because uh, the balance of the game, it really is on a knife edge with the Northamptonshire leading by 222 now. But Kent having taken those two wickets, if they can take one quickly without another run score, they've got a real chance of winning this game, knocking off those 220 odd runs in the rest of 
of the day. Every run that Northamptonshire makes makes that less likely and brings them more into the game in terms of attacking the Kent batting and maybe bowling them out for a fantastic come from behind victory. All that to come. We've lost Gareth Berg who made 56. White who made 7. Hogan now bowling to Keogh. Straight back at the bowler. No run. 3-2-7 for 9. The lead at 222. What a day's cricket uh, we should have today. Commentary continuing via the BBC Sport website and app. There we go. I thought that was going to be a jingle for me there, Fred, but no, it's for the gardening show. Good morning, Fred Atkins. How are you? Hello, Matt. Fine, thank you. This is uh, this is a thing, isn't it? It is. It couldn't really be any better balanced. As uh, Hogan comes into uh, Keo, has he flicked that? He has not. He's gone way outside the off stump and tried to glance it past Sam Billings. There's a little deviation, but I think that came from uh, movement rather than thing. Three, two, seven, four, nine. I um, think if there'd been any, even a hint of a <laughs> flick, uh, Sam would have definitely appealed. Everyone would have gone up. Yeah. Uh, all over the county, probably, at that point. Um, you were listening to Simon Cook yourself. If get one ball to go until the end of the over, I'll bring you in on that. And uh, he was saying, well, 220, 230, we'd you know, back ourselves in a... An, I think he said an interesting chase, that would be. Um, well, it's definitely got interesting this morning. Field spread... They want uh, to give Keo a two, definitely not a single. He's launched that over long on, and that will be four runs. So he's decided, and I think quite sensibly from a Northamptonshire point of view, take the runs when they're offered. Two, two, six, the lead now. Uh, three, three, one for nine. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you for a prediction here. I think that would be enormously unfair as you've been on the mic for two, about half a minute. Um, but it is really poised, this, isn't it? It is. I mean, I would say it's. At the moment, it's about 60-40 Kent, and I might be being slightly pessimistic. You possibly, if you, the Homer, uh, the Homer in me, might be, uh, you know, more objectively, you might say more 70-30. Um, but it is creeping up. 226 is probably a lot more than they thought they were going to have to chase. Certainly this time tomorrow. Oh, sorry, this time yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Lunchtime yesterday was it one three seven for five? I think. And a lead of 32 at that point. It looked like Kent might finish it off as Everson then bowls and uh, Tremaine blocks that out. Uh, no run. 3-3-1 three, three, for 9. Northants aren't really particularly worried about the time either, are they? They'd it's like to get a, a decent bowl at Kent, but they want the runs more, obviously. Yeah, I don't think the draw is going to come into it here. The weather seems to be set fair. And um, it's difficult. I mean, unless they absolutely thrash it for... 10 overs or something. As Everson comes in, bowls to Tremaine, gets some movement in the air, back to the bowler, flicks it up into his palm, off his foot. And we have seen last wicket stands before, uh, both for and against, that have tilted the equation. Um, but you'd have to say that unless they can sort of put on about 30 or 40, I don't think the draw is really going to come into it. Tremaine says... Uh, as I was saying, interesting. Coming in last behind Jack White. Faces now. Wraps him on the pad. He's gone as well. That is a wicket. And it's deflected down the leg side, but Tremaine goes for a duck of six balls. Well, now we know the lead is at 226, and Kent will need 227. I'm just going to make sure my, my maths is correct to win this game. And. Um, well, anything's possible, I would suggest, from here. The draw, much, much less likely, as you were saying, Fred, as a, as a conclusion to this match. But, uh, yeah, the lead, 2-2-6. Two, 2-2-7, two, 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 then Kent to win. 3-3-1, three, three, all out Northamptonshire. I can already feel my nerves jangling as a commentator. This is going to be exciting, surely. It is. I mean, it's, it's one of these situations. The only way it's not going to be exciting is if Kent get a huge platform. If Crawley goes out, smashes it, um, dashes off 100. At that point, you know, at that point, it might become uh, a little easier on the nerves, but um, it's definitely say that Kent are favourites, but we've seen plenty of sides f faltering in the pursuit of 226 before. And um, just thinking back to that LBW a couple of seconds ago, it sort of took a while for him to put the finger up, I thought. I mean, probably in real time, it was only maybe two seconds. I've I've experimented this on this before. It can seem like an eternity, and then you watch it back on YouTube, 
and it really only is about a second and a half before he's put the uh, the finger up. And is it exponentially longer if the decision is that much more important like that one was? I mean, Northampton, Northamptonshire and Kent fans thinking it's about an hour between the, between the two happening because of the, the balance of the match, maybe. Yeah, it, it was just... Um, I mean, I, it looked like a fairly good shout from here. Um, I thought with the previous one it was possibly a question over height. But uh, that one looked a bit more... Without having the replay in front of me yeah. at first glance, I thought it looked like a pretty decent shout. And um, we denied the spectacle of Tremaine out in the middle with uh, Sam Billings chirping behind him because... Uh, word did reach us that it apparently got a bit heated out in the middle when um, you know they were competing and he spoke to us at the end of um, day two I think Tremaine saying that uh, he'd obviously played with Zach Crawley and Sam Billings before and he's out with Hobart Hurricane so he, he, there were two wickets that he wanted to get it was those two and he was going to take every opportunity to remind them about it afterwards and at the time I thought well, he sounded quite cheerful but uh, apparently it got a bit testy out in the middle. As, um, and it did look so uh, as well. Yeah. But uh, certainly between Messrs Tremaine and, and Billings, there was... Uh, I think it's the classic Australian thing of competing hard in the middle and then, um, you know, shaking hands once it's all done. But it's going to be interesting to see how they go about this. This is the, the new dilemma of the age, as it were. There's been a lot of talk. I'm not going to say the words because we've got a... It starts with B, and it sums up the uh, the new approach to cricket philosophy in England. Now, <laughs> um, teetering around, I know why that uh, is. There's a there's a, it's a fining there's system. A, there's a fining system in the press press office. Press area. If you say the word, then you get fined. Um, do Kent go for this aggressively, or do they look at the match situation and say, well, there are a lot of overs left in the day. You know, there's still it's only. 11.40, 11.41. Um, we are, if we, if they're needed, we can make up the extra overs that we've lost over the uh, day one and day three. Um, but it, it's not going to go that far, surely. Um, they're not going to sort of sit down and, and drop anchor and bat out for the draw or, you know, score at two and over. You wouldn't have thought. But on the other hand, if you are either watching this on YouTube or you're listening to this stream... Um, it's probably because you're either a Kent or a Northampton this year supporter. There aren't going to be too many neutrals tuning in, and therefore you're in, you you want a result. You want your team to win. Um, so you're not going to be that keen. I wouldn't have thought on being part of some kind of experiment for the betterment of the England side. So if somebody does play a rash shot, it's all very well for somebody to say, oh, "Well, you know, you've had a go." And, it's all part of the new approach, but I'm not quite sure how that's going to fly with um, the members, and uh, possibly wouldn't fly that well on social media either. No, I think you're right, and I, I was, I can't say reassured, but Zach Crawley saying, because I you know, asked him whether he was under pressure, he can't mm. cricket, go from ball one, he said actually the opposite, didn't he? That, that mm. the pressure it actually is the pressure he's putting on himself rather than and he needs to. I suppose reboot his game a little bit to, to play balls on the merits, knowing that he can, he has the, he has the power certainly to to accelerate when when he needs to. Yeah, I mean, I think anyone that's seen him back will know he's the sort of player who could win this game on his own, um, and equally he could get one in the first over. It was a dominant performance in the first inning because he was clearly the, the uh, highest scorer by some distance on both sides, but. Um, I did sort of wonder about Zach. Like, he, he seemed slightly kind of on the media day here just before the start of the season. There were probably more journalists than have been here for a long time, and that included some from national publications um, who he probably would have been familiar with from his England days. And I want, he, he just seemed a bit more defensive um, dealing with questions, um, possibly because of what he's experienced over the last year and a half or so. Uh, What's your perception of, of that with Zachary? Because he doesn't do social media. He's he's very, I suppose, old-fashioned that way very for a young sensible. man. Um, but he must be aware of the questions that are being asked, not inside the clearly was, room, because yeah. he's being asked, as you say, he's being asked those questions constantly every yeah. time he's put in front of the media. It, it was very obvious that um, he was aware of it. Yeah. So I don't think you can't be. I mean, there are some players... Um, 
you know, some players that are very active on social media. They meet, they read absolutely everything. They and read Sam Billings is one of those. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Um, and whether that's a... It just depends on your mentality, doesn't it? Some people thrive off criticism. I mean, Kevin Peterson being the classic example. I think he got bored if people weren't launching into him all day. Um, and then there are other people that, that don't take it as well. Um, and the sensible thing to do in that situation would just be to shut yourself off from it. Um, I wouldn't say he seemed jaded exactly, but it, he seemed warier than he had in the past. I can remember talking to him before finals day uh, 2021, just before the blast, and he, he seemed like a very enthusiastic, sort of almost puppyish level of um, engagement. And uh, then we saw, the next time we saw him was media day, uh, probably about two weeks ago, and he definitely seemed warier when he was dealing with um, you know, people who are essentially paid to criticise cricketers for not performing to the level that they think they should be performing at. Well, certainly it makes better copy for certain outlets. It, it does. I mean, there was a piece with him, uh, Shil Berry did a story on him in The Telegraph yesterday, which is pretty fair. Um, you know, it wasn't embellishing him. Or it, it, it's weird. It's a sort of cultural thing. I know that, um, you know, going back a few years, Gideon Hay, the cricket writer, um, wrote a book about the 2005 Ashes series, which is the first time the series hadn't gone well for Australia in a very long time. Um, he basically said that there were some of his colleagues in the Australian media who had been told by their editors that they wanted a scapegoat, that someone was going to have to be the sacrificial lamb for the fact that Australia... I don't think anyone would say they'd actually played badly in that series. It was one of the best series that probably yeah. anyone could remember, really. Um, but the narrative that there were two very good teams playing out there wasn't washing with certain Australian editors and they wanted a sacrificial lamb. And um, I don't think you could say that the English media is any softer than the Australian media. Perhaps it is when it comes to cricket, mm. but in general I wouldn't say it is. Um, and so there is that sort of constant need for a scapegoat for someone you know, if if things aren't going well to sort of pile in on them. And I mean, he, they are going very well for the England Test team at the moment, so I suppose the Knights get sharper. Should there be a defeat, they they will warm up the reasons. Uh, like I suppose as almost like I told you so. Well, we told you this player wasn't good enough, or that player, or mm. this was wrong. I guess, but um, but yeah, I feel feel for Zach Crawley in that way. But I mean, he will be aware that his words will go much further than you know, <laughs> much as we love to yeah. talk to him, than when he's talking to us, than when he's talk when he's part of the England side, and he becomes a he becomes public property in that way. Mm. Yeah, and uh, the flip side to the argument is, of course, that the players are handsomely rewarded. They're yeah. on central contracts. In his case, he's on a an England contract, so it's it, it's all factored into that. Yeah. Um, and we'll see how he goes. It's going to be a you've got the perfect contrast really of opening batsmen here, you've got the aggressive flamboyant Crawley who can take a game away from his side in in a couple of overs almost and then you've got Ben Compton as this classic defensive minded opener and um, referencing the word that we can't talk about we um, Matt Walker did say pre-season that they were not going to be encouraging defensive minded players to suddenly start playing their strokes because it's just going to be counterproductive and in a situation like this Compton's got no need to start playing T20 cricket well here we are the two batters are out there Zach Crawley will face the first delivery it'll come from Jack White as well um, Mike if you're listening I'm turning to the calculator for this uh, stat I'm not doing anything in my head don't worry um, 227 from 84 overs a minimum remaining is 2.7 and uh, an over. It's doable, but we have seen on this pitch it seems a difficult one to get in on. And as Zach Crawley was saying, oh, his knock of 91, it feels there is a ball with your name on it not very far away. Might be a little bit uh, flatter now, certainly, than it was when we started and the conditions were dreadful for Northampton when they batted on the first day. But it set this up. Four slips in behind Crawley. His white bowls to him. He just uh, drops down on that one, drops the bat down gently played up to mid on and there is no run after all that build up 
Uh, he's defended the first one. But he took a session, didn't he, Zach Crawley, to have a look, more or less, on the on the second day. A more or less a session. He did, Playing yes. defensively before he started to open up. I mean, he, he, he was quite open. He said that... Um, that second day you could bowl exactly the same ball and one would nick and one would go straight so White's hoping that'll be the case for him now as well and Crawley tucks it into the onside mid wicket fields and there's no run it's four slips as I said a point mid on mid off that mid wicket uh, long leg that's Chris Tremaine there I did wonder because he'd played so tentatively with the bat and came out at 11 rather than at 10 as he had the first things I did wonder he was okay, but he's taking the field, so presumably absolutely nothing up with him. And here is White to bundle in from the knacking to road end to Crawley. Flick of the wrists, loves to play on the leg side. Would he come back for two? No, no point in chancing it. They'll take a single, and they are off the mark. So too Zach Crawley, who scored 91 in the first innings. And much that we talk about uh, aggressive starts to innings um, and the philosophy, the ethos that that, uh, that might come from, um, from a, a team point of view, they're going to they're gonna want to have a look, these two, aren't they? They want to have oh, a, a platform I mean, before, they, uh, before they go. There's no point in uh, artificially deciding that you've got to knock these runs off in 20 overs. It would be... Um, oh, goodness. would be cricketing suicide. Um, some sort of problem with the ball there already, which is... <laughs> Who had three balls in the sweep? Uh, Andrew, was that you? Did you say three balls before the first ball change? Well, goodness me. There's something wrong with it, clearly. Um, not entirely sure what. He didn't hit it that hard, Zach Crawley, I think it's fair to say. N no, I... Well, well, this is... Yeah. I mean, it didn't... It didn't seem to hit anything, did it? It's not gone for a boundary, no. so it's not... Uh, it's not flown into the steps or something, or, or an advertising hoarding. So um, After so much kerfuffle over the ball last year, we seem to be changing it every ten overs or so. Um, I don't think I've ever seen one changed after three no. deliveries. I can only assume that something has split on it. It can't have gone out of shape in this time, so maybe the, the seam has split, but... There was no second thought, was there, from the umpires? No. They, they just it, looked at, well, yeah, we're going to have to change this. It didn't go through the hoop, it's not, put it that way. It's not that... It doesn't have the classic symptoms of the side trying it on, either. No. Um, it does... Well, we've got a bit of a delay here. Um, I would assume, because... Perhaps not unreasonably, they didn't think they were going to need to change the no. uh, case of balls after three deliveries. Let's hope they've remembered it now. Umpires said has given one of the Northamptonshire fielders the keys to his car. Yeah, it's, in, it's in the glove compartment. I'm not sure, but it is taking <laughs> taking a moment here. I don't well, there we are. Feverish excitement for three balls, and now a bit of a break. Maybe I'm cursed. I, I remember doing this stint here with Andrew last year in the same fixture, and um, play was halted because there was a something happened in the room below us which had never happened before, so we kind of went out trying to find a key to get in there. It actually took quite a while to find anybody that could sort out what the problem was. was Josh Cobb and Ricardo Vasconcelos coming back out now. With a ball? They're yeah. not bringing a... Well, I suppose there's no point in bringing a selection. It's a new ball they'll be bringing, presumably. Yeah, I guess he's going to give them the three deliveries on the, uh, on the ball. <laughs> What's going on there? Whether he wants to, you might just want to whack it three times to. Oh, I see what you mean. Yes, <laughs> they'll they'll they'll, uh, they'll uh, have that in credit. Yes. The. Uh, oh yeah, because there was no selection of ball. I'm assuming the umpires said said this is where the new balls are. Go and go and grab one. So here is Jack White anyway. After that delay, through to Ben Compton. He's right behind that one. Good line and length from. Uh, the North Hands bowler Jack White, who I thought was slightly underserved by his figures in the uh, in the first innings, but he did end up with uh, he ended up with four yeah, four for not too many. Yeah, I think he bowled really really well to start up top. Did, uh, did White three slips and a gully in now for Compton tucks this into the offside two point and there's no run. No aggressive intent, that's for sure. 
as Compton played a key innings in the one day game against Northamptonshire the Royal London game last season when uh, Kent's prospects of qualifying were basically <laughs> very slender Seems white round the wicket to uh, Compton leaves it outside the off stump comfortable lead through the wicket keeper Lewis McManus end of the over took a while uh, so one for none 226 to win now and a really exciting day's cricket in process and set fair for the day as well we have no reason to believe that we won't get through the remaining 83 or perhaps even more overs if Northants bowl very very quickly in the final hour so uh, one for none yes, that's exactly what happened in the fixture last year isn't it with the uh, minimum overs were ticking down but, uh, Kerrigan and Keogh were on and bowling at rates that you know Hitherto. Jonathan Agnew would have approved of. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a difficult thing to get as well, isn't it? Here's Tremaine then to bowl from the pavilion end to Zach Crawley. He uh, drives that up to mid on, and there's no run. It's fielded by Northamptonshire captain Luke Proctor. Let's have a little chat to uh, Chris Tremaine. Ricardo Vasconcelos is at mid off, throws him the ball. And uh, sorry, it's safe save, I beg your pardon. Warming his, uh, warming his shoulders up there. He's not allowed to bowl, I don't think. He's 12th man. Not until the IPL rules uh, settle on county championship cricket anyway. You have a squad of 16 substitutes bringing them on and off all the time. Tremaine now to uh, Crawley. I'm not getting a rise out of Fred with that one. He's studiously ignoring that. Uh, plays it low to point and there's no run. Well, I was just thinking actually that um, we're told Grant Stewart can bat if needed. Right. Thank um, you for that. Apparently picked up a a minor side issue which meant that he couldn't bowl but uh, should he be needed to bat which the way this game has gone you certainly wouldn't rule it out he uh, he is available could even be the hero at that point or from Kent's point of view Northampton will be hoping to run through them much quicker than all that yeah, to Crawley now up on his toes back foot drive that's a a good looking shot as well he'll come back for two and that will be a three for no wicket halfway through the second over of this innings and uh, let me try and explain to people why four day or five day cricket is a wonderful thing to say this is kind of the kind of the point you get to for me especially through the, the twists and turns this match even with the weather and Northamptonshire by rights should probably have lost yesterday and find themselves in a position now they could bowl themselves to victory Tremaine to Crawley and uh, very straight indeed for Crawley McManus liked that one but he's just blocked that back out to uh, mid on no run well I did suggest to um, Kyle Andrews the North Ants photographer mm. yesterday that there was every chance that they were going to get a 200 lead and uh, he said there was absolutely no way they were going to get a 200 lead and then when I saw him afterwards he said well I <laughs> I said 200, I didn't say 199, and I didn't say 201. <laughs> Tremaine, yeah, 226 it turned out to be, 227 to win in total for Kent. Tremaine bowls to Crawley, bowled him! Off stump, outside the, out of the ground, and all the furniture disturbed, and Crawley has gone for three. He's nipped that one back. It's a great delivery from Tremaine. The overseas paying his uh, county back. Crawley goes for three. First blood to Northamptonshire. And that is a big blow as well uh, for the visitors here trying to bowl themselves to victory. Kent 3 4 1. Crawley goes for three. And uh, advantage Northamptonshire then, Fred. Yes, he, I mean, he's absolutely splayed his wicket there. And um, judging by the noise, apart from the howls of delight from the middle almost nothing you could hear a pin drop from the uh, the rest of the ground that would suggest that there probably aren't too many traveling supporters down here today no, it's a small crowd as it is but you're absolutely right but there are whoops coming from the the bowling side of course this is a massive massive wicket Bell Drummond comes out for uh, Kent 
made 27 in the at the first innings in a decent stand with Crawley as uh, the match situation was then. And Kent do bat deep, don't they? I mean, the, saying the relative luxury of having Sam Billings batting at seven and Joey Everson at eight, even. Um, yes, uh, well, but someone's got to make a score here. So yeah. last night we were talking to uh, Rob Keogh after the game. He was talking. Well, Andrew asked the question: Is there a better number nine we in, about this, yeah. in county cricket than Gareth Berg? And he said. He thinks he's the, he's the best uh, number nine in world cricket. Well, Gareth Berg thinks, that's, thinks that himself, I gather. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah. I, possibly tongue in cheek. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, certainly, you know, the 56 runs that he yeah. contributed could well end up being a difference here. It certainly ramped up the pressure. Take right. those runs out of it, and the target looks far more achievable. Yeah, that sentry stand changed the game. Kent three for one as Daniel Bell Drummond comes in. And uh, Chris Tremaine, having bowled really well in the first innings, uh, takes another look at Pfeiffer, didn't he, in the first innings? And he did this uh, just a bit of a delay yeah, here a for. Delay. Well, we're not quite sure. Tremaine's sort of walking slowly up to the middle line. Oh, oh, the helmet fielding out. helmet. Yeah. Now they did this with Daniel Beldrum, I think, in the first innings, and they put a short leg in there. And may well be again. So James Sales takes his cap off. Not sure he's got the pads on yet, has he? Might need to watch his shins. Can't actually tell. But, um... No, I can't tell from here. Perhaps. I hope for his sake he has, certainly. But Sales under the lid then. Final ball of this over. First one for Daniel Bell Drummond to face. Tremaine to him outside the off stump, not very far away. Excitement from the slip cordon. And Northamptonshire have first blood in the Kent innings. 3 4 1. Zach Crawley, Kent's England opener, 91 in the first innings, has gone to a beautiful delivery by Tremaine, which just destroyed his stumps. Took the off stump out of the ground, middle stump at, uh, at quite an angle. 3 for 1 then. Different complexion for Kent now. Have to dig in for a bit. Definitely, yes. I mean, I'm sure everyone was hoping that. Uh, Crawley was going to get at least half a century. Is it a pattern of last season where he did quite often go past 50 and run out of steam before getting 100, but that would have been very handy. So White from the Nackington Road end to Compton leaves it outside the off stump. And Oon and R from the uh, fielders again. I say Sales wasn't a suicidally short leg, was no, it? He was that's true. a fair distance back for a, a respectful distance, I suppose, yeah. in that respect, yeah. But he does like to play across his front pad, Daniel Sneak, Daniel Bell Drummond, which can make him a candidate for, for LBW certainly. So they're hoping to restrict him in that fashion perhaps, as White bowls to Compton. Defender up to mid on. Dare I say, very characteristic of Ben Compton. He's very compact, isn't he? Just you won't see him flashing much. No, and he's got his little off stump. He's got his little ticks as well. Yeah. Update for BBC Radio Kent Radio listeners. With the tension here, the contrast with the Sunday Gardening Show. Not sure they can get tense at times. Is uh, White around the wicket to Compton pushes the offside? That'll be four. That is rocketed away. Fantastic timing through point. And that goes for four runs. Very elegant four, that yeah. one from Compton. Yeah. Classic. Absolutely. Classic sort of drive. Indeed so. Seven for one. Kent are seven for one. They're chasing 227 in total. So 220 runs more to win here on the final day against Northampton. Really exciting contest. This one. They were charged with taking three quick wickets uh, to set this up. A run chase. And they did, Kent, really well. Gareth Berg going for 56. Fantastic stand between him and Rob Keogh for Northampton. Of 100 uh, exactly. The two uh, tail enders then, White and Tremaine, went quickly afterwards as Ben Compton leaves that one. 
one. Kent came out then to a look at this uh, 227 to win, needing around about two and three quarter runs and over. England man Zach Crawley had been superb on the in the first inning, scoring 91. Bowl all ends up by uh, overseas international, the Aussie Chris Tremaine, uh, disturbing his stumps to some effect, taking the off stump out and uh, clattering the middle as well. So seven for one, a really tense contest, this absorbing cricket under sunny skies here at Canterbury. Commentary continuing via the BBC Sport website and app. And uh, I'll see you through this next ball and then Andrew Rabb will replace me. Three slips and a gully in there. Thank you very much, studio. And White goes back to his mark then. Lovely shot during that update, or just before that update, by Ben Compton, by the way. Gliding across point. Defends that off, off stump. End of the over. I can already feel the tension here, although it's very quiet. So perhaps that's just in the commentary box. Andrew Rad will tell you. He's cool as a cucumber. 7 4 1, then. 2.20 to win for Kent. I'll leave you uh, with Andrew Rad and Fred Atkins. Yeah, we'd say that that, um, that early wicket by Tremaine has definitely tilted the uh, equation here. Certainly tilted the expectations of fans. There's a certain amount of home pessimism going on. Certainly yesterday when uh, Berg was batting with Keogh, so Tremaine comes in, bowls, and it's just dug out by Bell Drummond. So that century stand has really completely altered the complexion of this. If uh, Northants had been chasing, say, 120, Kent would have been very heavy favourites, but that uh, early wicket say it's pretty much 50-50 now, Andrew. It's fascinatingly poised, isn't it, afternoon, Fred? It's, uh, yeah, well, I thought you needed just a little bit of a boost to get themselves going. As, as Matt quite rightly said, it was a good start to the day for Kent, knock knocking over the last three fairly quickly as Tremaine comes in and bowls and beats Bell Drummond outside the off stump. It's You can just sense it's doing, it's, it's wobbling around a little bit. It's actually quite heavy out there at the moment. It's, for, for the first time probably this season, We've got a bit of warmth out there. Um, yesterday, was it the day before, we had we had sunshine, but it was cold. Um, but imagine the new before that, it was just cold. Better before that, it was just cold. Well, it was it was vile on the first day, wasn't it? Those 26 overs, the conditions were fairly appalling. But it's a fascinating encounter, whichever side you support. Four slips in place, Tremaine in, bowling to Bell Drummond. Hit on the pad, big appeal for LBW. I think he might just have got himself outside the line there. I don't know what your feeling was, Freddie. I did he, he wonder if he possibly got some bat on it. Um, yeah, he got half. A, he got half a stride in, didn't he? Um, he was. Yeah, he was away down the crease. Um, probably put enough doubt in the umpire's mind. Yeah, I think so. And it wasn't a full-throated appeal. No, I think there was a bit more interest behind than than in front. Let's just having a look at that. No, he's clearly got. Yeah, it, he may have got some bat on it, but I think he was outside the line anyway. Having just watched the the replay, so. Spot on, good decision, Ian Blackwell, whatever. He's certainly looking to try and get onto the front foot. Here's Bell Drummond facing this next delivery from Tremaine. That's outside the off stump. Bell Drummond doesn't need to play it and doesn't. Let's it go through into the gloves of Lewis McManus. Yes, I was hearing what you were saying with uh, with Matt, and I'm, I'm sure it's right that the, the draw is probably out of the equation now. I think... Uh, with so many overs left, there's going to, we're going to get a result one way or the other, aren't we? It's difficult. I mean, unless Compton really does um, <laughs> does dig in, takes root. No, I think uh, with what eighty odd overs remaining, I'd be, be very surprised if uh, if the draw comes into it. There's certainly not going to be any weather interference, I don't think. Here's Tremaine in again, bowls to Beldrum and very full, driven by Beldrum and good bit of fielding at uh, mid off by Safe Zabe, who's on as a substitute at the moment. Of course, it is a minimum of 80 overs as well. Yeah, what happened right. last season was that um, the minimum was bowled and we were still a pretty good half hour short, that's I think. Right. Yeah. Yes, I think that the, but obviously the, the, the slight difference there was that obviously most of that innings was bowled by, by the spinners, wasn't yep. it? Keogh and Kerrigan on that, uh, that gripping last day. That's some good games here aren't we, between these two sides yeah, in recent years at at Canterbury, his Tremaine in bowls outside the off stump, left alone again 
by Daniel Bell. Drummond goes through to the keeper. End of the over. It's a maiden to Chris Tremaine. Two overs, one maiden, one for two. The wicket of that Crawley, of course, in his previous over. And Kent needing 227 for win. Are seven for one. I was just looking at the uh, the other scores, Fred, and it, it looks as though things are getting quite interesting at Hove uh, in Division 2, where we were sort of saying, oh, Sussex are going to coast that one against Durham. Well, they've had a bit of a wobble, and needing 231 to win, Sussex are 208 for 8. So they need another 23 runs to win. Two wickets standing. Here's Jack White, round the wicket to... Ben Compton, who plays that up to mid on, Proctor Fields, and there's no run. So that's going to be. Uh, well, I, I do wonder if we're going to end up with something similar here. Well, it could be, couldn't it? That's going to be a little bit of a squeaky one there. Elsewhere in Division 1, um, Surrey set Lancashire that big target of 444 to win, and Lancashire 72 for 2. Uh, Middlesex hanging on against uh, Essex. Need 308 to win, 122 for 7 now as White comes in, bowls to Compton who's on the front foot pushing it up to mid-off where Zabe fields and there's no run. Uh, so you would think Essex still very strong favourites but Middlesex haven't succumbed yet and the match at Taunton obviously they've had so much interference with the state of the outfield docking the entire first day's play and a bit of a delay on the second as well. Uh, Warwickshire 360 for 7 in reply to Somerset's 284 all out. Here's White. And again, bowls to Compton, who drives straight drive. Is in the air for a, a second or two, but in, it landed well short of Jack White in his follow through. So, no question of a court and bold. Just got half a hand to it. No possibility of a single. Oh. Just from the angle that we're at, the moment it left his bat, I did wonder if it would carry. Yeah, it, it didn't. Uh, it landed. But about a foot short of, uh, of of Jack White, but it was in the air for a for a moment or two. Jack White bowled well here last year, didn't he? In that uh, in that championship match, it was dominated by the spinners, but I thought he bowled particularly well. Here's White, in again bowls to Compton, who covers up, plays it back down the pitch. White fields off his own bowling, and there's no run. After coming out with one of the great comments, Fred, when I was, uh, when he he'd done quite well in the previous match, and I I said to him, I see you know almost certainly be in the squad for. Uh, for Kent, how do you feel about uh, about that without Canterbury? And he said it's a long way south, isn't it? <laughs> I suppose <laughs> it is. Yeah, <laughs> he's a he's a good Cumbrian boy, is uh, is Jack White, and he yes, he was a little bit worried about coming this far south. But uh, that said, he's he's spent a lot of time in Australia, so he couldn't get much more further south than that. Uh, this ball neck fence, Ben Compton playing defensively out into the offside where Zabe fields and there's a run. Just let me look round to see who's not on. I think Rob Keogh is actually. Uh, not on the field at the moment perhaps in fact no I can see him down there he's just about to come on I think he's possibly just had a bit of a shower and a rub down fairly well uh, deserved rest I would yes say. well he's uh, he was in there a while but yeah he's he's just on, on one knee at the moment down the other side of the boundary rope down with all the training paraphernalia so I imagine he'll be on the field in a second switching to round the wicket Jack White into Compton who nibbles at that outside the off stump beats the outside edge Goes through to Lewis McManus. End of a maiden over for Jack White. Three overs, one maiden. No wicket for five. Rob Keogh comes onto the field. Safe Sabe heads back to the pavilion. And Kent needing 2.27 to win are seven for one. He didn't miss by much there. And I'm just going back to the thing you said about it being a long way south. Uh, finals day a couple of years ago, Kent actually produced a graphic. Um, it said... Anyone from up north is wondering who to support. <laughs> I had a picture of all the grounds. It was Kent, um, Sussex, Somerset and Hampshire. That's so right, Kent yes. was actually the furthest north <laughs> of all those counties. <laughs> Splendid. Here's uh, Chris Tremaine starting a fresh over. Four slips waiting for an edge. And Bell Drummond has come across his stumps and he's clipped back down to fine leg for four. Did come a little way across. If he hadn't got something on it, there may have been a question asked. But as it was... Four runs a crew down to the Les Ames Pavilion. Takes Bell Drummond off the mark. He's four and Kent are 11 for one. I love the, the point you were making, I know, when you were on with, uh, with Matt, Fred, about um, Chris Tremaine saying about Zach Crawley having played with him for the Hobart Hurricanes, wasn't it, in the, in the big bash. And there were two wickets he wanted, him and him and Sam Billings. Bilbo. Well, I'm sure he'd dearly love to get Sam Billings out in the second innings as well, but he's... 
Will Kent get down to him or not? Next ball finds Bell Drummond studiously forward, plays it up to Proctor at mid on. And there's no run. I'm sure Sam Billings would be perfectly happy to watch the others knock off the runs. Although I suspect there's part of him that part of every cricketer wants to hit the winning runs, yes. don't they? Yeah. Well he's such a such a positive and proactive cricketer at all times, Sam Billings. He wanna be wants to be in the thick of it, doesn't he? But, uh, job for the top order to do here. Just perhaps to get through to lunch without any further loss. Forward short leg in now. James Sales under the helmet as Tremaine comes in. Bowls outside the off stump. Left alone by Bell Drummond. Goes into the gloves of Lewis McManus. Yeah, I've spoken to a few cricketers. In, you're talking about situations like that when it comes down to very tense finales and... Um, you know, you really don't know which way it's going to go, so there's one or two wickets left. I mean, most of them say they would much rather be out there in the middle because yes. it's far less tense when yes. you actually you have some say over events. Yes, some of, the, some of the best cricket stories are people that can't bear to watch and are, lock themselves in the toilet or something or whatever. Here's uh, Tremaine running into bowl, very full to Bell Drummond, who drives back past the bowler, runs for him here as it comes up towards the pavilion. It's a long chase for Luke Proctor, the Northamptonshire captain, who pulls it in about a yard or two in front of the pavilion on those practice pitches that caused a few problems on Thursday when it was so wet. No problem today. A bit of fielding by Proctor. Keeps it to two. Takes Bell Drummond to six and Kent to 13 for one. Nice stroke from Daniel Bell Drummond. I think Chris Tremaine possibly just got a little bit of a hand on it, but slow its progress. But a good bit of fielding by Proctor to keep it to two. Uh, Four short leg is coming out now. James Sales has lobbed the helmet to Ricardo Vasconcelos at first slip, puts it behind the keeper, and he's got in now at a orthodox mid-wicket position. Here's Tremaine. In again, bowls, and that's clipped away by Bell Drummond. That's going to be four. That's beautifully timed, better than the ball before even. It's gone out the way through, sort of widish mid on, and that was four from the moment it left the bat. Beautifully played by Daniel Bell Drummond who moves into double figures 10 to him and Kent 17 for one it's just what you were saying about the uh, when it does get to situations like that players are told to you know not move because yes. the dressing rooms are superstitious right. the classic example was Joe Denley during the Ben Stokes run chase when he was apparently told he had to stay in the toilet I think <laughs> <laughs> well I hope there's plenty of reading matter in there here's uh, Tremaine Running in again from down below us. Bowls to Bell Drummond, who stretches forward, plays it out to Sales at mid wicket. No run, end of the over. But advantage Bell Drummond in that over at least. He's on 10. Compton is 4. And Kent are 17 for 1, chasing 227 to win. Yes, there's a report of uh, uh, 1925 when Northamptonshire won a very tight match against Worcestershire at Kidderminster. I think it won by one wicket in the end. and just Captain Morris Fitzroy was supposedly uh, locked himself in the toilet and wouldn't uh, wouldn't come out until the issue had been resolved one way or the other. Oh yeah, David Fulton told the story. I, he, he must have done it on a commentary um, last year or the year before. He was quite incredulous about it because, um, as, as he pointed out, you know, you don't have you've got no influence on events going out no. on the pitch. So it's just one of those superstitions. It's the superstitions of actors, I think, cricketers. Here's White in, starts a fresh over to Ben Compton, who's stretching forward, pushes it up to extra cover where Rob Keogh fields, and there's no run. Yes, there's, no, there's absolutely no logic to it at all, is there? But uh, I, mean, I, I don't like tempting fate. I, I, I don't have any kind of superstitious nature or anything. I just don't like the idea of... Um, you know, even when you're writing a report, I don't like writing it up <laughs> one way or the other. No, that's a dangerous crumbs. That's a, it's, it's much easier now that with uh, laptops and whatnot mm. than it used to be in the old days. As White comes in, bowls to Compton, who's nicely in behind that, plays it up once again to Keogh with extra, and uh, there's no run. I do remember a Sunday league game at Luton at Wardown Park, and Northamptonshire playing Somerset and chasing a fairly small target, about 140 or something. And they were by 70, 80 for one match over, really. And just you know, in the old days of the typewriter, and you wrote it all up and just left a few gaps, you know, with the, the you know, Larkins and Alan Lamb knocked off the rest of the runs or whatever. And then the late Peter Roebuck came on, bowling his little dibbly dob. Here's White in, bowling anything but. And that's steered away nicely by Compton, wide of 
backward point. It was a long chase down towards the Freeman House apartments. And it's reeled in by James Sales, but they're able to come through for a couple. Takes Ben Compton to six and Kent to 19 for one. And uh, Peter Roebuck got Larkins out, Lamb out, Peter Willey out, whatever. And, uh, and in the end, Northampton just squeaked. And you're having to, every time, having to rewrite it. Rip, and it was the old days of ripping it out of the typewriter, screwing it up into ball and throwing it in the bin. Here's White in again, bowls to Compton, who's pushing that up on the onside. Come through for a quick single. Luke Proctor shies at the stump, so there could be buzzers here. Because I've acted, they're not going to run again. That's very sporting. It hit. I think it hit uh, Ben Compton as they came through for the single. And <laughs> Rob Keogh had a little bit of a chase to make sure it didn't cross the boundary rope. Of course, say, if, it mean, had, yeah. if it had crossed the rope, it wouldn't have mattered what the batters felt. It would have been four. Just ask New Zealand in the World Cup final. I think they definitely would have got one there at least. Yeah. But as it as it was, they they came through for the single. Okay. It takes Compton to seven and Kent to twenty for one. But did absolutely the right thing. The throw hit the hit the batter, deflected off towards the boundary, but then, say, Rob Keogh had to sprint after it to make sure it didn't touch the rope. Some behind a cloud at the moment. Demand our money back. Here's White, over the wicket, bowls to Bell Drummond, who just squeezes that down behind square on the leg side. A little bit of movement off the seam, I think, for White. Went down to long leg, where Tremaine fields, and they come through for another single. Bell Drummond to 11. And Kent to 21 for one. Yeah, and in the end, it was the you know, Northamptonshire scraped home by two wickets mm. or something. And it, oh dear, never. And it, I suppose it was a salutary lesson in that you didn't never wrote up too early again. But because uh, now you just have to downgrade yes, the adjective. That's, that's right. Right. Yes. <laughs> Press delete. Here's White in round the wicket again. Bowling to Compton plays it solidly off the front foot for White to field off his own bowling. And that's the end of another over for Jack White. Four overs, no wicket for nine. And Kent, 21 for one, having lost Zach Crawley. Bowled by Tremaine for three. Ben Compton is seven not out. Daniel Bell Drummond is on 11. Gareth Berg has need of a sweater. Is it so chilly out there? Not. So, uh, let's see if it's Gus Miller. It might be Alex Russell, actually, in the fetching 12th man bib. He's come on to bring that uh, sweater onto the field. I imagine we shall see Gareth Berg bowl at some point, whether he gets on before lunch, we shall see. For now right. it's going to be Tremaine. Still the four slips in place. As Tremaine comes in to bowl to Bell Drummond outside the off stump, left alone. Goes through to Lewis McManus and right on cue, Gareth Berg is now starting to swing his arms he in is. animated fashion so he'll be on at some point he's doing a full uh, lockdown warm up <laughs> style routine <laughs> well 42 years old but still pretty fit still loves playing which is the main thing and as he demonstrated in the previous innings still a man to be reckoned with here's Tremaine in bowls to Drum Bell Drummond who's Bump past the outside edge. There was an appeal from behind the wicket. Chris Tremaine wasn't interested. No. And then, and then suddenly thought belatedly, I suppose I'd better ask. <laughs> um, but it, it, it came across as a very much a polite inquiry. Uh, and anyway, not out is the response. Didn't, couldn't hear anything from up here. No, but I, I didn't think it looked that. No. Uh, they didn't really seem to believe it when they uh, yeah, it they was. went up. It was a it was a try on job, wasn't it? I think, but uh, but Chris Tremaine hadn't got the hadn't read the email, so he he wasn't really very bothered at all. Turns and runs in again to bowl to Bell Drummond, short pulled away by Daniel Bell Drummond for four, dismissed from his presence. Little pick up shot around the line of, around sort of the, the height of the hip, and Bell Drummond dismissing that one away through mid wicket for four. He's fifteen, and Kent twenty five for one. Fielded out there by Sam Whiteman. Another Aussie on debut for Northamptonshire. Had a, had a quiet game, probably, with a fair to say, with a bat. One in the first innings, 12 in the second. Fresh from leading Western Australia to the Sheffield Shield just before coming over here. So these signings, I mean, were they long planned or were they just sort of spontaneous? Uh, Whiteman has been was, was some time ago. Uh, Whiteman was uh, was snapped up. Um, 
certainly for, for not the whole of the season, but for most of the season. Here's Tremaine in again. Bowls to Bell Drummond, who's pushing forward off a mixture of bat and pad, and it runs out into the onside. Tremaine himself, a fine display of energy, cuts off the ball to... I mean, there's no question of a single. Yes, so Whiteman, they'd, uh, they've had on the books for a while. Um, I know they were they had there were hopes obviously of getting Ryan Rickleton who played last year made a very good hundred here of course in that in that championship match but um, wasn't available certainly not for the whole season for a variety of reasons. Here's Tremaine in bowls and he hits Bell Drummond on the glove one that just spat up a little bit off a length and in the end Bell Drummond did quite well to keep it down. It runs into the slip cordon along the floor but Bell Drummond now just having a little. Slightly suspicious prod of the pitch. That just spat up off pretty much a good length. Nasty ball to, to deal with, and Bell Drummond, in the end, played it well. Yes, he gave his hand a couple of shakes. Yeah. and obviously made contact. Yes, that was a painful one. But I say, in the end, he did well to just to, to keep it down. Here's Tremaine in again, bowling to Bell Drummond. Very full, driven away through mid-off. There is no mid-off. And all that's going to happen is the fielder at extra cover has got a long chase to retrieve it. Four more to Daniel Bell Drummond. Good riposte to the previous delivery from Tremaine. Bell Drummond is 19, playing really positively here. Yes, he's 19 from 20 deliveries. Yeah. Well, he's decided on his, his method, and it's a pretty good one so far. 29 for one, so runs required. Ticks under 200. These little sort of psychological barriers in this sort of run chase. 227 is the target, 29 for one, Kent, at the end of the over. So they need another 198 to win. Uh, as far as the Aussies are concerned, the, 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 uh, the bowlers, um, I think Lance Morris they always had an eye on, who's coming in for the second three matches. Uh, they were thinking that they were going to have possibly a different bowler for the first three matches, but um, various issues like visas and so on meant that he wasn't available um, so hence Chris Tremaine had a chance to come along and so certainly so far it's proved a very very handy acquisition indeed here's Gareth Berg into the attack for the first time in the innings down the leg side first ball and Ben Compton well if he got anything on it it would have run I think down to fine leg for four he didn't it was, there was McManus skipping across to take and uh, there's no run. That Cole will be back in position very shortly, replacing Fred. He'll be back with us later. And uh, Matt will then be updating BBC Radio Kent. Compton on strike. Berg in bowling to it. And that one's on leg stump. Turned away down to long leg for a single. Compton to eight. And Kent to 30 for one. Needing another 197 to win. Yeah, Fred and I are going to have a negotiation at lunch and see, <laughs> see where we, we are. Because well, obviously he has, to, he has to do some writing. And if, uh, I, know, I said, well, if well, Daniel keeps going like this, Daniel Bell Drummond, then you might need to do uh, <laughs> start writing it now. But well, yeah, I was going to say, you have to, get, you have to get the BBC checkbook out, do we? And uh, <laughs> see, if we can, see if we can afford afford a bit more Fred later. But Almost uh, certainly not. No, I, think, I was going to say, but great, great to hear from him anyway. And uh, we may hear a bit more of Fred later. Here's Berg for now in bowling to... Bell Drummond outside the off stump, left alone, goes through to Lewis McManus. It's been a good positive start from Daniel Bell Drummond, hasn't yeah. it? He's set his stall out very clearly. We were talking about that little wobble that Sussex were having against uh, yes. Durham, but the, they look as though the, the wobble might be over, uh, needing 231. They're now 224 for eight, so they need just seven more runs to win against uh, Durham. At Hove, that, that's another one that has ebbed and flowed. I Absolutely. think it's fair to say, isn't it? Here's Berg in outside the off stump. Bell Drummond leaves well alone. Goes through again to uh, Lewis McManus. Yes, Lancashire 78 for two, chasing 444 against uh, Surrey and Old Trafford. Luke Wells made 45 of those, but he's out. Jennings has gone as well. It's Stephen Croft and Josh Bahannon in there for Lancashire at the moment. Middlesex are hanging on. 140 for seven against Essex is. Berg in bowls and that's driven, straight driven by Bell Drummond, straight back past the bowler, timed as sweet as a nut and races up to the boundary rope at the Nackington Road end for four more for Daniel Bell Drummond who goes to 23 
and Kent to 34 for one. Have to congratulate Ben Compton on some uh, some athletics at the far gymnastics at the far end, making sure he <laughs> managed to get, get out of uh, the way. Yes. Somehow managed to get his, his uh, both his legs out of the way. Is that scorched and on the ground? We've so. seen two or three um, in this match smash into the stumps yeah. but um, that managed to beat the stumps and his partner Bell Drummond on strike again pushes this one just square of the wicket on the offside for Sam Whiteman to come in from backward point to field but that's the end of Gareth Berg's first over of the innings cost five runs Kent 34 for one chasing 2-2-7 two, two, to win yeah Daniel Bell Drummond he's, he's going at just about a run of ball he's not throwing the bat is he he's hitting some no. very crisp cricket shots but um, Chris Tremaine has I think felt he was getting close with Daniel Beldrum, wrapped him on the, the hand, didn't he? And a bit of a play and a miss a couple of times. And now he's out of the attack. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. But Luke Proctor doesn't want these batters to get settled with any of his attack, and I can completely understand that. I'll keep rotating, keep them fresh as well. He's just gone over to Chris Tremaine and a low five uh, with him. Of course, Chris Tremaine took what could be a huge wicket for Northamptonshire, getting rid of Zach Crawley. We know what Crawley can do, certainly. 4-3, uh, having hit 91 in the first innings. Um, the umpire has pointed somebody just beside the sight screen. And guess what? Um, he'd like them to <laughs> just move away from the sight screen. It's interesting so. what you were saying with, when Fred was on earlier about the, the incident here last year when he and I were, were commentating together. And... Um, yeah, they tried to find somebody with a key. They couldn't. They couldn't carry on the match because somebody was something was, was causing a problem down yeah. down below. And umpire Rob White was umpiring, and and so I know, know Rob quite well. And he he came down. And he shouted out. He said, "Ratters, do you know if anybody's got a key?" <laughs> when I was on air at the time, I, I can't help you there, uh, ump. But uh, yeah. they found, they did find somebody eventually. To be fair to those in the woolly stand, actually, Jack White's going to come round the wicket, isn't he, to, yes. to Ben Compton? So the angle has changed. So they may, they would have been fine probably where they were standing or yeah. sitting before. And they've just um, politely said, could you just move along a couple? So White coming round the wicket to Compton. Three slips in behind him. And Compton, oh, he's, yes. Well, there we are. Inside edge, passes stumps, as you were. Uh, as you mentioned a couple of overs ago, I think, Radis, but yeah, 34 for one. Another occasion of that. Compton, in the end, feeling for it, I suppose. He was trying to drive it into the offside, but ends up past his stumps. 35 for one. They take a single. It's been a really impressive start, though, for Daniel Bell Drummond, hasn't it? Yeah. And, uh, he's clearly intent on if. And, and this was we did make the point on commentary. This is what Kent did well, I think, in the first innings when they were building that lead. That they were, they looked. It wasn't easy, but they looked to be aggressive. And if there was a, a four ball there, potential four ball, they made sure they put it away. He's hit five fours already in his 23. Still 192 needed to win though, and Bell Drummond just drops down on that, angles it to point, and there's no run. But he's under 200. I don't know if you're counting at home if that makes any difference for either side, but. 227 in total to win. They are 35 for one. Zach Crawley was saying bowled by uh, Chris Tremaine. Always feels like he ought to get a wicket and a half or two wickets from that because he uprooted the off stump. The um, middle stump ended up as a 45 degree angle, didn't it? I think the leg stump was untouched, so it, uh, <laughs> it did look pretty messy. Is a white over the wicket now to Daniel Bell Drummond on leg stump. That's tucked away by Daniel Bell Drummond um, down towards backward square. Deep backward square for a single. Compton back on strike and updating BBC Radio Kent listeners here Twenty fourth for Bell Drummond now still in the balance this is a fascinating tense contest Kent needing 191 more to win in well, a minimum of 74 and a half overs Daniel Bell Drummond has gone really well so far 24 from 26 deliveries a wrap on the pad looks like outside the off stump so Ben Compton will survive that Compton limpet like we've seen that from him so many times before 9 from 24 balls Kent have lost Zach Crawley though in this run chase the England man gone for just 3 Chris Tremaine the Australian ripping out his off stump disturbing his middle stump I think he left the leg stump but it looked pretty untidy Crawley gone for three having got 91 in the first innings a fascinating contest under sunny skies here at Canterbury and commentary continuing via the BBC Sport website and app his uh, white round wicket again to Compton who just a uh, little jump backwards has left that one through to the wicket keeper white looks accusingly over his shoulder as he walks back to his mark and uh, at uh, Ben Compton trying to uh, assure him how close that was to his off 
timber. One more, kind of the end. one or two more spectators uh, drifting yeah, in, actually, which is, which is which is certainly in the stand just to the left of our commentary box. There's a considerable uh, influx since first thing this morning when it was fairly sparsely populated. But got to come and watch this. White to Compton gets bat on this one into the onside up to mid on with that round w the wicket. That's the angle of attack, I suppose, and just uh, keeps it off his stumps. End of the over, 36 for one. I certainly feel local enough. Well, Seeing absolutely. the match situation, yeah. this will be a this will be a great day's cricket. If you've got the chance to to pop along, then uh, then please do. I was slightly distracted actually. One of the gentleman just sitting to our left, he's got a very large bag of crisps. <laughs> <laughs> they look very very nice. Yeah, it's, uh, it's there just hasn't been any, any crisps in the ground has any, there really. I don't know. I, we we well, if yeah. there are, we haven't seen. No, them, no, no. We're both very partial to. There crisps. are sort of tales or myths or fairy tales of yes. uh, of the the press room being. I think the words were knee deep in crisps <laughs> uh, from uh, from Liam and the crew there, but uh, never quite well, appeared. That doesn't stop me talking about it. Though. Perhaps they'd gone by the time we, uh, we quite arrived. Possibly, yeah. Here's Gareth Berg running into bowl to Daniel Bell Drummond, and that's driven again by Bell Drummond. That's his sixth boundary. There's a big gap through the covers, and Bell Drummond has found it, and it's raced away. Just have to be retrieved from the tarpaulin down there in front of uh, pylon six. Well, I'm four rather. Uh, that's 28 to Bell Drummond, 40 for one, Kent, who's Bell Drummond now with six fours to his credit. He's made 28 off 27 balls and certainly giving Luke Proctor something to think about. Just a slip and a gully in for Berg. Comes in from the Nackington Road end, bowls to Bell Drummond, who just drops that down calmly out into the offside, fielded by. Century maker Rob Keogh comes in from his fielding position at extra cover and there's no one, uh, no run. Keogh left high and dry, 116 not out off 211 balls with a 6 and 14 fours, but three wickets falling at the other end. Berg for 56, White for 7, Tremaine for naught. two of them to Joey Everson who finished with 4 for 62. Bowled really well, those figures don't flatter him at all. Here's Berg in again and that's nicked by... Bell Drummond, it was all along the floor. There's no question of a of a chance. It was, I think, off the a thick outside edge, but it's run away to third man. There is not a third man, and that's a seventh boundary for Daniel Bell Drummond, who goes into the 30s, 32 to him, and Kent 44 for one. He's racing along 32 from 29 balls now. Well, it's been good, positive, purposeful yeah. batting from. Daniel Bell Drummond take the nerves out of the situation a little bit as Berg comes in and bowls to him. That's a better ball from Berg. Just back of a length. Bell Drummond punching it up to mid on where Jack White fields and there's no run, then rehearses the stroke. Still a little bit of fluffy cloud around. We lose the sun momentarily from time to time, but it's a beautiful early afternoon down here at Canterbury and as we say if you are within reach do come and walk and watch this because it's good stuff here's Berg in again and he's bowled him Berg gets his man I think there may have been a little bit of an edge on that one down onto the stumps and Bell Drummond's promising innings has ended he's been bowled by Gareth Berg for 32 and Northamptonshire getting the breakthrough again before lunch. We were saying if these two could see it through to lunch, Kent will be very well happy with their morning's work, but they've lost. Bell Drummond, he goes for 32, and Kent are 44 for two. Yeah, just an inside edge, as you say, I think, onto the leg stump, but goes off shaking his head. Daniel Bell Drummond, very positive. 32 from 31, he's gone for. And uh, obviously very disappointed, but positive, as you say, I suppose. We've seen this before with Kent, or certainly from last season. Ben Compton gives him the uh, the freedom for the uh, the batting partner, perhaps, to uh, to be a little bit more aggressive. Joe Denley will come out at four, but that's two big wickets for Northamptonshire. We need uh, Fred with his uh, his win percentage to know where uh, <laughs> <laughs> that swung, well, it's, which won't. It's one of those uh, you, know, you keep saying just when you thought. Yeah. Um, and it's been that game almost from start to finish just when he thought one side or other was getting into the ascendancy then something else happens and yeah. I mean I, I, do, I think I do actually have somewhere uh, access to the uh, the win percentage thing I'll see if I can uh, if we can uh, 
take time out from uh, the crisp hunt at lunchtime. I'll <laughs> see if I can I can f- get it up. But I mean, it doesn't. It's a, it's a it's a bit of fun. It's you can make your own decision where you think the advantage is. Forty four for two Kent, needing two twenty seven to win. Crawley and Bell Drummond back in the hut. Still plenty of batting to come. Joe Denley though on a pair. Yeah. A second ball in the first innings. Well, we saw one other batter who was on a pair, Jack White, who didn't uh, suffer that ignominy earlier in the day. In fact, he was on a king pair because he was out first ball. Then he was out second ball in the first innings. LBW to Chris Tremaine. And he's going in now to face Gareth Berg with a second slip coming in now. Vasconcelos at first, Hassan is out at second. And here's Berg running into bowl to Denley, who's on the back foot, plays it back down the pitch for Berg to field, and that's the end of a successful over for Gareth Berg. Two overs, one for 13. Kent, 44 for two, need another 183 to win. Eight wickets standing, plenty of overs left. Best part of, well, all of two sessions and around about 20 minutes or so to go till lunch. But that overseeing the demise of Daniel Bell Drummond, bowled by Berg for 32. Ben Compton is on nine, and Joe Denley yet to get off the mark. Yeah, the required rate, I suppose, it's going to be 73 overs. It's around about two and a half an over. It's come down a little bit from about 2.7, if you're interested in that. Um, Mike's not convinced that my sausage fingers have uh, managed to do that correctly. I don't blame you. Round the wicket comes uh, White to Compton, leaves it through to the wicketkeeper. And there's no run, but it feels about right, Mike, doesn't it? It's got to be in that ballpark. Oh, it um, <laughs> sounds entirely plausible to me. <laughs> Philip on the emails. Good afternoon, gents. A great start from Northamptonshire, getting the vital wicket of Zach Crawley, and now, of course, Daniel Beldrum. This was uh, written before that. Chris Tremaine, a good debut in Northamptonshire. Look, favourites for victory today. He says, a beer and gin festival at the Wolverton Sports Club today. Music tonight as well. Some skiffle. Thanks, Phil. We're happy to be your notice board. Here's uh, White to uh, Compton. Just a little flick of the wrists out towards Squid. <laughs> <And laughs> <laughs> Freddie, thank you very much. You'll never guess what's just arrived. Uh, you can tell by the rustling. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much to the uh, Kent Media team for two huge bags of crisps. <laughs> I'm not sure we mentioned it enough, did we? I no, think, uh, I think, well... <laughs> the, I think the, the 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 ends justify the means there. I think so. We've got two very large bags of crisps. Thank you very much indeed. Keep us going for about half an hour or so. <laughs> this is uh, white bowling to Denley. Leaves it outside the off stump and actually pitches about fourth fifth stump and it's going way low as well. Good take actually in the environment. Man, it's in front of the first slip and there is no run. <laughs> I can tell you Sussex have beaten Durham by two wickets okay. They've reached their target of 231 So that's a result from Division 2 Sussex beat Durham by two wickets Good start for Sussex We won't be eating these on air I no, think no, it's no. fair to say but, um, but very welcome indeed Here's uh, White to Denley Whaps him on the pan Is that coming back enough? It might even have pitched slightly outside leg did it? But um, yeah, I think it was. It, it look, didn't look right, did it? May height even, may even have been yeah. a little bit of an issue. But it looked as though it was heading down the leg side. Looking at the way Joe Denley was attempting to play it, it's something pretty hard, I think, on the thigh pad as well, or yeah. high on the pad, and he's just w- walking that off. But a dot ball. But uh, Denley is definitely one you want to get early. He gets into his stride. We know what he can do, but. Just hoping while he's tentative, perhaps White will uh, take the wicket, Denley. A little bit uppish, perhaps, only defending that off his pads. And yeah, they had a forward, they had a forward short leg in, didn't mm. they? A little while ago, when Tremaine was was bowling from this end, they had James Sales in under the lid, and he's, he then dropped back. I think when Daniel Bell Drummond was was starting to flow a little bit, and they just didn't want him to get away too much. But I just wonder if, if the odd one is if he's getting a little bit of bounce from this end. While the ball is still hard and new, maybe forward short leg's not a bad option. White then bowls to Denley, drives this, attractive looking shot, but straight uh, to Keo. He's got enough strength after his, uh, his stay at the crease, 116 not out, to le- reach down and uh, take uh, the ball. Passing it on now to get to Gareth Berg via Luke Proctor. 45 for two here on BBC Radio Canada, BBC Radio Northampton. 72 overs 
uh, a minimum remaining 182 to win or indeed of course eight wickets for Northamptonshire so to wrap this up did mention on uh, socials last night of the, the, the number of the four batters that uh, Rob Keogh joined on 15 first class hundreds for Northamptonshire we mentioned David Capel but also uh, Valence Jupp Rob Newton and uh, Mick Norman who celebrated his 90th birthday early this year had a message uh, earlier on this morning, which I'll come back to in a second, as Gareth Berg is starting a fresh over to Ben Compton, who squeezes that down away past backward point, running down towards the boundary. I don't think it's going to get there. No, it's not. Reeled in by James Sales. Three lived in the village that uh, his correspondent you don't, he basically put a, was the first man to put a cricket bat in his hands, and he I know, went on to play club cricket for uh, many years so Richard if you're listening morning thank you very much indeed for the message it was nice to hear a, a good recollection of, uh, of MEJC Norman mm -hmm. pushed forward again by Ben Compton almost a carbon copy except this time he doesn't manage to elude the man at backward point Sales good diving stop but they're still able to come through for a single Compton to 13 Kent to 48 for two Mick Norman of course played for Northamptonshire Northampton boy and then finished his career at, uh, at Leicestershire having crossed the Great Divide a fine player who is probably rather unfairly best remembered for, for one match at, uh, at Swansea as Berg comes in it's outside the off stump left alone by Joe Denley goes through to Lewis McManus when he was uh, he, we're talking about bagging a pair he bagged a pair I think on the same day and Ozzy Wheatley did him twice in a day and if you know the St Helens ground at Swansea, because it's sadly not used at the moment, we had all those steps up to the pavilion, so he had to do an awful lot of steps in the course of two innings during the day without a single run to show for his efforts. Here's Berg, in again bowls, and that's clipped nicely off his legs by Joe Denley, but very well fielded by Josh Cobb in there at mid-wicket. That was really sweetly timed by Denley, but just picked out the fielder. Got about 10 minutes to go until lunch. 48 for two. Northamptonshire would dearly love another wicket before the break from Kent's point of view. If they go in, just two down. I think that'll have just about shaded the morning session. Here's Berg in, bowls to Denley, runs it down into the slip cordon, fielded by Hassan Azad at second slip and there's no run it is unfair isn't it in, in cricket it's probably the same in all sport but sometimes players who have wonderful careers and score thousands and thousands of runs are often remembered for <laughs> for something where they don't have a very good day I'm thinking of Albert Lightfoot in Northamptonshire who scored thousands and thousands of runs for the county as Berg comes in and bowls to Denley who's defensively forward plays it up to extra cover Keogh fields end of the over 48 for two Compton is 13 Joe Denley still to get off the mark Berg's bowled three overs one for 16 and Albert Lightfoot you talk to Northamptonshire supporters of a certain age will say oh yeah he was the one who didn't run when Northamptonshire needed one to win off the last ball to beat the Australians in 1961 and he didn't run on strikers end and uh, the striker was run out and the match was a draw with the scores level and uh, it is very, very unfair that, that a, a real county stalwart is remembered for one occasion that he didn't run rather than for the thousands and thousands and thousands of times when he did. So White will come round the wicket, three slips in behind uh, Ben Compton. It's very low and it keeps wide as well. 48 for two, 179 to win here. About uh, 10, 12 minutes until lunch. The, uh, the not movable feasts on the, uh, the final day of the matches no. so it will be 1 o'clock and 3.40 for tea and then final hour of the match a minimum of 16 overs to be bowled as well around the wicket comes uh, White down the leg side and a good take actually by Lewis McManus just uh, trying a little bit too hard perhaps to uh, challenge him on leg stump you've been taking fi pictures so we have photographic evidence of yeah the, uh, indeed the yeah, that's yes. uh, quite right I too <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm keeping an eye on them just in case 
Yes. You know, we can't move from here, but uh, is White to Compton down the leg side again. And no need for Compton to play, going across his pads through to wicketkeeper McManus. Denley still yet to score, nine balls faced for him. And Kent understandably have gone quiet after the dismissal of Daniel Bell Drummond from 32 from 31 balls. Boundary after boundary for uh, Bell Drummond. Next slip's gone in. OK, well that would make sense. A third slip's come out. Still no slip catches in this match? No. I think we have, have we? No. So next slip employed now. Compton comes down the pitch. It's a nudge into the onside. He's uh, aggressive in that. It's not gone far from the uh, from the strip, but he was definitely on his toes if there was a possible run. But Rob Keogh has swept in from uh, cover and made sure there is no room for running. 48 for two. Two balls at the 14th over to come. Jack White starts. Left-hand side of the umpire runs round him more or less. Compton again with a push into the offside to see if that'll beat Keogh. It doesn't. And uh, yeah, another dot ball. Why does none for 12 so far? A ball shy of seven overs. Berg one for 16 on the three overs. So relatively, I suppose, expensive. But Daniel Baldrummond's wicket is an absolute prize. Crawley's gone as well. Bowled by Tremaine. So one very clean bowl, I would suggest. And the, uh, the, uh, the second... And inside edge onto the leg stump. Compton flicks that off his pads. Does well, plays it late around his pad front pad and takes a single. End of the over ruins the maiden for Jack White. 49 for 2. 178 to win for Kent. 70 overs minimum remaining in the day. Yes, and we say with around about what nine, ten minutes to go till lunch, probably what, two overs, possibly three. Unless Northamptonshire go down the well-worn route of an over of spin before lunch. I don't think that's probably very likely. Uh, but the captains going way back who um, certainly took into the late great Dennis Brooks who played under a few with them and said you could set your watch by it that they would uh, they would have to bring a spinner on before lunch. It's almost an act of faith. Here's Compton facing Gareth Berg and Compton steering it down to backward point. Sails, fields and there's no run. Still the two slips in, Vasconcelos at first, Azad at second, backward point. Josh Cobb, who's in the covers, is just having a chat with Ricardo Vasconcelos. He's now, in fact, coming into gully. Keogh in there in the covers. White at mid-off. Proctor at mid-on, mid-wicket and a deep backward square as Berg comes in outside the off-stump, left alone by Ben Compton. Goes through to Lewis McManus. Sun fully out now. So just occasionally we've lost the, the sunshine behind some fluffy cloud, but well, we do feel that we've rather deserved this, particularly after the, yeah. the weather on the first day, which was grim. Here's Bergen again, bowls to Compton, who nudges that down to backward point. Sales has to come into field, and there's an easy single to be had, and that's the 50 up for Kent, so. Another little psychological barrier passed by the home side. 50 for no wicket. We're in the 15th over. We're batting for just over an hour. Ben Compton is up to 15. Joe Denley still on a pair. And he's facing this ball from Gareth Berg. And Berg is in and Denley again looking to work it on the onside. Fielded by Josh Cobb at mid-wicket. And there's no run. Joe Denley, I'm sure, an experienced enough player not to be fretting too much about uh, things like that. Knows he's got plenty of time available and a job to do for his side. Here's Berg. In again, bowls to Denley, who's edged and it just lands in front of Azad at second slip. It's a good stop in the end, but that... Well, that was a matter of inches from carrying into the hands of second slip low down. Berg finding the edge. Can't take your eyes off this, can you? It's absolutely gripping stuff. Good bit of bowling by Berg, but Denley escapes. Here's 
Bergen again bowls to Denley who plays that back down the pitch for the bowler to field off his own bowling end of the over nearly a successful one but it wasn't four overs one for 17 Gareth Berg Kent 50 for two Compton 15 Denley yet to get off the mark Kent need another 177 runs to win yeah, this is uh, a thrawning contest ball by ball Compton is marking out his guard. White's going to start over the wickets to the left-hander. Compton has 15 from 39 balls. Then he's still yet to score, as Razzle was saying, off, uh, off 12 balls so far. Just trying to find a way into his, uh, his batting this summer. Got a two-ball duck in the, uh, the first innings. White to Compton. It'll go down the leg side, and Compton will leave that. The leg slip is still in there, so two... Orthodox slip, leg slip, is Gareth Berg, man at point, uh, cover, that's Rob Keogh there, mid on is captain uh, Luke Proctor, uh, mid wicket, that's Chris Tremaine there, and a deep square leg as well, can't see anybody in boundary on the offside, I think that's accounted for everybody, here's uh, White to Compton, he's clipped off his pads there, and uh, two square leg, the man comes in from the other uh, boundary, That'll be a single for Compton. He moves on to 16, 51 for two, Kent. Still the little, inverted commas, matter of uh, 176 to win. When Daniel Bell Drummond was uh, was going, it felt like it was uh, yeah, absolutely. very, very attainable. And now suddenly, I'm not sure about other Kent fans, but it feels like that's a, that's a long way away now. Well, it's, just a, it's just a matter of you know not rushing your fences. The first thing is to get through to lunch, isn't yeah, it? Make absolutely. sure we don't lose any more in this little session up to the break. So Four minutes to go until lunch as uh, Denley was oh, a swing and chopped into the ground. He's not timed that either. He is looking out of touch, Denley, in the middle, which is a, a rarity for him, but just isn't timing that at the moment. Looks at the toe end of his back. That's where he clunked it. We know he can be fluid, but he's anything but at the moment. Having a difficult time out there in the middle, Jack White. Hoping it comes to an end shortly. That's White. Over the wicket, the right-hander to the right-handed. Uh, Denley, he will get off the mark now. Just a little push-up to mid-off. And applause from uh, the Kent fans. Willing him to do well. There's a fielder at cover. Just went, went down in a heap a little bit there. Josh Cobb, he? yes. Did, he's, he, uh, <laughs> did he slip? On? Well, we, we've seen him once or twice in this match, haven't we? That um, On that the square that looks obviously yeah. fairly lush. And just, just the odd fielder has, has, has gone over, just lost their their footing and Josh Cobb did there. He's now heading out to the uh, the boundary just in front of the retirement apartments. Leg slip comes out for Compton so two orthodox slip. They've got a point extra cover as well. Cover I should say. It's just a, a little nudge by Compton. He's not an extravagant player of the ball. 17 he's on. Denley has one. Andrew Radoff to do a uh, a lunchtime update for uh, BBC Radio Northampton and I, I'm just going to I might just sort of earwig on him to see what I should be saying about the win percentage and uh, which way this game is couldn't tell you 53 for 2 we've seen enough twists and turns over the years around as a 9 I'm sure you have as supporters as well to know but uh, this is very much in the balance White to uh, Denley that's a better shot though I front elbow that might be four I don't think he got all of it but it's going to go away for a couple they'll run back to three actually good relay from those two uh, North Hampshire fielders Josh Cobb and I've seen the other fielder he's getting up a little bit gingerly I think he have got his uh, teeth rattled going down heavily on the rope there to uh, scoot the ball away end of the over 56 for two and that's James Sales just uh, getting himself back together. Mud on both knees, or definitely on the left knee there. You know, I think he just went down a bit awkwardly. Desperately trying to stop the ball go over the rope. He has saved a run. Who knows how important that'll be at the end. Gareth Burke comes in to Denley. Leaves it outside the off stump. No run. Denley on four now. Compton has 17. So we go towards um, a crisp filled lunch. I think it's fair to say. 
So thank you to the club. It's very kind of you. Berg to uh, Denley plays that onto his front pad. Low down. Goes harmlessly away though, out towards Keogh. Bits of hope though for uh, Northamptonshire. They might make another breakthrough before lunch. Very much hoping though. Over the wicket comes Berg then. To Denley. Wraps him on the pad. Um, goes down on one knee. Hand to face, almost like, almost like the sculpture of a thinker there, Gareth Berg. Like it might have been creeping down from this angle. Umpire Hartley not in the mood to give it, or certainly judging it not out. 56 for two, Denley four, Compton 17. But Denley's not into his stride yet, that's for sure. Two slips in behind him as Berg runs in. And uh, the one's up towards his midriff, played off a fourth stump line into the onside, no run. It's certainly uh, quietish out there, but almost adds to the tension. Berg turns at the top of his mark at the Nackington Road end. Two balls to come until lunch, Denley on the back foot trying to drive. He got three off the uh, in the previous over off uh, a very similar shot, but he finds Rob Keogh at cover. And there uh, is no run. Still to, to come for Kent, if they need, he said blithely. Uh, will be uh, Jack Leaney, Jordan Cox, Sam Billings, Joey Everson, Grant Stewart, Michael Hogan, Matt Quinn. The second slip has come out now. They're projecting the drive on the onside. Two mid-wickets as Denley faces his ball from Berg. Little push almost finds one of them. And Josh Cobb runs across and there is no run at the end of that. As it goes up to mid-on, Maiden from Gareth Berg. One for 17 off of five overs. Fascinating stuff here on BBC Radio Kent and BBC Radio Northampton. Hope you're enjoying it at home. Albeit you might be doing the equivalent of listening to it from behind the sofa. I'm not sure that really works, but that will be the interval then. Kent 56 for two, one seven one. still needed to win. Two wickets have fallen this morning. Zach Crawley, bowled by Chris Tremaine in the second over of the day, ripping his off stump out of the ground. Daniel Bell Drummond, who made 32 from 31 balls, hitting the ball crisply, but then uh, an inside edge onto his stumps, a ball from Gareth Berg, massive celebrations from Northamptonshire. You wouldn't be surprised to hear that. Still in the balance, you might say, with those two wickets before lunch, Northamptonshire perhaps just a, a smidgen ahead, but a lot of great cricket to come, we hope, this afternoon. And uh, in the sunshine here, the crowd certainly enjoying it, and we'll bring you the latest twists and turns in this match with me, Matt Cole, Andrew Rad, and uh, Fred Atkins, if he's not already writing up his match report come the afternoon session. Thanks very much for joining us. We'll be back soon.
Well, a very good afternoon to you. If you're just joining us, 56 for 2, Kent, as the uh, players come out for the afternoon session, the second session, penultimate session of the final day here at uh, Canterbury. Still needing another 171 to win. By dint of them being 56 for 2, Northamptonshire need eight wickets to win. If you, uh, you're you familiar with the game, you'll realise <laughs> what I'm talking about, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't explain it uh, quite that simply. Uh, 17 to Ben Compton, 4 for Joe Denley, a wicket each for Chris Tremaine and Gareth Berg. Berg finished on 56 today, a 100 partnership with Rob Keogh, who was uh, 116 not out at the end. Uh, Everson finished with a couple, he took 4 for 62. That's all in the past. We're very much centred on the present and uh, we'll maybe even look ahead to the future as well. Uh, I'm Matt Cole alongside me, Andrew Rad. And um, usually there's someone in the, in the uh, among the press crew who will tell you exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> no one no. is uh, is saying. They're not prepared to, to stick their necks out at no. all, are they? And I don't blame them. It's, it's just beautifully poised. Yeah. And, uh, a lot, as we always say, depending on the on the experienced players in the side. And Compton and Denley kind of got two of the best out there at the moment. But if Northamptonshire nip one of these out quickly then you never know. Luke Proctor is coming into the yeah. attack to bowl for the first time in the innings. I thought Jack White and uh, Chris Tremaine were, were pretty good with a new ball. Gareth Berg came in, went yeah. for one expensive over, but picked up the wicket of Daniel Bell Drummond, who was looking to play so positively. Uh, made hit seven fours in his 32, but a uh, bit of a scratchy start for Joe Denley, but he's still there, and we know what a dangerous player he is if he gets going. Yeah, you're right. He hasn't looked fluent at all, has he, so far, Joe Denley. A couple of back foot drives. Not really tied. One have got him uh, three runs. Three of his four, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, Luke Proctor, you say, round the wickets to Ben Compton. A slip and a gully. Does that hit him on the pad as a shout from two of the slips? Luke Proctor's not joined in, which probably tells you that's not going to be out. Not interested, was it? Yeah, not interested. On that angle, it must have been missing leg stump. Right, he's angling in towards the pads. They've had a leg slip in for a for a time. A dispense with that for Compton now. It looks looks like a more defensive field, but actually, they're attempting to s just to mop up Compton's scoring areas. Yeah. Obviously, the analysis has been done very well. Proctor to Compton. He goes fine with the glance. Will that be four? Diving attempt to stop. That is a great stop on the boundary. Goodness me, and a throw in. They've come back for just two. That was a wonderful bit of fielding. Is that Tremaine down It is down Tremaine there? down there, yes. I mean, he was, wasn't even second favourite to get to that, was he? He has... I thought for all the world that had gone. But uh, that was it. To not only stop it, yeah. but actually pick it up and get the throw in as well. Really that accurate throw. Well, accurate enough. That mean, meant that certainly Compton wasn't thinking about a third. They jogged through for two. Superb fielding. Could be crucial. 58 for two. Proctor to Compton just drops it into the offside. They take a quick run. That is well run as well. He's just dropped it into the offside. And a fielder coming in on that. Well, it was lovely to see Peter Burrows at lunchtime. Yes. Uh, who... Uh, do remember from many many years ago uh, covering county cricket and um, I think it was hearing about my first season which was 1984 and that was the season that Northamptonshire and Kent tied at, uh, at Northampton wonderful again yeah, terrific game of cricket so could happen well it could happen <laughs> so All, however many results are <laughs> possible well, absolutely but it was uh, that was a cracking game of cricket Northampton really should have won it and um, Kent hit back really strongly at the finish and managed to take up the last few wickets Proctor to Denley then Denley on the off stump is guiding that to uh, to point there's no run there's a fielder right there 59 for 2 168 to win for Kent but Duncan Wilde made a very very good 100 on the, in the, the second innings 130 odd and uh, Northamptonshire looked looked odds on, chasing 328, I think, something like that, and uh, just lost the last two or three wickets very cheaply, and Kent salvaged a tie. Slipping a gully in behind Joe Denley as well, man, uh, shortish on the mid-wicket as he defends that into the offside, Josh Cobb on the run at cover, throws that, loops the ball into the gloves of uh, Lewis McManus. So it's uh, a slip in a gully, point cover, mid-on, mid-off Jack White, I think, is that the first white floppy hat we've seen on the field? He, we? he wore in the first innings, oh, he, did he? Okay. he usually, he, he usually does, I don't think I've ever seen him wearing a cap. Fair enough 
the mid wicket long leg as well as Proctor bowls to Denley Denley again playing the ball to point immediately puts the hands up to stop any idea of Ben Compton had of backing up there end of the over 59 for two uh, BBC Radio Kent and BBC Radio Northampton we proudly bring you these commentaries anyway but it's a match like this it's a great pleasure and, uh, and a matter of pride to bring you such fantastic cricket, 59 for 2. Well, it is, and there have been some, some well, one very tight finish already in this uh, this round, um, just yeah. along at um, at Hove, where Sussex squeaked home against Durham by two wickets again. They looked to be coasting it, and then just lost their way a little bit, and in the end, they had to work very, very hard to get over the line. Just got that, um, that game up here, yes, Northamptonshire, who were chasing 331 to win. And um, they were 232 for three. And he thought this is going to be an easy one. Duncan Wilde got 100. Jeff Cook got runs at the top of the order. David Capel got 50. And then Kent just kept chipping away. And in the end, the last pair put on 16 to bring the scores level. That was uh, uh, Alan Walker and Jim Griffiths. And then the last wicket fell. Here's Tremaine starting proceedings from the Nackington Road end. First ball back of a length, punched off the back foot by Compton into the covers, fielded by Keogh and uh, there's no run and then Jim Griffiths was run out attempting the uh, the, the winning run and that is a finish, absolutely Terry Alderman picked up three wickets Kevin Jarvis got a couple, Chris Cowdery got a couple, Richard Ellison, Derek Underwood and Graham Johnson were the other bowlers mm. used that afternoon Al not keeping wicket of course happy birthday again to APE not 77 today. Here's Tremaine round the wicket, bowling to Compton, who's blocking that out into the covers, and there's no run. I have to say that the sort of fluffy, bubbly cloud that we had a little bit of this morning seems to have largely disappeared, yeah. and we've got some of that very high cirrus cloud, horse's tail cloud, but it is absolutely gorgeous. That's, yeah, they call it fair weather cloud, mm. that kind, don't they? And yeah, very high, but yeah, it's a beautiful day. Well, it's going to be fair weather today until you come to Northampton tomorrow, and then it's. <laughs> supposedly got a hose down but uh, yeah I think it's going to be <coughs> pretty wet yeah I look forward to a uh, heavy pitch at six fields yeah. maybe but uh, <laughs> we'll see here's Tremaine round the wicket bowling to the left handed Compton who again is in behind that playing it out into the covers Keogh fields and there's no run just one slip in for Chris Tremaine at the moment Vasconcelos is in there at slip then Hassan Adnan in the gully backward point big gap through the covers then Keogh at extra cover White at mid-off, Proctor at mid-on, then a mid-wicket and a deep square on the boundary. Out in front of Pylon 4. Here's Tremaine turning at the Nackington Road end, running in towards us. Bowls to Compton, who crosses stumps, playing it out into the onside where Josh Cobb fields at mid-wicket and there's no run. It's in those days in three-day cricket, of course, when the the attitude of the captains was so important, and you could just make up. Jeff Cook, who was captain of Northamptonshire at that time, was a wonderful judge of a declaration and what a team would chase and what they wouldn't chase. And with Northamptonshire having a quite a strong batting lineup in those days, he often had to had to really dangle the carrot, and it did lead to some some wonderful last days. Very lucky in that respect. Is Tremaine round the wicket bowls to Compton, and that didn't bounce. I think as much as Ben Compton thought it was going to, we've seen just the odd one in this game keep just a little bit low, not anything too pronounced, although Ricardo Vasconcelos in the first innings might disagree with that assessment, but the odd, the odd one's just got through a little bit. And ben Compton just has a some slightly suspicious prod of the pitch where that one bounced, but he was in it and behind it to find Chris Tavare was captain in Kent in, uh, in that match. He is... Tremaine in again bowls to Compton it's short outside the off stump Compton thinking about a little back foot punch doesn't really time but it runs out into the covers Keogh fields and that's the end of the over a maiden for Chris Tremaine to start the afternoon five overs two maidens one for 20 for the Aussie who picked up the wicket of Zach Crawley very early on in the piece in his first over of the innings stumps flying in all directions to dismiss Zach Crawley got him twice in the match and he did say when we were interviewing after the first innings oh, that he's played yeah. with Zach Crawley and Hobart Hurricanes in the B 
big bash and he said you know, the two wickets he wanted in the match in particular were was that Crawley and um, Sam Billings it's Proxton our bowls to Denley Denley trying to get just feels pinned down at the moment by the bowlers and that's uh, great credit to uh, Luke Proctor and the rest of his attack did start looking a little bit tentative uh, Jodin, a little bit scratchy but still just have the four of the 25 balls 20 from 51 for Compton still no alarms in terms of run rate or required rate for Kent should that come into it but Proctor now bowling to Denley playing a miss there we are saying he's looking a bit more secure and he's gone for that one seeming away from him getting some good bounce as well Proctor but uh, hasn't contacted that no connection with it 59 for two a little bit loose from Denley there just looking at that 1984 game it was um, it was a serious game of cricket right the way through it, they had a bit of rain on the first day Kent made 250 for six declared and then Terry Alderman and Richard Ellison bowled North out for 124 so Proctor bowls to Denley angles that to point again as he did a couple of times during the last over feel there is, uh, he's still down he's going to be alright don't worry this isn't a boxing <laughs> match but a sprawled James Sales sort of, James Sales to the left uh, he was in the wars a bit early wasn't he he made was, a fantastic yes. stop near the rope yes. but I think a bit like um, who was it in the Josh first Cobb Josh Cobb that's right yeah jarred his shoulder just a went bit. down heavily took him a time to go and, oh, he's in the wars again James Sales he's clutching his wrist now he's Proctor to Denley Denley on the leg stump just trying to clip that past the field but at the moment um, well Proctor's bowling and captaincy is working perfectly because every time Joe Denley plays what looks like a good looking shot it's going straight to a field of that time to Gareth Berg at mid wicket 20 for uh, Compton 4 for Denley yes Kent then declared at 204 for 5 in their second innings left Northamptonshire to make 331 as they all out for 330 steady game here's Proctor to Denley he does work this one off his pads but uh only up to the mid-wicket boundary and that's fielded by Sam Whiteman and they'll take a single on ball to come of this over at uh, eight minutes to two on the final day here at Canterbury on Easter Sunday I didn't wish everyone a happy Easter but I think that's implicit I did see a, a member of looks like a member of the Kent staff maybe nipping him for an Easter egg in the uh, the shop at lunchtime and we not quite sure who that was for nice work as around the wicket comes Proctor to Compton leaves it outside the off stump through thumping into the gloves of Lewis McManus he and the slips uh, not exactly race down the other end but a good jog uh, coming down 64-2 Denley 5 Compton 20 167 Kent need to win 8 wickets for Northamptonshire to take victory before that if they do a minimum of 64 overs remaining as ever, keeping an eye on what's happening elsewhere around the country. And uh, the other Division 1 match is still in progress. Of course, Hampshire beat Nottinghamshire yesterday. Uh, Surrey, who set Lancashire 444 to win. Lancashire 116 for two. So, looks a little bit drawish at the moment, doesn't it, that one? Unless Surrey can get amongst uh, Lancashire's pretty strong, pretty deep batting order. That's at Old Trafford at Lords, Middlesex. Well, this is an interesting one now. We've looked dead and buried. Uh, 168 for seven, needing another 140 to win. Three wickets in hand. Here's Tremaine over the wicket to Denley, short. And Denley sways out of the way. There are two men back. If Denley tries the hook, there's a deep square and a long leg. White down at long leg in front of the fielding paraphernalia. Just having a, a word with Gus Miller, 12th man who's down there. And there's a man back at deep square as well and uh, well again it's Ryan Higgins what a, what a special cricketer he is he's keeping Middlesex very much afloat in that match 38 not out here's Tremaine in bowls to Denley outside the off stump Denley leaves it alone goes through to Lewis McManus when you think Middlesex were what 41 for 4 93 for 7 and those two have put on 79 unbroken for the eighth okay. wicket. They need another 136 to win. They couldn't, could they? <laughs> Northampton should play Middlesex uh, at Northampton next week. Yeah, Middlesex should not be winning that game, should well, they? Well, they shouldn't, and they, and they may not, but it's uh, it's a little bit more interesting than it certainly lasted rather longer than we thought it might. Here's Tremaine running towards us. Bowls to Denley, and it beats him. It is bowled him. 
It's bowled him. It kept a little bit low. It just clipped the off stump on the way through. The off bail is on the floor. You can hear, I'm sure, through the effects, Mike, what North Aberdeen think about it. That ball kept low. And Joe Denley, I think, well, can probably rightly feel a little bit aggrieved there. He goes for five, but it's another big wicket for Chris Tremaine. And Kent are 60 for three. Yeah, he has his seventh of the match as well. Uh, as you say, another big wicket. Denley didn't look entirely comfortable throughout that innings, but we know he can grow into innings, and what a powerful competitor he can be. Oh, he comes out, and deep though this Kent batting lineup is, three down does not look good for them. Just having a look at that on the on the replay. Yeah, it just, it just kept low. It, it, it clipped the off stump on the way through, but it probably hit about a third of the way up the stump at, at best, I would think. So, but that's a fourth day pitch. It's it's been a good sur it's been a good surface, I and mean, it's produced some excellent cricket. Um, but we've said right the way through, just the odd one is doing a little bit, and Joe Denley, unfortunately for him, got one of the ones that did do a bit. But Chris Tremaine absolutely delighted. Jack Leaning comes to the crease. 60 for three, so Kent need another 167 to win. Time, as we say, not really an issue at all. They still have another 63 and a bit overs to go, so that, that's not really going to be an issue, you wouldn't think. And Northamptonshire needs seven more wickets. Leaning taking guard from umpire Peter Hartley. And what's feel, what sort of field are they going to set for the new battle? They just keep sticking with a slip and a gully. Baskin Salos at slip. Adnan in the gully. They've got a man on the drive at mid-wicket, Josh Cobb, and a man on the drive at extra cover, Rob Keogh. A backward point, mid-off, mid-on, and a deep square leg just behind, and a deep long leg as well. As Tremaine is in, bowls to Leaning, outside the off stump. Nice shape, but good judgment from Jack Leaning, who leaves it alone. Goes through to Lewis McManus. Just the start to the afternoon session that Northamptonshire would have wanted. Picked up those two wickets before the break. Crawley and Bell Drummond, who was flowing like the Nile, he was playing beautifully. Beautifully put. 32, including seven fours. But then just got a little edge onto his stumps from Gareth Berg. Here's Tremaine. Straight approach, bowls outside the off stump again, and Jack Leaning leaves it alone as easy as you like, and there's the usual quota of ooh and ah and. How did that miss? But left alone by Jack Leaning. Didn't need to play it and didn't. And still Ben Compton is there. And you think if Kent are going to knock this uh, target off, they're probably going to need Ben Compton to to play that sort of anchor role, which he plays so very well and did so often for Kent last year, including at Northampton, of course. And he played beautifully. Got another hundred. Here's Tremaine in bowls to Leaning once again outside the off stump, once again left alone by Jack Leaning, but a successful over for Northamptonshire from Chris Tremaine, who gets a little high five from his captain Luke Proctor for his pains. Wicket maiden for Chris Tremaine, six overs, three maidens, two for 20, and as Matt pointed out a moment or two ago, seven wickets in the match. So a satisfactory debut already for Chris Tremaine, who's only here for three matches uh, for Northamptonshire, but Plenty of power to add, and he'll be hoping to put a few more in the wickets column this afternoon. But 60 for three it is. Kent require a further 167 to win. George has got in touch with us on the email, kentcricket at gmail.com. You can get in touch by Twitter as well, at oldmanrad, R-A-double-D for Andrew. Left outside the off stump by Compton again. Proctor looks like he's getting closer and closer to that off stick. Um, or at BBC Kent Sport also on Twitter. Uh, George got in touch just before lunch. Glad to hear your lovely voices again. Oh, George, you are too kind. After a bleak and cold winter, my season starts next week for Lid Cricket Club, with my league club but starting the week after. Two trophies in two seasons for Kent. As Proctor comes around the wickets to Compton. Defensive, no run. Uh, if Kent can start the season strongly, I'm sure we'll win two, two trophies this season. 
Love that optimism, George, certainly. <laughs> Kent will win a decanter this afternoon. Everson looks like a great signing. Kind regards, George from Romney Marsh. George, great to hear from you. Thanks well, for getting in touch. I agree entirely about um, Joey Everson. Whether whether it's one in, at a canter, we'll see. But they may do. He may have a part to play with a bat still. Yes, Joey Everson, absolutely. of course. And Northampton will be hoping sooner rather than later. 60 for three. Proctor to Compton. Ended off Austin. Proctor's going round the wicket still. One slip and a gully in behind him. They've got a, a man at this interesting field position just backwards square. Yes, it's almost like a sort of leg um like a sort of leg gully, isn't yeah. it, really? Um That's fascinating. Said Compton doesn't score in many areas and that is by no means a criticism. He is very choosy about what he plays. As uh, Compton finds the man at mid wicket at the drive there Josh Cobb dives to, to get it <laughs> and uh, Josh Cobb going down in stages <laughs> there wasn't it easy stages but good stop that's a mid on and a mid off it's a boundary rider on the leg side by the way Out there is uh, James Sales and then on the offside oh, it's not really a mid off is it it's more of an extra cover a point and a gully away from the slip and with keeper and jams the bat on that one does uh, Compton and that's no run once more 167 to win minimum of 62 overs 60 for 3 it's coming past 2 o'clock just a little stat out of that um, Sussex win against Durham we were talking about mm. earlier it's the first time Sussex have won their first game of the season for 8 years that's it really? 2015 yeah. I saw it on Twitter exchange about same side having been batting at the start of every day of this match. Oh, right. Well, I'm sure whether that was a mm. any kind of record or... Here's Proctor round the wicket to Compton helps it down towards fine leg. Headed hands from the slip there, but I think Compton had that under control. He's not one to uh, swing blithely, certainly, for uh, for the boundary. He's taking himself a... A single, he's on to 21, leaning yet to score from three balls. I don't know how much of an anomaly that is, but it is a, it's an interesting... It's interesting one, yeah, yeah. I, I suspect it's... it's stand out, or, yeah. It may not be that unusual, I don't know, it may not be that unusual, but... Uh, yeah, it's Put it this way, it, it's one, if Easter Monday tomorrow turns out to be very wet and very cold and I don't venture out the house, it's the sort of thing I might possibly have a little look yeah. at, but <laughs> other than that... It's uh, Sean and uh, Thornado on uh, on Twitter. <laughs> we don't know is the answer to that. No, but uh, probably a little bit too absorbed in this contest to uh, to spend the time looking at the moment. But yeah, it's interesting nonetheless. As uh, Tremaine just bowls to just outside the off stump to Compton. It's one of the, uh, one, of the no thing, one of the things that. Uh, coaches talk about bowling dry don't they and this is this is what I think Northampton are looking to do here just dry the runs up stop with you been talking about mm. the work that's obviously been done looking at Ben Compton scoring areas just keep the runs down keep building the pressure there's not a huge amount of as you say time pressure but just let the batsman wonder where the next uh, where the next runs coming from here is Tremaine around the wicket again bowls to Compton who pushes forward goes off a thickish Inside edge, adding to the onside. Good bit of fielding. Sprawling stop there by Josh Cobb, who sends in his return. Lewis McManus has the bails off, but Ben Compton was back in his ground. And now backward point drops back onto the boundary. That's James Sales. 61 for three. So Kent have scored five runs since lunch. Lost the wicket of... Joe Denley's been out there for just over 20 minutes. And here is Tremaine. I'll let Matt update you. Yeah, and Kendall, 62 for three here. Fascinating contest. I think Northampton's are just a little bit ahead on the final day. Kent need another 165 to win this. Northampton are now seven more wickets as Joe Denley, uh, just after lunch, got one that kept a little bit low, clipped his off stump and went for just five runs. Crawley's gone for three, Bell Drummond for 32 as Northampton should look for these seven wickets to wrap this up as a victory, which will be a, a massive come-from-behind effort uh, if they do. Kent hoping to see it out with the remaining 160. 
65 runs for victory before we're done uh, around about six o'clock today. Plenty of cricket to be played. A really exciting match. Northamptonshire perhaps with their noses just in front on the final day in the sunshine though here at Canterbury. Commentary continuing via the BBC Sport website and app. Yes, Chris Tremaine. A couple of wickets to his credit so far in this innings. Looking for a, a third, for an eighth in the match. I don't know if his Uncle Mark's still listening to us. I hope he is. I don't know if it's um, yeah too far into the... Um, well, I guess it would be the Sydney early hours of the morning, yeah. wouldn't it, now? Here is Tremaine with a slip and a gully in. Bowls and forces leaning into a defensive stroke. Out into the offside. Rob Keogh fields an extra cover. And there's no run. So you're saying you're at Edgbaston next week? Then, yes, you? indeed. Yeah, I've been looking at the forecast. I think for everybody, um, so we're, we're we're just waiting to see, aren't we? Because I think there should be showers blowing through. I think the the country next week. Yeah, it's, all it's a bit, bit sort of just generally a bit unsettled. I think, isn't it? Yeah. Back end of the back end of the week when the next round of matches starts, we should be back on home territory at Wantage Road against Middlesex. Here's. Tremaine in bowls to Leaning short pulled away by Jack Leaning but there is a man back on the boundary the result of which they're only going to get a single one to Jack Leaning who's off the mark and nicks the bowling as well 63 for 3 at the end of the over Compton 22 Leaning has made a single Tremaine 2 for 22 from 7 overs and it's going to be Luke Proctor con to uh, continue from this pavilion end Last year at Edgbaston, important victory for Kent actually yes. in the context of it. It looked like they might be helping Warwickshire down at that point, and there was a lot of well, a lot of cricket to be played after that. But in the end, of course, both teams survived, and uh, yeah, be it. another great contest, I'm sure, next week. It's going to have to go some way to match this, though. 63 for three. Lean just marking out his guard. He's taking his time. Holding up Luke Proctor. He's got uh, left hand on his hip. Just tossing the ball up to himself in his right hand. Bundles in now towards the leaning. On that leg and middle. Leaning sees it off up to mid on. It's fielded by Jack White. Well, that you haven't played Middlesex since 2019. Okay. Um, they've obviously been in different, uh, different divisions, but... Uh, and of course, Northamptonshire didn't play Middlesex at all until 1930, which 25 years after becoming a first-class county, because Middlesex weren't really very keen on playing Northamptonshire, so they didn't do so for uh, until the 1930 season. Proctor to Leaning, a little stump that one, as we can uh, watch Morris down the barrel of Leaning's forward defensive back to the bowler, and there's no run. In the days when, to a large extent, counties used to sort out their own fixtures, which is why, for many seasons, counties played. A, a, well, differing number of games. Um, so they played who they wanted, rather yeah, than pretty much. Yeah. Yes. yes. Proctor to leaning. Once again, just a forward defensive up towards Jack White. No run. Interesting if they did that now, wouldn't it? Think of. Uh, they might even consult the media. Where do you, where do you want to play, chaps? Well, that's a nice ground. Lunches are good there. Nice commentary box. We well, you know the crisps are good here. At crisps uh, are excellent yeah. at Canterbury. Yeah. <laughs> almost too much. Almost too much of a good thing. I was going to say we we haven't quite finished the twelve packets yet, but it's again a forward defensive, but this time slightly into the offside and fielded by Josh Cobb. No run, and understandably after the loss of Joe Denley, Ken shutting up shop a bit here. Yes, yeah. This afternoon to uh, to John, Northamptonshire North supporter, who did uh, message me at lunchtime and say enjoy the crisps and hopefully Northamptonshire win. Well, the crisps are very nice. The rest remains to be seen. Proctor to leaning. Again, he's very solidly behind that one for a, another dot ball. Plenty of applause and out in the middle anyway. Otherwise, a little bit quiet. We found quite a few spectators, didn't we? Out of our sight here, and very sensibly placed. Yeah. It's a wonderful little sun trap down in front of the uh, the lime tree the cafe, lime tree cafe yeah. down there. Wonderful, superb. Here's Proctor to Leaning. Who's beaten him? Leaning's played inside that one anyway. Through to the wicket keeper, and that is the end of the over. Proctor four overs, one maiden, which that was. None for five so far. 
We've been saying that the match down at Taunton we pretty much nailed on draw with obviously having lost the first mm. day's play and a bit of the second as well. Well, not so sure. Warwickshire batted on to get 392, so they got a lead of 108, and now they've got Somerset 27 for 3 in their second inning. So Somerset are still 80, 81 runs behind, three wickets down. Ollie Hallen Dolby struck twice. So Warwickshire giving themselves a chance possibly to conjure something up on the last afternoon. Some fascinating games around for yeah. this first round of matches. Not least here. 63 for three. 164 more needed. Here's Tremaine. Bowls. Beautiful drive by Ben Compton. Away through extra cover. Running out towards the boundary. No way is anybody going to stop that. Crosses the rope in front of the main scoreboard. Right up in Ben Compton's slot. And punched it away through the covers for four. Lovely drive. And it takes Compton to 26. And Kent to 67 for three. <coughs> Excuse me. Needing another 160 to win first boundary since lunch I think it is yes yeah. they've only scored what 11 11 runs yeah. in half an hour since lunch but that's ok they've lost the one wicket but as you say these two need to just regroup still have 60 odd overs remaining 160 runs needed here's Tremaine round the wicket bowls to Compton who covers up round the line of off stump maybe just outside plays it back down the pitch Tremaine fields and there's no run. I do think that uh, Middlesex-Essex match is, is boiling up very nicely. A match that you thought Middlesex had absolutely no chance in. 178 for 7, now 130 to win. A few nervous Essex supporters around um, NW8, I would imagine, this afternoon. Yeah. Higgins and Holman are the uh, yes, that's right. batsmen. Up. Big aeroplane, the hairliner, just passing over the ground. I see the contrail behind it. Here's... Tremaine, round the wicket, bowls to Compton, plays that up to mid-wicket where Cobb fields, there's no run, presumably off to some holiday destination, but why would you want to be anywhere other than Canterbury this afternoon for this denouement of this championship match between Kent and Northamptonshire? It's been a terrific game to watch and we've been spoilt here, Matt, haven't we really? The game last year, which was a, which was again a wonderful game of cricket, and same, same here. Two teams seem to bring out the best in each other, certainly here at Canterbury. Here's Tremaine, bowls to Compton, who again covers up, pushes it out into the covers, fielded by Keogh, and there's no run. He makes it there to flick the ball onto the stumps where Jack leaning out of his ground. I think they're leaning and, Cobb, uh, leaning and Rob Keogh, I think, are quite, uh, quite good mates. They seem to be having a chat a couple of times during this match, so just a bit of by play. But that set of Kent Northamptonshire matches at Northampton two years ago when we started the season there it was just Arctic <laughs> conditions when you've got a very fetching line of ski gear then I do remember here's Tremaine in bowls and beats Compton with a Jaffa it bounced it I'm not sure it seemed away an awful lot it probably just held its line but it beat Compton outside the off stump goes through to Lewis McManus 67 for three it stays Yes, that first uh, first game of the 2021 season it was perishing. We were commentating outside, weren't we? Because yeah. it was the yeah. aftermath of the fact there was still COVID, there was still no no supporters in the ground. So uh, we had the ground to ourselves, but it was very, very cold. Match finished by snow in the last afternoon. Now, backward point has come up into the ring to save one. As Tremaine is in, bowls and again beats Compton outside the off stump. A couple of serious effort balls to finish the over there from Chris Tremaine. Both of them bouncing and just leaving Compton maybe a touch. But he's still there. Compton 26, leaning one. 67 for three, Kent. They need another 160 to win. Chris Tremaine, two for 26 from eight overs. Proctor to continue from the pavilion end. Tough out there for Kent at the moment. Really great bowling effort from uh, Northamptonshire. Luke Proctor rotating his bowlers, but Chris Tremaine has already proved himself a good signing. Five wickets in the first innings, two in the second. Beating the bat a couple of times there. Proctor two leaning. Angled the, the ball on the ground to mid-wicket, and there's no run. Championship match 
at Northampton last year between these two. It was quite a high scoring affair, but Kent actually had a chance. I remember that the we had a fascinating first hour on the last day where Kent were looking to enforce the follow on. The thing was once Northampton got past the follow on figure, that was that was the game. It's going to be a draw. Um, but they they had a chance, and I think they Northampton were finally reaching the target about eight down. Proctor to uh, leaning outside the off stump and left alone by the Kent number five. But it was uh, it was a it was a tight old affair for a, for a little bit, and then unfortunately the game just rather drifted after that, and uh, that was when Ben Watts and I were on, and we said when various people were bowling, and let's say famously when Ben Curran got back, so would it be awful if somebody got injured in this sort of situation where they're basically just going through mm. the motions? And um, sure enough, Ricardo Vasconcelos broke, broke his thumb in the field and missed the whole of the T20. It's Proctor to leaning. Settling on uh, just outside off stump is leaning. Not showing any aggressive intent really so far in his innings, but you can understand that. Having a good look. Just one of 15 balls. Compton has 26, 67 for three. Still a load of time. 58 and uh, half overs. 160 to win. Or at seven wickets now for Northampton just to take victory here. That was also when Ben Compton had to uh, acknowledge the applause for his 100 twice because the scoreboard got it wrong. Is Proctor 2 leaning straight back at the bowler. One bounce. Proctor shies as if to throw it straight back at the, uh, at the batter's stumps. Although he didn't actually have the ball in his hand. But keeping leaning on his toes. So he, he got to, got to a hundred. We thought Ward gave him a hundred, and everybody applauded and raised his bat and all the rest of it. And then the board ticked back to ninety nine. <laughs> so he got it wrong, and so he has to go through the whole rigmarole again. It's uh, Proctor to uh, leaning, defends it once more. Straight back at the bowler. Yeah, Mark Churchill would have nipped in at this point to tell you. Uh, his good friend Johnny Barron announcing to a packed <laughs> oval that Joe Denny had just got to his century. Scoreboard said 99. There was a, <laughs> <laughs> was a buzz. Hang on, hang on, we said, Johnny, who said in the commentary box. <laughs> Not quite. Proctor to, uh, to leaning up to uh, mid off, and there is no run. End of the over. It's a maiden. Another one for Proctor. Five overs, two maidens, and none for five. Leaning one. 26 for Compton. 6 7 4 3. Ken chasing 2 2 7 in total to win. Northamptonshire wanting those seven more wickets before we're done uh, tonight. Of course, when you're a stadium announcer, you get pretty instant feedback well, from the audience, <laughs> don't you? Not just the, the emails coming in like we do, yeah, but uh, yeah. yeah. Yes, you can imagine, can't you? Uh, Middlesex are nine down against Essex at Lords. Okay. They've just uh, broken that partnership. Shane Snate has picked up the wickets of uh, Ryan Higgins and Toby Rowland-Jones Rowland Jones' first ball in fact so 180 for 9 now Middlesex so it looks as though that's going to be Essex's game after all down at Lords 67 for 3 here Tremaine in bowling to the left-handed Compton who's defensively out on the offside fielded by Rob Keogh and uh, there's no run Clive's been in touch hi guys he says was at the game Friday but now sitting on a balcony in I'll try and pronounce this correctly. Argostoli in Kefalonia, uh, overlooking the harbour in the sunshine, listening to the cricket and drinking wine. Our oh, <laughs> sympathies to you, Clive. It sounds absolutely dreadful, but do what you can. Uh, thinking this game might go to the wire, which on Friday morning never thought it would. No, so we didn't either. Very Great true. to hear from you, Clive. Thank you, KentCricket at gmail.com. This is Tremaine in bowls to Compton, who plays it up to mid-on this time. Proctor Fields, and uh, there's no run. Thoughts and prayers for Clive. Absolutely. Kef Kef Kefalonia? Kefalonia, yeah. I was going to say Kettering. I was going to say <laughs> if you were sitting on the balcony drinking wine in Kettering. I could understand it, but... Uh, it doesn't sound too bad. Playground of the Midlands. Still just won the slip in. Baskin Salos in there at slip. Backward point. Cover on the boundary. Extra cover. Mid-off. Mid-on. Mid-wicket. And a man at deep long leg. And here's Tremaine. Round the wicket, bowls to Compton, paddles it round the corner, runs for him here. But there is a man, as I mentioned, out there on the boundary, Sam Whiteman. So keeps it to a single. But every run crucial in a game of this variety. 68 for three. Kent, Compton to 27 of 70 balls. That doesn't matter one little bit. He will be 
entirely aware of the job he needs to do this afternoon. Jack Leaning hoping to make a contribution as well. One off 18 balls. And a couple of snorters from Tremaine that came close to dismissing Compton in the previous over. This Leaning on strike. Short. Pulled away by Leaning. He's going to get one. Is he going to come back for two? They're not going to take on James Sales' arm, which is probably fairly wise. Lovely throw. Inch perfect over the top of the bales to Lewis McManus. But one more onto the total. 69 for three, Kent. Leaning doubled his score to two. Just seen some pictures of Kefalonia. I know it's very much like Kettering. I would imagine um, so, yes. I mean, apart from perhaps the Azure Sea and the, uh, <laughs> the beautiful coastline. Sun, Sea and Sand. Oh, it's in it, that, in it's that exactly, case, it's it's exactly the same. Well, <laughs> 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 yes, well, yeah. I don't know why he went all that way, Clive, to be honest. <laughs> Absolutely not. 14 miles up the road from Northampton. Here's Tremaine, short, and a little bit of a loopy bouncer that Ben Compton had all the time in the world to just help it round to the fielder at long leg for a single. Didn't hit it, he just helped it round the corner. One more to Compton. 28 to him. Kent, 70 for three. 157 more runs needed to win. Yes, you can have a lovely look at the the A43 between Northampton and uh, and Kettering. There was some lovely roadworks there. And the Sywell roundabout. Take 15 minutes to get through there. You have time to admire the scenery. Here's Tremaine. In again, bowls to leaning. And again, tucking leaning up a little bit. Plays it up to mid on. And there's no run. End of the over. 70 for three, Kent. Leaning is two. Compton is 28, Tremaine 2 for 29 from 9 overs and we're going to get a change mm -hmm. I think at this pavilion end Luke Proctor is going to take a blow after bowling 5 tidy overs for 5 runs and Jack White is coming into the attack from this pavilion end Obviously other World Heritage Sites are available uh, <laughs> you can't to 70 for 3 157 the victory target Required rate for the 57 overs, the minimum remaining, would be just over three. I would say when that gets towards four, Kent might be looking at a, a bit of stonewalling perhaps for a draw, but obviously the game can ebb and flow considerably in 57 overs, so Compton just uh, doing a little bit of gardening, a slip and a wide gully and for him this man up. As Radders was saying a sort of leg gully position as well. Went on the drive both sides of the wicket. One of whom is Rob Keogh at cover. Just gently softly pushed out towards him on the offside. Again there's no alteration in the conditions. A little bit of a breeze nothing like yesterday and I gather it's coming from the south as well which is uh, a little bit more clement than what we've had Barbie. Yes, Possibly quite. Barbie yeah. with an L. In the last, yeah. <laughs> last couple of days. Just looking around the ground. A couple of supporters just taking a, a circuit, a leisurely circuit. As this one's a push forward out into point. Fielded by Whiteman. And there's a no run. There's an array of, of physio equipment. There's the old exercise mats out there with the the foam roller, an instrument of torture used <laughs> by a physiotherapist, as, as far as I'm aware. Uh, and various bits of cricket kit out there, and helmets and pads and gloves. That's white bells to Compton, once again defended, and there's no run. So a lap of the ground is one of the great joys of, mm. uh, of well, any any cricket, but county county cricket in particular. A little wander around the ground and see a, see the match from all angles. Canterbury's a decent lap as well, isn't it? You get yeah. most of the lap that you can do is actually with inside of the cricket, and there, was there are a few grounds these days, and I suppose Test grounds very much where you're mm. you're having to go behind buildings yes, to that's right. to do the lap, but uh, yeah, it's very pleasant here. It's white to Compton driving shot. through the offside that's a lovely shot cover drive he just waits for the ball Compton he waits for the right one and he's on to uh, 32 from 75 deliveries and what road you can get 
round get most, more it, escort, Very yeah. similar to here, actually. Yeah. You could get pretty much all the way round. Um, in fact, I suppose, yeah, if you, could, you could probably get all the way all the way round because you could get through in front of the, uh, the Ken Turner, the old indoor centre. Mm. So, yeah, you probably could actually go right the way round. On a day like this. In front of the Spencer Pavilion as well. Yeah. Timmy on the drive on the onside now for Compt. He reaches a wide delivery there and he's just guided that out. Steered it forward, just forward a square and the offside point it was, was wide from uh, Jack White as well. That's but four more. This is so impressive from Ben Compton because you know, he's having to soak up, the both batters are soaking up a lot of pressure. But as soon as the bowler errs and Jack White's just lost his line a little bit, last two deliveries, very full, very wide. He puts them away for four and just eases the pressure a little bit, brings that requirement down under 150 now. It's very, very impressive batting from Ben Compton. Round the wicket comes White to Compton. Now he's that into the offside again. He's found a gap and they'll come back for a hard run two to the arm of Rob Keogh, who does his best. Actually, it's a really good throw, falling backwards as he does. But again, Compton has picked the spot, picked the ball he wanted there and has taken 10 off that over. 38 for him, two. Uh, for Jack Leaning. Yes, it might not be uh, in the current England international vogue, but <laughs> we said last season, I mean, he is a, he feels like a bit of a throwback, Ben Compton is, but he is uh, invaluable to, well, to his side in, in terms of staying around, accumulation of runs. Well, the last time I saw him bat, of course, was here in the, um, the one-day cup last year when uh, it was a fairly low-scoring game and Kent were chasing a target that you think that should be fairly easy but they lost wickets and it took Ben Compton to, to dig in and play a terrific innings he was out I think was it scores level or they needed one to win or a couple of to win or something but basically took Kent to victory with a very level headed innings and that's what he's doing here today Jack leaning on strike against Chris Tremaine who drives up to mid off where Proctor fields and there's no run interesting one for Proctor wasn't it, it took himself out of the attack having bowled five very tidy yeah. overs with just five runs building a bit of pressure Brought Jack White on, that's fine. I mean, Jack White's one of his one of his main strike bowlers. Picked up four wickets in the first innings, and suddenly he's gone for ten. And Kent now eighty for three. The requirement down to one four seven under one hundred and fifty. It's another one of those little psychological barriers that Kent have gone through in this run chase. Is Tremaine in bowls to leaning outside the off stump, left alone. I think almost left alone as much on length is on line just outside the off stump but it was passing well over the top of the stumps Tremaine again putting in a good shift here as he did in the first innings bowled 18 overs 5 for 44 in the first innings he's already into his 10th over here picked up 2 of the 3 wickets to fall batters out Crawley for 3 Bell Drummond for 32 and Denley for 5 here's Tremaine in bowls to Jack Leaning. Fuller ball played out into the covers for Keogh to field and there's no run. And he's one of those players that seems equally comfortable playing a, a defensive uh, innings as he does. We've seen him in T20 smashing the ball to all parts but he, uh, it was a stone wall against Lancashire at Old Trafford last season to grab Kent a draw from that match that they look like they'd be defeated in and here he is playing a almost an anchor to Ben Compton at the moment leaning on strike is Tremaine and again full length pushed up to mid wicket where Cobb fields and there's no run applause for the bowler from Lewis McManus behind the stumps of Hampshire's vice captain you do feel well, you feel the same way Matt but you think Ben Compton is really the key to this mm. Uh, but you could get him fairly swiftly then they will feel they've got a, a really good chance but if Compton st stays there does what he does then you feel Kent are going to win this here's Tremaine in again bowls to Leaning who drives doesn't time it it's a good stop off his own bowling from the tall man Chris Tremaine drove it back and he just had to stoop down and get something on it which he did off any possibility of the ball going behind him for runs, although there is a mid-off and a mid-off, a mid-on and a mid-off in. 80 for three. The target, remember, 2-2-7. There are still 55 overs to go in 
the day after this one minimum and here's Tremaine running in again to bowl to Jack Leaning and Leaning pushes that out into the offside where Rob Keogh feels there's no run that's the end of another over from Chris Tremaine it's a maiden and Kent 80 for 3 Leaning is 2 Compton is 38 Tremaine's taken 2 for 29 from his 10 overs and Middlesex, well, they're, they're not going down without a fight. 195 for 9 now, so the last pair put on 20-odd. What do they need? They need oh. another 113 to win, oh, so it's not terribly yeah. likely. Tim Murta's in there, though, so yep. no, no mung with the bat. Holman's still there, 52, not out. So Middlesex still afloat, just. Good cricket to Luke Holman, isn't he? Isn't he just? They've got Ryan Higgins there as well, haven't they? Middlesex. Yes, he moved there. So he's, he's gone back, hasn't he? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Moved from Gloucestershire at the end of uh, the end of last season. I mean, he it, it was he and Luke Holman that basically gave Middlesex a bit of a chance yeah. with a, a longish partnership. Higgins has gone now, but fine cricket. I had a big hundred at Northampton last year in the Championship. White round the wicket to Ben Compton. Compton straight back at the bowler, no run. Lewis McManus is signalling. Down to fine leg. Is that Chris Tremaine maybe wants just to wants a break, I think. I think is the indication there. White back to his mark now. Two Compton is on thirty eight. Compton defensive. Almost a carbon copy of the ball the delivery rather and the shot that uh, Ben Compton just played the previous delivery I'm going to update BBC Radio Kent listeners in just a moment a little bit of wind noise on the microphone there. it's been buffeted Gale, breeze coming gale the force winds coming early <laughs> <laughs> don't think we're going to go off for the weather any time very soon here's White to uh, to Compton a bit on the back shows us the maker's name as they say and again back up the pitch this time towards the leg side Josh Cobfields at uh, mid on as it crawls towards him update coming from BBC Radio Kent listeners very delicately poised indeed on a knife edge one might say if you're going to go for that cliche 80 for 3 Kent they need another 147 uh, from 54 and a bit overs around about 3 and over uh, here for victory in the final day of their game against Northampton I'd still say Northampton's probably just a whisker ahead pretty sure it's not going to be a draw at this stage that one of the two sides is going to win it but developments after lunch Joe Denley who'd been uh, finding things a little bit difficult out there the former England man uh, had uh, a low ball come to him from uh, Chris Tremaine just hit his off stump he went 4-5 since then uh, Jack Leaning has dug in two runs from 26 balls and at the other end Ben Compton is playing another estimable innings 38 from 82 balls a, a rock like anchor uh, for Kent at the top of the order. 80 for 3 then, a lot of cricket to be played. Exciting it is too here at Canterbury in the sunshine. Commentary continuing by the BBC Sport website and app. So that's five dot balls now. Compton hasn't seen one that he thinks is loose enough to, to, uh, to aggress or play into the outfield. And White's kept him very honest indeed. They're very quiet. Number 29 of 10 overs. That's his second maiden, Jack White. 80 for three, Kent. That's uh, a couple of members of the coaching staff from Northampton in. Yeah, it's uh, Chris, Chris Lorkin, the strength and conditioning coach. Have you wandered around with, I think, I was just going to see it, with those rather odd... What, what sort of hat is that? I was going to say, it's a bucket, bucket hat, is they called? Yeah. Bucket hat, is it? Yeah, I think uh, so. Alex Russell, I think, is the, uh, the cricketer underneath that. But um, Shirt sleeve order. I've seen one I'm or sure two of those uh, those hats around yeah. this season. It's probably a new merchandising it's a thing. thing. Yeah, it's yeah. No, I could, I, sorry, it could be. I'm, I'm asking. Well, I'm not telling. Fashion hasn't, re fashion hasn't reached my corner of East <laughs> Northamptonshire yet. But anyway, uh, change of bowling from the... Nackington Road end, as, as Matt flagged up, I think uh, Chris Tremaine was just having a quiet word and saying, yeah. 
maybe just time for a blow and Gareth Berg is coming back into the attack picked up the wicket of Daniel Bell Drummond before lunch 80 for 3 Berg has taken 1 for 17 from his 5 overs and he's coming back into the attack now having had a well having already had an impact on this match with yeah. the bat made 56 in that century partnership with Rob Keogh to basically bring Northamptonshire back into the game keep the game alive really now he's looking to do his stuff with the ball. Lewis McManus just making sure that the field, especially the two men on the drive at mid wicket, are where he wants them. That first ball from, well, first ball from Berg is a little bit of a loosen up and it's punched away through extra cover by Jack Leaning, who hasn't had an awful lot to hit in his spell at the crease so far, hence took 26 balls to reach two. But he's now up to six, rattles away to the boundary over by the Les Ames Pavilion. Kent to 84 for three, leaning is six. Another 143 runs needed for victory. What will Gareth Berg's response be? He's in and he beats leaning outside the off stump with a beauty. So that answers that particular question. But uh, yes, Gareth Berg. 42 years of age. If you just weren't with us earlier, a wonderful little line came out of the uh, post-match interviews last night when I said to Rob Keogh, is, is there a better number nine in domestic cricket than Gareth Berg? Here's Berg in, bowls to Lean, he's pushing forward, it goes off thickish outside edge perfectly safely and it's run away it, once it hits those practice pitches down there, it races away over the third man boundary for four more runs. So two boundaries in the over for Jack Leaning runs starting to flow a little bit, 10 to him and Kent to 88 for 3, pushed forward and just a hint of a thick outside edge but it was perfectly in control, went all along the floor and ran down to the third man boundary for 4, which brings a change in the field, they have these two men in at short mid wicket, I mentioned that uh, Lewis McManus was just making sure they were placed just so, well one of those has now come out and gone into the gully Here's Bergen bowling to Leaning, who's across his stumps, plays it up to the remaining short mid-wicket, Josh Cobb. And there's no run. And uh, Rob Keogh said, well, at one point during the innings, Bergy came down to me after he just smashed somebody for four and said, best, best number nine in world cricket. <laughs> Tongue-in-cheek, I'm sure. But, uh, Raising the ante. Well, he's uh, still a very, very handy cricketer, let's just say that running in again to bowl to Jack Leaning and oh. that's a that's a beauty from Berg that just nipped back a touch and didn't bounce a great deal and Jack Leaning did really well to keep that one out he stays on 10 88 for 3 Josh Cobb who fielded that one just goes and has a I'm sure offer a bit of helpful advice yeah. to to Jack Leaning. Ooh, we don't want to get another one of those. Yeah, gosh, that was awfully low. <laughs> Words to that effect. Awfully close to getting him out. Here's Berg in again. Bowls to Leaning. A big appeal for LBW. He's also caught in the gully. So they're, they're having a go at, on both counts. <laughs> and neither of them is out, says umpire Peter Hartley. So Gareth Berg doesn't look too disappointed about it, but worth a shout. Looks a little bit high anyway, actually, but it did loop to uh, to Gully, so they were just making sure that he hadn't got a little bit of something on it. He hadn't. End of the over. 10 to leaning, 38 to Compton. Kent, 88 for three. Another 139 runs needed for victory. They have seven wickets in hand, and they have 53 overs in which to get them. That really was a just when you think over, wasn't it? Two fours from Jack Leaning. I'm looking 139 to win. Then the next three balls look very much like Jack Leaning could have been out to any of those deliveries. So there's a lot left in this match. <laughs> Jack White to uh, Ben Compton stands stoically at the other end and defends it with the offside. Um, that's a rather overemphasized his his anchoring qualities because he's he one or two really attractive strokes Ben Compton as well he's punished the bad ball there haven't been many from Northamptonshire to be fair a 
88 for three. Compton on 38 from 83 balls in bounds. Jack White, Compton. That's a good looking shot. That'll go through mid wicket and more maybe. Will that be four runs? It will. Again, that's beautifully timed by Compton. No real back lift. He has just caressed that through mid wicket for four runs and James Sales gave it a really good chase but even on the longest part of the ground as we look towards the old Dover roadside towards the, uh, the Freeman House apartments that is four runs 96 for three lovely, Compton on to 46 lovely balance Ben Compton isn't he when he's playing well it's just lovely to watch White to Compton and defends it into the offside Keogh Fields and it's easy to forget. I mean even at the beginning of last season it was it was easy to forget that Ben Compton had played almost no first team cricket no. by the age of 28 and by the time he came to Kent and by the time he hit four consecutive centuries a lot of people have forgotten <laughs> it <laughs> maybe even Ben himself but well you, you've got a, a couple here in, in, in direct opposition in the same boat as I say Jack White didn't, yeah. didn't make his first class debut till he was 28 so. I really like the look of him as well White bowling to Compton low pull yeah it is I lost the track of it but the fielder's body language shows that um, it's all the way along the ground single to Compton and again Compton he's very judges it very well for me he doesn't have to be explosive so he's not going to go for a full pull he's going to make sure that one bounces well before it gets ne near the boundary if it beats the fielder great if it doesn't he's safe single taken so yeah I was uh, a little bit of the excitement of that Ben Compton knew exactly what he was doing of course leanings on 10 Five off the over from Jack White so far. I'll come over the wicket to the right-handed leaning. High back lift as he addresses the ball. Plays it up to mid on. End of the over. 93 for three. So a couple of... Oh, no, beg your pardon. A single. Um, 97 for three. You get so used to looking at both scoreboards. Yes. Almost in a... <laughs> yes. It's like almost like a batting rhythm. There's Ames, oh, digital back. scoreboard checking. Yeah. Well, my laptop's back, so... Ah, OK. Maybe the scoreboard will stick. These days when we rely so much on uh, computer technology as white to leaning. While the Quite power... Mid -on. While the internet was down, Essex have beaten Middlesex oh, by okay. 97 runs. Uh, Middlesex bowled out for 210. So Essex win by 97. Winning start... For them, two wicket, three wickets for Jamie Porter, three for Cook, two for Snater, one apiece for Harmer and Critchley, the two spinners. Oh yes, mind back two. It's White to Leaning. Down the pitch comes Leaning. Not sure what Jack White will think of that. No, he just turns his back on him after the delivery. Defended to him. 97 for three. But quite apart from saving everyone's bacon if the uh, digital scoreboard goes down I'm going to say it the Les Ames scoreboard is a lovely lovely thing it is isn't it it's a very, very a traditional look yeah. I think the old fashioned numbers and the wonderful clanking sound when they go over just, yeah just aesthetically is uh, white to leaning blocks that out it used to be one of the great sounds at, uh, at Northampton the, the scoreboard with, the, with those numbers in yeah um, they had to pull, you know, pull the old string to get them to to get them to go over that great clanking sound as they as they went round. And the other scoreboard at Northampton used to be the one where you could it was like a little hand operated telegraph board. And if you got there early enough and got your got your bag there, then you could uh, you could bagsy it for the day. Nice. Here's uh, White down the leg side there, full leaning. Just uh, clips it out towards the leg side boundary and gets himself a single. 98 for three. But these days, somebody had to fill out a hazard assessment about having children on this sort of wooden platform with the risk of falling or splinters yeah. or never knows what. But, uh, we managed. Yes, we were banished from the, uh, the upstairs balcony at Tunbridge Wells for the same reason, because of the health and safety concerns, which is fair enough. Someone as clumsy as me is uh, white to Compton, just a touch upish, perhaps, as it went back towards white. I'm not sure that was a chance there, Radis. I think it might have dropped no, in front of the so. bowler, but so. 98 for three. Compton is at 46. The scoreboard is leaping back into life. We can see the Kent badge on it now, with the white horse rampant. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is that the is that the heraldic term? I think is that it right? probably is. I think it yes, is. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> Sorry, ninety-eight for three. And on that bombshell, yeah. um, one hundred and twenty-eight more runs to win. <laughs> Rather threw me there. Uh. Josh Cobb's now going off. So it's Northampton having doing their own little bit of yeah. substitute watch. We had it earlier in the uh, in the match with Kent, and now Josh Cobb has wandered off. So we are going to see indeed Rob Keogh. Yeah. Well, this stand is uh, is not huge. It's a 38, but it has lasted, hasn't it? 13 overs, yeah. these two have been together. So it's just steadied the ship because it's 60 yeah. for three. Northampton should have thought, yeah, we, we're in business here. But these two have done a really good job. It hasn't been easy. But now they're going to have something else to think about after basically, what, how, however many overs we've had of, uh, of seam, 30 four overs of seam, we're now going to have a little bit of spin, Rob Keogh bowling his off spin from the Nackington Road end, bowled three overs in the first innings, didn't really settle got hammered a little bit, went for 21 in those three overs Jack Leaning got a wicket yesterday though didn't he? In his he did, his short yes. spell yes, James Sales was just just trying to give himself room wasn't it and in the end just yeah. got a little edge as he tried to cut and that was handy because that was also the, the, the little spell where Kent were trying to push up their over rate with Jack Leaning and uh, Joe Denley. Now, what field has Keogh got? He's got a forward short leg under the helmet. He's got a slip. Man on the 45, deep square, mid-wicket, mid-off, mid-on, extra cover. Bowls to Leaning, who pushes forward. Appeal for LBW. It also flew to slip, who caught it. Ricardo Vasconcelos, but not out, says the umpire. And again, I would imagine Leaning probably just managed to get himself outside the line there. I would think. Fortunately, he has a his back to us, but we'll have a little look when it comes up on the on the replay. Certainly a confident appeal, but Leaning had got a decent stride in. Here's Keo bowling to Leaning, and it's looped up a little bit, and he comes down and hits it on the full toss, but picks out the man at mid wicket, and there's no run. They definitely don't want Keo settling here, Kent, do they? That's no, that. they're, they're going to try and stop that from happening. That feels like it, giving the second ball the charge. Here's Keo, and again bowls to Leaning, who this time is stretching right forward, playing it back down the pitch for Rob Keo to field. Digital scoreboard still has its screen saver on at the moment. Here's Keo in again, and once again down the pitch comes Leaning, drives acro well drives, and then it's very acrobatically fielded at mid wicket. So it's a good contest, this, and you f you sense as Matt said there that they don't want Rob Keo to to settle. They didn't allow him to do that in the first innings, and they're trying to do the same in the second. Here's Keo in again, slightly quicker ball, and well, Leaning's hit that aerially, but it's running out towards the boundary. It's a very, very good bit of fielding out there. But they're going to come back for three. And in the end, Ben Compton had to get the dive out there to see if he could <laughs> regain his ground. It's a cracking bit of fielding out there by, again, I think it's Chris Tremaine, isn't it? I was going to say, it looks like Tremaine, yeah. But that brings up the 100 for Kent. So another one of those little milestones reached for the home side. 101 for three, 126 more runs to win. Leaning taking certainly the aggressive approach against Keo, swinging him away into the outfield, very good bit of fielding out there, yeah. this is indeed Chris Tremaine now Ben Compton is signalling to the dressing room for something gloves maybe Carlo kind of Vasconcelos still in there at slip and Hassan Adnan in there, at, uh, Hassan Azad rather in there at uh, backward square He's gone, was it forward short leg, but for the left handed Compton, he's gone just behind square. A sort of backward square leg, someplace David Steele fielded for many years against with Hayden Sully bowling. <laughs> Big appeal for LBW again. Compton, well, they're pleading with the umpire to give it out. Compton again, just a little bit caught on the crease, but not out, says the umpire. But certainly, that over from Rob Keogh bringing the Kent batter something else to think about. <laughs> and at the end of the over, which was not without incident. 101 for three. Compton is 46. Leaning is 15. Kent require another 126 to win. Somebody's some sort of 
trolley with something downstairs. Ooh. More crisps. One, uh, um, I think it'll be. I think I think we've denuded the world supply <laughs> of crisps have, in the, yeah. the day so far. Just to say on the um, the live picture stream, the score hasn't been updating. Um, the comms team are working on it. We've had a a bit of a problem around the ground, haven't we, with the uh, with the electrics? The are the boffins onto it. They are indeed. I'm Spend told. The gentleman uh, with leather patches on their elbows. Indeed, so corduroy jackets. I'm sure it'll be right as rain soon. We'll keep you up to date with what's going on. Obviously, 101 for three. I can tell you certainly. It's White over the wicket to leaning. He's just actually stepping down a pace to to White now. I wonder if he's just decided this is the time. Put words in his mouth, but maybe if we're going to win this, perhaps we just need to take the attack to to Northamptonshire. Perhaps they they feel the ball's doing a little bit less after 35 overs. Yeah, may well be. 15 for leaning, Compton on 46, and a very fine 46 it's been so far. 101 for three. Victory target 227. White to leaning on middle and leg stump. That's a. Uh, Comfortable deflection down to backward square. It's uh, fielded by Hassan Azad, himself batted very well in Northamptonshire's second innings. Seems a long time ago now. Yeah, it? I was going to say not to be underestimated though. No. That that um, that 51 in that partnership as well with Rob Keogh. 102 for three then. Compton faces White. You can hear what happened there. That's it in the middle of the bat as Compton defends it. And there is no run. Digital scoreboard is back up now, so I think he's gradually coming back to life. Nation rejoices. <laughs> it's uh I think it's more for lazy commentators like me with uh, with appalling mental arithmetic. It's how many how many is that to win? 125. It's got, it's got everything you need up there, isn't it? It's very very <laughs> useful. Here's a white round the wicket to uh, Compton. It's a yeah, spirit of the age, that isn't it? It's a well timed by Compton. Actually, it's a bit of a reach uh, for the fielder to uh, stop it going to the boundary. It had to be quick round the uh, the rope. Did Sam Whiteman there, but got there. Again, it was just really well timed by Ben Compton. So he just gets one for it. He's on to 47, leaning on to 46. White none for 38 so far. Two thirds of the way through his 13th over. Here the breeze is getting up a little bit here. That's all beautiful sunshine out there though. White to leaning. Defensive, no run. Fielded on the run by Rob Keogh. Still full of bounce even after his 116 not out which was uh, could well have changed the game in his side's favour certainly has given them a chance he and Gareth Bird that 100 partnership and as I said not to be underestimated Hassan Azad's 50 where he wore down the Kent attack as much as anything else 103 for 3 white to leaning just gently plays that into the onside. Fielded by Burke. End of the over. Coming up to three o'clock. 48 more. A minimum of 48 more overs remaining. Kent need 124. It's a required rate, if that's exactly 48 overs, at 3.1. They're going at 2.9, the uh, digital score, but I th I'm just going to make the most of it while it's on, <laughs> around it, you understand. I'm going to read every piece of information on there. Um, right. <laughs> under yeah. three for three. So, yeah. Right, if it's there, use it. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's a quick look at the, L the LBW shout. Didn't look a bad shout, to be honest, in Compton, but, but uh, not out, says the umpire, so he's in the best position of all to judge. Now, Keogh is going to continue. He's going to be bowling round the wicket yeah. to... The left-handed Compton with a slip and a leg gully as Keogh bowls that's a little bit short and gives Compton plenty of time just to rock back, crack it out, square of the wicket on the offside for a single. Down to James Sales on the point boundary. One more to Compton. He goes to 48 and Kent to 104 for three, needing another 123 to win. Field changes round for the right-handed leaning. Forward short leg now and slip. And Rob Keogh just moving Chris Tremaine round a little bit on the boundary, leg side. 
on drive from Jack Leaning beats the dive at mid wicket of James Sales goes up to mid on and they're able to come through for a single Kent at the moment just ticking along nicely 17 to Leaning 105 for 3 Keogh from the Nackington Road end flights that one up to Compton who pushes it out into the covers but again beats James Sales Ooh. come through for one they, no, Ben Compton was keen to go for two throw came in from Chris Tremaine who threw it very hard and it was a very good job that somebody was backing up otherwise that would have been five of the be <laughs> five of the best to Ben Compton fortunately there was somebody backing up he has to settle for a single 49 to him 106 for three short again from Keogh just short of a length anyway and punched into the offside off the back foot by Jack Leaning out into the covers no run mid on and mid off both fairly deep about halfway back that's on driven by Leaning but only as far as sails at mid wicket Keogh whipping through his overs very quickly in again, bowls to Leaning, who pushes forward and it goes all along the floor to forward short leg where Hassan Azad fields. End of the over, 106 for three. Compton is 49, Leaning is 17 and Kent requiring a further 121 to win. We've got about 40 minutes to go thereabouts until T. And we still don't know who's going to win. We still don't know who's no, going to win. It doesn't seem apparent from to, uh, to no, me. I think, I think, I think if, if you were saying, and I think you're probably right, that when that third wicket fell, Northamptonshire were probably just had noses in front. You just sense that this pair have possibly just mm. put Kent's noses in front, but that's fair. Another wicket changes it. I still think it's around the 50 50 mark, but maybe. 52 48, I don't know. Here comes <laughs> White, it doesn't really matter. Uh, a floating full toss by uh, White, and that's been dealt with by Compton all the way along the ground. I think that just got away from White, but that's 50 for Ben Compton. Might have been a bit fortunate with that delivery, but he's picked the bad ball so well, Ben Compton, and once again anchored this Kent innings. Since he arrived at the club, he's done that. 99 balls, 6 fours, 110 for 3. It's another very fine knock so far from Ben Compton. It's also the 50 partnership between these two. That's why it bounds in now to Compton, who uh, almost characteristically, he's not got carried away with it in that last one for four. He's just defended that one straight up to mid-off. Elsewhere at Old Trafford looks very much like a draw between Lancashire and Surrey. Lancashire 164 for two, long, long way away. They're not going to win that match. Just a question of whether they can bat out time, but uh, yeah, they were they're in jeopardy at one point. It they, looked, didn't it? Yeah, they lost. Been defeated. It was 65. They lost two wickets at 65. Right. But um, uh, we're not missing any cricket because Luke Proctor was showing the ball to the umpire. Who got the they got the uh, the magic rings out. Yeah, he's passed it through the hoop a couple of times, oh, which means it's a no, I think. Mm. Yeah, no, he's it's all right. Get on with it. Uh, 167 for two. Now, yes, yeah, so century. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, century partnership unbroken between. Josh Bahannon and Stephen Croft. I'll let you update to BBC Radio Kent. Thank you very much. White to Compton now, driving once again into the offside, fielded by Gareth Berg. It's a man for that drive, and there is no run. Still, in case you were wondering, it's still a gorgeous day at Canterbury. <laughs> just looking out, it's just a, one of the great sights of county cricket looking towards the trees at the Nackington Road end and the Les Ames scoreboard White bounds away from us towards Compton Compton defends it and there's no run but yeah 50 partnership so I'll give L Luke Proctor some serious fo food for thought I'd imagine at this point let's have a chat with uh, Rob Keogh looks like Tremaine might be is that Tremaine on the no maybe not actually it was James Sales just warming up yes there's some twists and turns. Updating our BBC Radio Kent listeners now as White comes in to Compton. Bowls now. Compton comes a couple of paces down the pitch. Just shy at the stumps in return as the Cranes throw back to the bowlers. Missed. 
and absolutely poised this game still very tense out there 110 for three Kent a 50 partnership now between Ben Compton another fabulous innings from him uh, opening the innings he's on 53 not out aided at the moment by Jack leaning on 17 three batters have already gone for Kent Crawley Bell Drummond and uh, Denley Bell Drummond top scoring of the three of those with 32 Kent set 227 to win on the final day already was uh, delicately poised when we started here I say Kent with 117 to win now just have their noses in front it's too close to call commentary continuing via the BBC Sport website and app and that is end of the overs that's defended leaning 17 Compton 53 Josh Josh Cobb is uh, returning to the field having been off for a, a little while yeah. it is going to be Keogh to continue I think that uh, that throw at the stumps in the previous over from Jack White just had the, the the look of frustration about it to me yeah. I think he was just getting up getting a little bit crabby just hasn't quite worked for him today mm. so far is it still plenty of time but having bowled so well in the first innings just hasn't quite fired in the second innings so far Jack White but it's going to be Keogh to continue he's bowled a couple of overs for six runs signs early on that Jack Leaning was looking to get down the pitch to him couple of big appeals in his first over both turned down and he's going to be Keogh to continue and again flighted up driven handsomely by leaning but didn't manage to beat Luke Proctor there at extra cover and there's no run Josh Cobb limbering up perhaps he's going to have a bowl as well no Rob Keogh um, ran into bowl Jack leaning backed away but Rob Keogh bowled it anyway yeah. outside the off stump. It was taken by Lewis McManus. So dead ball called. And that one is just back of a length and leaning, riding the bounce nicely and plays it down to deep backward point for a single. Leaning up to 18. And dreaded Nelson time for Kent. 111 for three. James Sales is also going through a few warming up exercises, so maybe he's going to have a have a bowl as well. Next ball to Compton, played out in the offside for Sales. The aforementioned Afieldier yeah, is definitely going through his warming up routine, doing a few bounces up and down and painful looking contortions. Edged just wide of slip, and <laughs> Rob Keogh jumping up in the air. In frustration, it did find the edge of Ben Compton's bat. It went wide of Vasconcelos at slip. It's run down for a couple of runs, fielded by Gareth Berg, running down towards us. Two more to Compton, 55 to him, 113 for three. Partnership now worth 53. As Keogh is in, bowls to Compton, defensively forward, back down the pitch. Keogh fields eventually off his own bowling having sort of shadowed the ball back past the umpire runs in again flights that one up little drive up to mid off by Ben Compton but no run end of the over 55 to Compton 18 to leaning 113 for three so Kent just about halfway there now 113 down 114 to go 113 for three and we have in terms of overs left in the day, 45 minimum left. Yeah, 84 they started with, didn't they, Kent, yeah. to make this 227, so just about even pace. So, yeah, another half an hour. Just over half an hour, it'll be T. It is going to be James Sales. Yeah. And by the bowling changes, you can tell that Luke Proctor is. Scratching his head, trying to find a way of breaking this partnership. From Northamptonshire point of view, can't let this go go much further. It does feel though that all the way through this match, the boycott test works really well, doesn't it? That yes. one has brought two. This is not an easy pitch to get yourself in on. So it might be down from a Kent point of view for these two to do as much as they can, as much damage as they can to try and win this one. Driven by uh, leaning off this first ball. Sales. Right, medium, medium fast, would you say? Yes, I would say yeah. so, yeah. He's uh, 
It's just gone a, a little bit quiet out there, hasn't mm. it? We've just noticed there was obviously the, the inevitable bubble when three wickets had gone down. It's just all gone a little bit, little bit quiet. Sales to uh, leaning now. Good length delivery. He's trying to attack that one, I think, but has kept uh, defensive by to adjust the shot. Sales has just put that on middle stump. No run. Rather like Rod Keogh, James Sales bowled a few overs in the first innings and went for a few, didn't he? Bowled four overs for 28. Wasn't really allowed to settle. He's got Tremaine and Proctor with a word in each ear, I think, as he runs up to the bowl now to leaning a little bit wide, leaning uh, into the square drive out towards point, and that'll be a run. 114 for three. I'm glad they're giving him just that little bit of protection with the man out on the uh, yeah. sweeping on the cover boundary. Chris Little and Northampton's bowling coach just done a little peruse round there, a little walk round the boundary. Put me in my place the other night, Chris Little. I was uh, walking back round to uh, to the car at the end of the day's play. So it was, and it was the was it the second day when we had that very late finish around about half past seven. Chris Little had got the, the cones out doing the sort of shuttle runs out there himself. Sales to Compton. He drives at this one. It's full length delivery. He's jammed it into the ground. Just rings the left hand a little bit as uh, Compton after that one. Readjusting the gloves. No run. And I said, what's, what's all this about then, Chris? Are you looking for, looking for a contract? And he said, no, just looking to keep fit. So, OK. <laughs> Fine. You say it pointedly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> As I was sort of stacking it, staggering around the boundary. Said, no, okay, fair enough. It sails to uh, to Compton. It's a decent delivery. It's not quite pinned him down as he opens the face and runs it out to point for a single. One more to come then. Of this uh, 40th over, James Sales first of the second innings, none for two. Leaning for face on 19. Compton has 56. 112 to win for Kent. Here's Sales. Again, just drifting onto leg stump. That's away from leaning by leaning. And Jack White's done well again, actually. Good boundary fielding from uh, Northamptonshire in the last, well, actually, I'd say all the way through this innings. They've been really fast around the boundary. Could easily have gone for four that one. The yeah, outfield pretty fast, considering all the rain we've had in March. But uh, just a single to finish the over. One, 16 for three. Keo has none for nine. Sells none for three, then off his first over. And 111 to win now. Nelson, the figure on the board. Alex Russell in, in bucket hat. Mm. Green. Yes, he's yeah. just had his, had his little lap. Chris Little's now. Having a chat with Chris Tremaine down there on the boundary. Gus Miller's been out on the field in his fetching, what do you call that sort of pinkish yeah. vermilion bib. Cerise. Oh Cerise. No. It could be Cerise. Fuchsia, maybe. Here's uh, <laughs> Rob Keogh to start a fresh over to Jack Lean and gives himself a bit of room. Cuts that out into the offside where Luke Proctor trots round to complete the fielding. The umpire is uh, in black was actually out there fielding. Uh, is umpiring at point even with the uh, and the right-handers out there. He's not moving across, so he's at square leg now, but he was at point where the right-hander was facing. One more to leaning, 21 to him, 117 for three. Next ball, Keogh to Compton, played out into the covers for sales to field, and there's no run. Chris Little has stationed himself close to where Chris Tremaine is fielding on the boundary, presumably to have a chat with him. Sure. Now a reverse sweep comes out from Ben Compton, and he absolutely nails it, and it goes down towards those enjoying their tea, coffee or whatever in front of the Lime Tree Cafe down to our left. Josh Cobb has a, Gareth Berg rather, has a long run down there to retrieve but four more to Compton, 60 to him now. Kent 121 for three, 106 more runs required and once it gets below 100 that's another little psychological barrier crossed. Yeah, that was hit like a rocket, he wasn't did it? He hit that very hard. He yeah. absolutely, absolutely nailed it. Gareth Berg standing no chance. His key around the wicket again. Bowls to Compton, who cuts more runs for him here. Just a single, in fact, because there is, as we mentioned, Chris Tremaine out there on the boundary. Sweeping in front of the Freeman House Apartments. One more to Compton. 61 to him. 122 for three. 105 more runs required. 
Reminds me of a hockey shot, the reverse sweep there when it's yes, played like that. That's right. Yeah. Sam Quick will be proud of that. Here's Keo. Back over the wicket to the right handed leaning, who cuts. Going to get another run here as the man down there at deep backward point. But the run's just coming more or less at will at the moment for Kent. They had that little session after lunch when they scored, what, five runs in half an hour after lunch with the loss of the wicket. But they're coming much more easily now. Driven by. Compton but only up to mid off and no run to be had there but that's the end of the over 123 for three so 104 more runs required 61 to Compton 22 to leaning Keogh's bowled four overs for 16 and it's going to be James Sales to continue still interesting at Taunton Somerset have uh, are now five down 98 for five in their second innings against Warwickshire so they're still behind, and most pretty much all of their top order has gone, apart from Tom Lamanby, who opened and is still there on 42. But uh, Warwickshire have worked their way quite nicely through the Somerset top order. Sales to continue then from this end, and uh, defended by Leaning, and there's no run. But you would think Lancashire Surrey is going to be drawn. Mm. Somerset Warwickshire, well, you don't know. You think they can, some, Warwickshire can knock over the remaining Somerset batters quickly they may well have a chance of fashioning a win out of that one which would be exceptional when you think that they lost the entire first day to to rain it would be. and a bit of the second day as well sails to leaning driving oh it's gone low I'm not sure that carried there wasn't much of a shout from the slips he's looked at the toe end of his back because that's where he hit it it skewed off the toe yeah I don't think it carried at no, all I did think it he just, just kept very low he's got a single jammed it into the ground I yeah. think uh, Worcestershire looking probably odds on to beat Derbyshire at Derby. Worcestershire 123 for one in their second innings, need another 69 to win with nine wickets standing. Uh, Gloucestershire have declared 569 for seven, um, leaving Glamorgan to make 331 to win, but they're 12 for one at the moment. Sales to uh, Compton, leg glance. That should, oh, it is going to go for four actually. Big effort from the fielder there. Is that Jack White? Yes. One of the yeah, one of the floppy hat. Made again a courageous drive, but just too fine and too fast for him. And Compton goes on to 65, leaning on to 23. And this uh, partnership at 68 now for Kent. They need to break it. And fast, I would say, Northamptonshire no, here. Absolutely right. Yorkshire have declared against Leicestershire at Headingley. 286 for 8. They've left Leicestershire to make... 389 to win, but that's just your 183 for two, so not going too badly. Sales to Compton, and he's whipped that away, cut it away through, well, backward point really, given some width by Sales and treated by Compton. Happy to give that the treatment in consecutive boundaries for the Kent left hander. He's on to 69, 132 for three. Yes, this has been a really good little sort of. 15 20 minutes for Kent, hasn't it? They've really stepped up the, the scoring rate and that requirement coming down. Sales to Compton, always oh, at a leg glance. Has it just come off the pad? It has, it's four runs anyway. So this has got very expensive suddenly for James Sales and for Northamptonshire. 13 off the last three balls. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's just, you saw James Sales in the first innings just struggling a little bit to find control and this level they will pounce the batters two experienced batters like these will pounce if they think there's a bowler that's there to be to be taken down they will make it the damnedest to do sales it sales a bounce uh, where has that gone through to wicket keep yeah I beg your pardon I completely lost so the did I, no. I was looking out towards the leg side thinking Ben Compton had made a contract and he hasn't well it was around off stump he wasn't must it? Have pulled out. he was, he was yeah. looking to uh, looking to pull it, and it I think he, he just played underneath it and in the end it went yeah. through to uh, to Lewis McManus but yeah that's just maybe a, just a touch ragged and the up well the upshot of it is that Kent are now 136 for three and as we were saying, from that very slow start after lunch, either side of the demise of Joe Denley, these two are now really stepping up the pace 
91 more runs required. 136 for three. Northampton need a wicket from somewhere. Here's Keo. Bowls to leaning. Onto the back foot. Plays it down behind square on the leg side for a single. Chris Tremaine in off the boundary. Sends in a throw on the bounce to Lewis McManus. But one more to leaning. Who's made 24. 137 for three. 90 more runs required by Kent. Here's Keogh in again, bowls to the left-handed Compton, who's forward, playing it back down the pitch. Keogh fields off his own bowling, and there's no run. Still the two close catches in, the slip, and a backward short leg. Round the wicket comes Keogh, flights that one up to Compton, who drives, finds the gap between backward point and cover. But there is that man, Tremaine, out on the boundary sweeping. They're able to come through for another single. Compton to 70, and Kent to 138 for three. The herring goal you can probably hear overhead. Here's Keo in again, bowls to leaning, plays it up to mid wicket where James Sales fields, and there's no run. Chris Little has made commendable speed around the boundaries now in front of the Les Ames Pavilion. He's rocketing around the ground. Down the pitch comes leaning, drives up to deep, a sort of widish deep mid off that. Jack White is occupying at the moment, but they're able to come through for a single, an easy single. Leaning to 25, 139 for three. Keogh round the wicket again, bowls to Compton, pushes forward, just off a mixture of bat and pad, rolls out into the offside. Sales picks up, end of the over, 139 for three. Compton is 70, leaning is 25. And the equation now, 88 more runs required by Kent to win this match. They have seven wickets in hand. There are 41 overs remaining, so that is not remotely a problem. The score of the required rate now just about two and over. And they only have 20 minutes to go till tea, so as has been the case really since the start, Northampton have got a bowl Kent out. So now James Sales is the spell has been cut short, bowled just two overs, and now Luke Proctor is coming back into the attack, bowled very tidily just after lunch when he came, brought himself into the attack, bowled five overs for five and was one of the instruments in Kent just struggling to make any headway after lunch, and now he's back in the attack. Could change this, isn't it? Proctor to uh, leaning makes all sorts of sense, just try and keep the runs, stifle them for the moment, try and build pressure. First ball is uh, just clipped out to... Uh, Square leg for a single by leaning. I suppose the thing is, Matt, you know, he, he would dearly love to give James Sales a decent bowl, but yeah. Northampton just don't have, unfortunately, enough runs. The situation's wrong, isn't to, it, for him? You know, yeah. to, to play with um, if, it, if he's just not quite getting it right. Mike's been in touch on heraldry. I was talking about the horse rampant, wasn't oh, I? Yes. yes. He says, uh, hi, rampant, couchant, is that right? Passant are all heraldic terms, according to the OED. More to come. Here's uh, Proctor to uh, Compton. Just plays it the offside. He was on his on the front foot and looking perhaps for a quick single in the offside, but can't take it to the, the fielder. I wonder what he was doing quoting the Warwickshire bowler, but that's OHD, <laughs> isn't it? Ollie Hannon Dolby. <laughs> that's right. He says, ant is a common, su a common suffix denoting a state or condition. So arrogant, kentant, etc. He says, sorry, do you not know kentant? A state of hoping for the best while expecting the worst. <laughs> they also know that, no, note it, also note that North Ant is a synonym for the same. Of course we believe you, Mike. Uh, that's over the wicket comes Proctor towards... Uh, uh, Compton defends that back. Very good. I like that, yeah. Yeah, no one's calling this game off, let's face it, are they, from either side at this point? I've oh, seen North Hans well capable of... Uh, well, again, if you add a couple of wickets, it's, wickets. it's interesting, exactly, but, they've, but, they've yeah. got, but they've got to get them. It's about 20 minutes till tea. 17, if you want to be uh, exactly correct. Again, it's defended by Compton up to mid-off. But if Proctor can wrestle some control back here, yes. just keep the runs down, then you know Kent thinking, oh, are we in sight of victory? Maybe start to get a little bit tenser in this session than the next. Well, that was the job that he did so well just yeah. after lunch, wasn't it? He was absolutely bang on the money. Proctor to Compton. Let's just straight a little bit on leg and middle, and Compton's prepared to attack that along the ground out towards forward a square leg Cobb Fields good throw coming in but a single yeah that really was I'd give credit to batters and bowlers in that respect 
is the bowling was just so tight, giving them absolutely nothing. But Leaning was prepared to dig in, wasn't he, at that stage? He just showed no attacking intent for a good few overs. Compton doing co Tom Compton type things. That's uh, straight back at the bowler. Ooh, deflected onto the stumps, but Compton was in his ground. Not a bad try from Proctor to no, do. It's good to effort. On. It's onto the stumps, and Compton does like to back up, as we've seen. So, But uh, he's in his, in his uh, ground, and that's the end of the over. Ben Compton, I think he wants some new gloves. gloves I think, yeah. Well, it was just a hint from Ben Compton of, come on now, <laughs> pay attention. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, he probably doesn't want to break the concentration too much. But yeah, new gloves from uh, Jazz Singh coming out. To be fair, Singh is pretty quick across the turf, so he got there. He got there fast. Very impressed, also. That uh, it's nice to see um, Kyle, our, our friend, the photographer, who, mm. who looked who looked so cold oh yesterday. Oh my lord! Yes. When he had that long wait down there for Rob Keir to get his hundred, he's, he's he's walking around the ground today, almost like almost shirt sleeve order. Fantastic. So he's uh, he's obviously thawed out a little bit. Got away with all his toes, did he? There was no frostbite <laughs> in the end. Even the, the mobile Tuffet has disappeared. His Keo round the wicket bowls to Compton, who just stylishly plays that out to deep cover. Tremaine is out there on the boundary and they're through for another single. One more to Compton, 72 to him, 142 for three. 85 to win, name of a poem by John Macefield, I'm sure you're familiar with. His, his Keo in, bowls to Leaning, who spoils the poetic line by hitting one up to long on for a single. I do not know it. So it's now 84 oh, to yeah. win, I'll, I'll tell you about it in a minute. So. One, 143 for three, Leaning to 27. Know. He is a school day. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Keo bowls that short, Stop. and it's a very good bit of fielding there by James Sales. Terrific bit of fielding, saved certainly a couple of runs in there at cover. There's Compton trying to find the gap. Compton faces this next delivery from Keo and plays it a fuller length and plays it up once again to Sales at extra cover, and there's no run. Keo in again, bowls short and wide, it's cut away by Compton, but doesn't manage to pierce the field. There's the two men out there on just saving the one on the ring there, Sales and Gareth Berg. Berg in the end gets to that one first. Chris Little completes his lap down in front of us with a drinks bottle. Here's Keo in again, bowls to Compton who just drops it up the pitch. Lewis McManus comes round from behind the stumps to complete the fielding. End of the over, 143 for three. Compton is uh, on 72, leaning is 27, 84 more runs to win. Yes, it was um, the about the oval test in 1882, the test that gave rise to the Ashes legend when Australia beat England by seven runs and England needed 85 to win, and it's a long narrative poem of what happened that afternoon by uh, future poet laureate James uh, John Macefield and um, it is called 85 to win and there's a wonderful recording in the BBC archives of the late John Snag BBC chief announcer who had one of those wonderful sort of port and fruitcake voices <laughs> reading it it's it's worth seeking out leading faces 27 to his name front to bowling to him Trying to get on the front foot to drive, but can't get all the way forward and ends up with the ball thumped up to mid off along the ground. Just wonder, I haven't seen him warming up, so I'm not I'm not trying to do uh, do the uh, the psychicness here. But I, from Luke Proctor, Chris Tremaine at this point, do you think you think need to strike, yeah, don't you? I think that maybe was one of that was what Chris Little was suggesting as well to remain on the boundary. Well, fair enough, yeah, possibly. Maybe, I, I Chopped into the ground, back to the ball and no run. Desperately got to break this part. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Very, very soon. Tremaine has proved already, hasn't he, that he's you yeah. know, he's got what, seven wickets in the match and I don't know. There's a conversation between him and Luke Proctor that yeah. doesn't mean anything at this point because he's standing at mid-on so it might just be a little bit of a vice flowing either way, but... One four three for three. Proctor to uh, Leaning. Again, Proctor's doing such a great job keeping the runs down. Leaning just find no width whatsoever, no scope to. We move slightly outside his leg stump this time, Leaning, didn't he? Trying to work it into the offside, but there's just no room, so it goes straight back to the bowler. So Proctor effectively holding down an end at the moment, keeping it tight. 
trying to force these Kemp batters into a mistake. Down the uh, pitch comes leaning. It's quite a lot of bat on that. The wicketkeeper thinks it might have hit his toe first. They come back for two after a, a whippy glance down towards uh, fine leg. Two runs to the total. One, four, five for three. Leaning on to 29. 82 for Kent to win. Seven wickets still needed for Northamptonshire to take victory on the final day here on BBC Radio Kent and BBC Radio Northampton of Kent against Northamptonshire with Matt Cole and Andrew Rad. Can't take your eyes off this. Proctor in once more. Leaning. Angles this out through the offside. Wait, he shouts. But now he's going and it might even be four. That's really picked up speed. Well, it's counterintuitive to say it picked up speed, but fast outfield, longest part of the ground. It was a wait while he, he uh, just tarried a second to see if uh, James Sales would get a, a diving arm to that. He didn't. And in the end, it was no chance for Josh Cobb, who's sweeping the whole of the boundary on the offside, yes. uh, to get round to it from uh, his position square. Four more runs. Just keep thinking of what um, uh, your interviewee last night with the Kent coaches, Simon, Simon Cook, Cook yeah. was saying about the, the effects of the, the heavy roller and how it was flattening it out a little bit. Yeah. Might be seeing that now. Proctor was slower, shorter ball, and that has completely bamboozled uh, Jatlin. He's down on one knee, having played about half an hour before the ball got there. Um, it sort of looped up and hit him apologetically in the in the chest, and a drop to his feet. Um, it's a top ball anyway. One four nine for three. It's been a while since anything's done much, hasn't it? I mean, we were seeing even you know just after lunch the odd the odd ball just doing a little bit, but nothing much has happened in the last half an hour or so, which is. Testament partly, of course, to how well these two have played, and, and they have, but um, I don't think there's an awful lot of encouragement out there at the moment. Just Northampton need to pick up a wicket somehow, get themselves back in the game, just take a deep breath and go again, but they need to break this partnership. Here's Keogh from the Nackington Road end. Starts with a full-length ball to Compton that's worked up to deep mid-on, deepish mid-on, Jack White, but they don't go for a single. Stays on 149 for three. Reverse sweep comes out. This time, uh, Ben Compton, although he does middle it, it just hits it straight to Gareth Berg. It's good anticipation by Berg. Was it already was. moving to his right, wasn't he, as he saw that shot coming. That was really good fielding. Nothing wrong with the old peepers. Yeah. So it was a good bit of fielding by Berg at backward point. Here's Keo Flights that one up to Compton and just beats him in the air a little bit. And it skews off a... Thickish outside edge down to Berg at backward point. Keo into his seventh over. No wicket for 21 so far. Here's Keo in. Bowls to Compton, who plays it out into the covers, but sails fields and there's no run. Matt to update BBC Radio Kent. But in indeed. I don't mind being called boys. <laughs> It's going well, I think, for Kent. Steady as they go, anyway. 149 for three they are now. They need 78 more to win. A great partnership so far between Jack Leaning on 33 and the superb Ben Compton on 72, taking them within sight of victory. Though Northampton just still need seven wickets to win this one, and Kent 78 runs to win. 227, the victory target set for them when Northampton were all out uh, this morning. Three quick wickets taken by Kent, but it's really this partnership which may dictate uh, how far Kent get into it. It's 150 runs up in total on the board and these two have been together uh, for a 90 run partnership. Are they taking Kent to victory? I still can't quite tell frankly. He's still very nervous here at a sunny Canterbury commentary continuing by the BBC Sport website and app. So yeah, in the end, 150 for three, a single taken at the end of the over. 33, uh, leaning 73 for Compton. Is that boy is a reference to us, do you think? Well, I was going to say, if it is, I'm very... Absolutely, yeah, it's been a long time. I don't know whether, whether I was talking about the... Mm. See how the boys yeah, are doing, yes. as in how, how yeah. Kent are doing. Could be, couldn't it? Could well be. I'll take a compliment, even if it's not <laughs> meant, personally. But there we go. It's been a while since I've been called one of those. <laughs> uh, 150 for three, 77 more to win. Luke Proctor to continue from the pavilion end. Bowling to Compton short. Pulled away by Ben Compton going down towards the boundary. It's not going to go for four. They've got Jack White down there at deep backward square and he sends in a decent return to Lewis McManus. But two easy runs to Ben Compton who goes to 
75 and Kent to 152 for three, so they need another 75 to win. I was thinking about that Macefield poem. It was a wonderful finish. It's about the a thunder muttered and a shower fell as evening came with star and vesper bell. Over the oval marked where spoffeth bold, reviving grass blades lifted from the mould. As Proctor comes in, plays it out into the covers. Fielded by Berg and there's no run. And it's that wonderful little picture of where Spofforth has done this wonderful match-winning performance and the grass blades where he's stamped just gradually lifting up after the end of the match. It's a beautiful, beautiful poetic image. Amazing the way your mind wanders of an afternoon, <laughs> isn't it, really, sometimes? 152 for three. Well, it's very on topic. Well, to the yeah. matter in hand. 75 more to win. His Proctor bowls to Compton, plays that crisply up to mid-wicket for James Sales Fields. And uh, there's no run. Not far off T. We should get through this one and then perhaps another Rob Poss Keogh over. Possibly one more, yeah, yeah. I think so. What's the, what's the official? 3.35, according to the clock on the electronic scoreboard. So, yeah, we think two more overs to go. Here's Proctor. Busy, bustling run-up. Quick arm, bowls to Compton, drives up to mid-off, but Tremaine fields and there's no run. Maybe they're just going to give... Tremaine license after T to just run in and almost a, I hesitate to call it last throw of the dice but I think it's unless they can break this partnership Kent are always just going to have a little bit in hand aren't they here's Proctor and again bowls to Compton who's hit off I think he's bat and pad I think outside the line of off stump anyway Lewis McManus was briefly interested but nobody else was particularly Proctor's done a good job here. He's been very tidy. Yeah. It's hard to get away. First match, of course, is Northamptonshire's Red Bull captain. Round the wicket he comes. Bowls to Compton, who works that away into the onside. He's going to get a single as it goes down to deep square. Josh Cobb coming in off the boundary. There's another run to the total, and that ends the over as well. So well counted, Ben Compton. 76 to him, 33 to Jack Leaning. 153 for three. 74 more runs required. The partnership now worth 93 between these two. It is going to be Keogh to continue and bowl what could be the last over before T, although the, the speed he gets through them, if that clock is right and it's 3.36... We may actually get another one in. Possibly, although Ben Compton's just found it necessary to do up both shoelaces. Yes, uh, perhaps he doesn't. He doesn't fancy another yeah. one. A lot, of air, a lot of big airliners around this afternoon. They're going over there. It must be on the flight paths. Or the Catalonia, <laughs> <laughs> or Kettering. Join Clive, indeed. <laughs> All the sunny spots of Europe. Compton looks around uh, the pitch. There's a silly mid-off for him now to be joined by, and he responds by flicking that through fine leg and is there a fielder coming round for that? There is and they'll come back though for a comfortable two. Compton goes on to 78 of 155 for three as you were saying Radders really key to this innings and it looked early on that he would be yeah. and at the moment he may be batting his side to victory but never say never for Northamptonshire still feels that was on the full just guided out to backward square for a single. I still think if one wicket falls, even one, it's tricky to get on this pitch. Yeah, We've seen from all the batters so far this match. So many twists and turns in this match, and you just think one. Yeah. You know, are we are we done with all the twists and turns? Maybe not. Wicket before T would be great for Northamptonshire, obviously. This one's a full-length delivery, just a little push away by Jack leaning to. Hundred runs sales. scored in this session so far. Exactly a hundred. So Keo coming down the pitches at leaning, but in the end treats it with a lot of respect, that delivery, straight back at the bowler, and there's no run. Yeah, 338. I wonder after this delivery where there might be a a, de a delay from Kent. As that's just comes off the bottom of the bat, toe into the bat to the man at uh is it a short square leg, I suppose. Forward short leg. Once again, he dances down the pitch, does uh, Jack Leaning. 
He might have padded that away. I didn't say whether it's bat or power, but he was so far outside the line it doesn't really make any difference. And that will be the end of the over. It's not the end of the session, though. 3.39 on the board. Well, they've done a dreadful job there, Kent. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps they wanted another over. Although, yeah, Northants, Northants, you probably don't want to rush through their overs either, do they? They don't want well, to give Kent any more time. We're going to see a bit of Josh Cobb. But we are going to see another over. There we go. And it's going to be Josh Cobb to bowl it. Who's partnership breaker, perhaps? Gold well, arm. he's bowled very, very little in Red Bull cricket in the last few years because he, he regularly opens the bowling in T20 cricket. As uh, white ball captain and routinely opens the bowling, bowls in the power play mm -hmm. very successfully as well. But um, so he hasn't bowled a, a huge amount in Red Bull cricket in recent times. But he's going to have a little bowl now with a slip in place. He's bowling round the wicket to Ben Compton. It's off spin and Compton is forward. Plays it up to Keogh at mid wicket who tries to do the old knock it up with the boot job which Joey Everson did I think quite quite successfully and Freddie on this occasion fails miserably. Is <laughs> Rob <laughs> Josh Cobb bowls that. What was the sort of well, Ronnie Roundarm delivery, and it's just cut away for a single by Ben Compton out to deep cover. One to Compton, 80 to him, 157 for three. It was almost like an impression of Alfred Min, which I suppose is the, the Lion of Kent in these parts. It was a little bit, the arm was a, just a touch low. <laughs> Here he is again. Josh Cobb bowls to Leaning, who clips it up to mid-wicket where it's fielded there by Gareth Berg and there's no run Cobb in again bowls to leaning down the pitch once he gets there he just plays defensively back to Cobb feeling Cobb might have bowled an over or two in that last afternoon um, last year in the championship yeah, match um, feeling he did here's Cobb in bowls short and leaning going onto the back foot plays it out Past Keo at extra cover, out to James Sales is now sweeping on the cover boundary. So one more to leaning. He goes to 34, and Kent to 158 for three. One more ball left in the over round the wicket, and Compton just reaching for that one a little bit plays it down to backward point. That is the end of the over. It's the end of the session, and a very good session for Kent as well. Lost the wicket of. Joe Denley early on. They were 56 for two at the break. Very soon afterwards, they were 60 for three, and they were wondering where the next run was coming from. But these two have done an excellent job. I think we identified on commentary very early on that Ben Compton was going to be the key to this. So it has proved. Uh, he's on 80. Jack Leaning's done an excellent job, soaked up pressure early on, but has been an excellent foil for Compton. These two have put on now. 98 for the fourth wicket, unbroken. 158 for three at T. So Kent just requiring another 69 to win. There is absolutely no problem in terms of time. 34 overs remaining, so they only just need two and over. Northamptonshire needing to do something very special in that last session if they're to escape here from Canterbury with anything other than a defeat, Matt. Indeed so. We'll be back with you in 20 minutes, the final session of a fascinating contest between these two. Don't count Northampton dry out just yet. As we've seen on this one, very difficult to get yourself in on this pitch. If they could take a couple of quick wickets off the tee, that could make things very, very exciting indeed for both sides. 158 for three then. We'll be back in around about 20 minutes.
Welcome back. Final session, final day. Kent against Northamptonshire with Matt Cole and Andrew Rad. 158 for three, Kent. They need another 69 to win. Um, overs to spare, I'd say 34 uh, minimum remaining. 50 having been bowled today. Uh, Jack leaning on 34, Ben Compton on 80. These two have put together 98 now between them and could be taking their side uh, to victory. But on the other hand, we have seen, and I've said it before, T, I'm going to wear out this phrase, there is something in this pitch and it's difficult to, to bat on. Uh, immediately, I would say. Sorry, it's probably flattening out a little bit yeah. now, but I don't think it's easy to get in on, is what no, I'm trying to I say. And, and so a wicket or two here could make things a little bit tricky for the batters and much more exciting. Yeah, Northamptonshire have got to strike early. Um, they've got to give themselves a bit of a chance to get, to get into the, the middle and lower middle order of, of Kent. A lot of they, motorbikes or something going going past. It's very very loud. <laughs> it sounds like a hover cover or something, isn't it? Loud noise from somewhere. But um, anyway, we are going to see Chris Tremaine, who's going to open proceedings from the the far end, the Mackington Road end. And well, Matt and I were saying actually during during tea yeah. time, Tremaine surely has got to be the the man to come on and just try and knock a couple over, be effective with a new ball produced beauties to get both Crawley and Joe Denley in the innings so far. Five wickets in the first innings, of course. Australian seamer, and he's going to be running in from the far end to bowl to Jack Leaning, and it's short, and Leaning paddles it round the corner, and he's going to get just a single as it goes out to James Sales out there at deep backward square. And uh, first run of the session then takes the partnership to 99. Expect a big round of applause from the home faithful when the when or if the 100 partnership comes up, 159 for three. Partnership now worth 99. The motorbikes, whatever they are, appear to have yeah. disappeared well, elsewhere. It's bank holiday, isn't it? So it is, yes. Maybe. It may be a it's not more traditionally bank holiday Monday, but it's well, very I think you're right, it might be. Yeah. It's uh, certainly a lot of very loud engines somewhere around. Well, they're out of the way before I have to go home. Here's. Uh, Tremaine running into bowl to the left-handed Compton, very full, whipped away on the onside. Good stop by uh, Rob Keogh there. Cuts off any possibility of a single, stays at 159 for three. Gareth Berg also going through his full limbering up routine, so maybe it's going to be Berg from this end. Jack White was also having a little roll with the coaching staff at tea time, as was Luke Proctor, so they're just trying to make sure all the front line seamers are, are fairly loose, but it's Tremaine for the time being. Running into bowl to Ben Compton, and Compton covers up, plays it out into the onside once again for Keogh to field at mid wicket, and there's no run. And I'll hand it over to Matt Cole, who needs to update BBC Radio. Thank Kent. you very much. Yeah, I'm just going through the. So I'm just listening to the, <laughs> <laughs> the M20, but that's going eastbound, which is toward us. So some problems there. Crikey, yeah, the engine's revving up around the uh, the ground here. Here's Tremaine then bowling to Compton, tucks that into the onside. It's coming round the wicket. It's Tremaine's the left-hander, so natural angle. He's just nudging it into the onside. Keo fields again. I thought they passed by, but so that's a mighty yeah. motorcycle rally if it is. Going back the other way. Yeah, maybe so. Unless they've just bought themselves a hover cover in the air. Uh, <laughs> there's no need for it at the moment, but... Uh, Well, they got four runs closer, I think. No, just a couple of runs closer to uh, the target that they need. A hundred partnership between Ben Compton on, uh, with 61 of those and Jack Leaning with 35. Kent 160 for three. As I say, closing in on their target. 73, sorry, 73, 67 more needed. There goes my mental arithmetic again. They are closing in on victory, it looks like. Uh, although Northampton just off the tee here have given the ball to Chris Tremaine, their Australian international, who's uh, been fantastic all the way through this match, and they're hoping for breakthroughs themselves. It looks like a tricky pitch to bat first up on, to get in on, if you like, but these two out there are set for Kent at the moment. Perhaps the hopes of winning go with them at the moment. They do look favourites, Kent, to win. 67 needed in this 
final session. 160 for three. A commentary continuing via the BBC Sport website and app. So, that 100 partnership coming up. Yeah. And it is going to be Gareth Berg who's going to come into the attack from this pavilion end as the motorbikes roar off. I'll have to see with the motorbikes. It sounds like it. Roar off into the distance. Roar off into the distance. 160 for three it is, so 67 more runs needed by Kent. Northamptonshire, well, if not exactly drinking in Last Chance Saloon, they've they just have uh, picked up the menu. Here's Berg in bowls to Compton, who whips that away round the corner. He's going to get one. They're going to come back for two as Chris Tremaine comes in off the boundary to field. Well run, good busy running, the old business of running the first one quickly and Compton was intent I think on two from the moment the ball left his bat and two is what they get, 83 to Ben Compton, 162 for three. He knew he was going to the danger end as well as he was yeah. committing to the second. That was good cricket, 65 more runs to win, keeper standing up, Lewis McManus is standing up to Berg with a slip in place, bowls to Compton, Compton works it into the onside where it's fielded by Josh Cobb at mid wicket and there's no run slip and a gully in place four saving one and they have deep square just in from the boundary about five yards in from the fence now changing the field the man from gully is going across onto the leg side so they now have a man just behind square a mid wicket and a mid on all saving one two men out on the leg side as Berg comes in, bowls to Compton, who nibbles that straight where Gully has just been taken from, and it runs down to the boundary for four. Well, that's the great law of you-know-what, and that's what happens when things are not quite going your way. Moves Gully out, bowls outside off stump, and Compton, fully aware of where everyone is, works it through the gap, which is now a big gap down to the Les Ames Pavilion for four. He goes to 87, Kent to 166 for three, 61 more runs required. Here's Berg. Gorgeous evening now as he comes in and bowls to Compton who's solidly in defence, plays it up to mid-off where Luke Proctor fields and there's no run saying at tea times looking on various websites, the weather sites, they're saying could be the warmest day of the year at least in some parts of the country. Been a little bit of breeze here just to perhaps take the the edge off the temperatures, but it's a very, very pleasant afternoon. Just pity there aren't a few more people in watching. Here's Bergen, bowls to Compton. It gets an, another flowing stroke away, backward a square on the offside, down to deep backward point. This time it doesn't quite get to the boundary. But they come through for a couple. Compton to 89. And Kent to 168 for three. 59 needed to win. It's one of those, if were these two to take it through, you would say, well, you look at the the book in years to come, the record book, and you say, oh, Kent won by seven wickets. Yeah, it was an easy win. Well, it's been anything but. These two have to work very hard, but they've done a cracking job for their side thus far. Driven by Ben Compton up to mid-off, where Proctor fields, and that's the end of Gareth Berg's over. Eight overs, one for 36 for Gareth Berg, and Kent at the end of the over, 168 for three. Ben Compton is on 89, Jack Leaning is 35, the partnership now worth 108 for the fourth wicket, and well, plenty of overs to go, 32 left in the day. Michael's been on the email from uh, Hauling in Rochester listening to us today and watching the stream, says, I left the ground yesterday, a senior member said, those who arrange the fixtures should come and watch in April, how right he <laughs> is, because actually the member's pavilion beside us has been very chilly indeed out of the sun so I can completely understand that but he's enjoying the, the commentary and the stream great to have your company Michael this one is uh, just cut away towards the offside boundary good footwork actually by the fielder out there just stopping it from going uh, for they come back for two though uh, from this uh, first delivery of the 12th over from uh, Chris Tremaine onto 170 for three leaning has 80 uh, sorry 37 Compton has 89 here on BBC Radio Kent and BBC Radio Northampton. But yeah, it's been anything but a strong on the park, this one, is it? Um, it's quite chilly in the, the enclosure next to us this afternoon as well, yeah, isn't it, actually, with the, the breeze going across, but 
out there in the, the sun-blessed parts of the ground. Absolutely gorgeous. And that's a lovely shot from Leaning as well. It's flying across the turf, but uh, good uh, work done across in the outfield. The fielder throws it back in. Good arm as well. Is, it, is that James Sales out there? I'm trying to it identify is, who that is. Yeah, is. really good arm coming back in. But it is another two. So four off the first two balls from Chris Tremaine. They turn to him to try and make the breakthrough here. Victory target down to 55. If Tremaine can strike here, perhaps they can get in amongst the Kent middle order. Rattle their nerves a bit. Tremaine to uh, leaning. Steers that away. That's a stop. I was going to compliment Jack leaning on his shot, and I still will, because he adjusted the shot as the ball came in more or less on the full to him. And Rob Keogh is just, as if it's nothing, the ball scorching towards him has just gone down to his right, put the right paw out and stopped it. 172 for three. He's a wonderful fielder, Rob Keogh. As we probably many people would have seen the catch he took last year in the T20 game that seemed to go viral on uh, on social media, um, which was an astonishing catch at Montage Road. 172 for three then. As uh, Tremaine Bowles goes short there, leaning. I don't know if he took any pace off there, but leaning just really didn't time that, did he? Ends up just leaning on, on his bat, no pun intended, uh, in front of him. But uh, couldn't get the ball away further than, uh, than Keogh. There's no run. What's quite funny about that was it was a game against Leicestershire and uh, uh, Lee Daggett, former Northamptonshire and uh, Warwickshire bowler, was, uh, was on with us and... Uh, he was maintaining all the time that, that Rob Keogh, only, it only looked good because he'd actually misjudged it and came in too far. It's uh, Tremaine to leaning again, drop short, leaning has uh, swiped that away for on the offside for a single in the end. Oh, good shot up on his toes, just trying to drive it away high off his body, but can't beat the fielder out there on the boundary. Five off the over though. The ball to come. 173 for three Kent. Compton 89 will face this uh, last delivery of the over from Chris Tremaine. Just adjusting the field. I can't quite see the fielder with the overhang on the woolly stand yeah, that he's trying to move around there. Yeah. But it's just, I think he's just behind. But it's it just the, oh the boundary fielder. Sorry, <laughs> it's, it's just better, moved into my sight there. Yeah, hard to see. So we've got a wicketkeeper slip and two gullies at the moment for Ben Compton. Luke Proctor just trying to, I guess, put a doubt in Ben Compton's mind as to whether he, where he might farm the ball out to on the offside. There's a man on the drive now at a shortish extra cover, an orthodox cover. As Tremaine comes in, bowls to Compton. He drives that to the man, obligingly to Luke Proctor, who's stationed himself there at a shortish cover, and that will be the end of the over. Five off it, though. 173 for three. Victory target, 54 to win for Kent. Seven wickets for Northamptonshire to take victory. And uh, 31 overs in the day remaining on this final day here on, at uh, Canterbury. Yeah, two gullies, you used to see that years ago with, uh, with the late Jim Yardley batting for Northampton. Do you remember him? He's, uh, he used to squirt an awful lot through that region, and even, in, even in club cricket, and he scored an awful lot of runs for Overston Park in uh, in the Northamptonshire County League as it was then, Northamptonshire Cricket League as it is now, um, but they still <laughs> people still had two gullies in or at least two gullies. Here's uh, Gareth Berg about to start a, a fresh over. He's bowled eight in the inning so far, one for 36. Picked up the wicket of Daniel Bell Drummond before lunch. Keeper standing up, slipping a gully in as Berg comes in, bowls to Leaning, who's pushing that down the pitch solidly fielded by Berg off his own bowling. Quick look at what's happening elsewhere. Lancashire Surrey's heading for a draw as it has been for a very long time. I think Rory Burns is doing quite a lot of bowling up there at the moment. Uh, Lancashire 200 for two after being set 444 to win by Surrey. So match drawn you would imagine. Here's Berg in bowls to Leaning who's pushing that up to extra cover. Bit of fancy footwork there from Josh Cobb. And there's no run. You're just tuning in, Essex beat Middlesex earlier in the day by 97 runs. Uh, at Taunton, uh, Somerset 126 for 5 in their second innings. They have cleared off the arrears. They're 18 runs ahead, 5 wickets down. You would think there's probably not quite enough time for Warwickshire to force a result there. Next ball from Berg finds Jack Leaning playing defensively forward. Back down the pitch, Berg fields. 
in Division 2. Worcestershire very nearly home and hosed against Derbyshire at Derby. 166 for two, need another 26 to win with eight wickets standing. Um, at Cardiff, Glamorgan, who was set a sort of nominal target of uh, 331 to win, a 56 for three. His Bergen bowls to leaning, plays it up to Proctor at mid on, and uh, there's no run. So again, you would think they're probably going to struggle to force a result mm. there unless Glamorgan really do collapse in a, a heap. And you would think also draw odds on at Headingley, where Leicestershire was set 389 to win by, Leic by Yorkshire and a 205 for three into the final session. Here's Berg. Bowls to leaning, just nips back at him a little bit, plays it out on the onside up to Keogh at mid-wicket, and uh, there's no run. Earlier in the day, Sussex beating Durham by two wickets, a tight old finish. Sussex looked to be cruising it and then a bit of a clatter of wickets and in the end it was all a bit nervy but they got home for the victory Jack White swinging his arm so maybe he's going to have a little bowl at some point, his Berg in bowls to leaning, once again works on the onside, super bit of fielding again by Rob Keogh to cut off any possibility of a single begrudging Kent every run, which is what Northamptonshire have got to do but they don't need that many to win now. The end of the over, it's a maiden for Berg, who's bowled nine overs, two maidens. One for 36, and Kent 173 for three. They only need another 54 runs to win, with leaning on 40, Compton on 89. Thanks to uh, Sean the Brewer saying the motorbikes will be doing the Easter egg run, taking eggs to the kids uh, in the Kent and Canterbury Hospital, which oh, is just brilliant. to the right of the ground there. They also do a toy run at Christmas. Sean, thank you for that. I don't think I've been here on Easter Sunday before, so it's uh, fantastic putting a, the detail on what we just heard. Lovely stuff. It certainly sounded to be plenty of them. Yeah, it did indeed. I, it felt formal, didn't it? Because they yes. were here for so long and yeah. uh, around for so long and the engine's running. Tremaine bowls to Comsa. Keeps a bit low, but just outside off stump. Haven't seen too many. Actually, probably not across the piece. Haven't seen too many keep low, but... There was one that Leaning had to jab the bat on, wasn't there, in this in the yeah, second the session? The one Denley got a low one. Denley as well. got one that kept a bit low. Vasconcelos did, of course, yeah, on the, on the yeah. first day. But it's just the odd one. But I mean, it, it's been a it's been a pretty good surface, and it's produced a you know an excellent game of yeah, cricket. It's um, true enough. And to say that um, March wasn't very kind to ground staff oh, around the country would be an, a bit of an understatement. Absolute <laughs> nightmare. Goodness knows. me. No, take my hat off to all of them. They've they've done a wonderful job around the country by the look of the the scores. Tremaine has a leg slip now, as well as an orthodox slip. Two gullies. A man on the drive close at cover, on extra cover, and Compton tries to scoop that away of a full length. A bit toe endy up to mid off. Trevor expat in knots, a Ken fan <laughs> says. Perhaps too early to say this, but... Go on, say it anyway, Trevor. <laughs> While anticipating a win today, could this be a fine season for Kent, he says. With the return of Sam Billings and the 2x Knots players, Compton and Everson, the signs are good. Looking forward to seeing uh, a five-day game at Trent Bridge again. Yeah, good luck, Trevor. This is... Uh, won't be five days for Kent, of course, but here's... Uh, Tremaine to Compton. He's trying to drive through a packed offside and uh, finds the man at orthodox cover. Proctor's at uh, a shortage extra cover. Yeah, Northamptonshire playing on every test ground this Are year, they? except Lords. Oh, of course, you said yes. Um, yeah. Northamptonshire play Middlesex at uh, Merchant Taylor School, which will be a new ground for me. Looking forward to that one. But every other test ground, Northamptonshire have got a game on, except Lords. At least uh, either in, in one or other of the competitions. Bowling from Tremaine to Compton. He just flicks that down. Has he beaten the man? He has indeed. That'll be four more runs to Compton just behind square. It's just a little flick of the wrists. And that goes for four. And another landmark. 50 to win now for Kent. And... And again, so... need a wicket, a wicket soon. Well, yeah. Northamptonshire. Up, up at Durham. Actually, Northamptonshire got a, a T20 and a uh, one-day mm. cup. So there's a few miles, to, <laughs> few miles to put in there. Not as many as it would be for you, though. No, quite. It is a bit of a way from here to there. Mm. So Tremaine to Compton. 
defending it off off stump and there's no run back to the bowler looking at the fixture list we were saying about um, Hampshire having demolished uh, Nottinghamshire in, in fairly short order in the in the first round of matches Northamptonshire actually play um, Hampshire twice in the first little sequence of um, of six games so that's going to be interesting we've got them uh, at Northampton in a couple of weeks time and then down at Southampton in um, May it's uh reach by Compton outside the off stump as he Tremaine goes a little bit wide but ends up just scuffing it into the ground end of the over but four off it with uh, 29 overs remaining now uh, Kent 177 for three need 50 more to win Compton has 93 now 44 leaning and this stand standing at 117 between the two in fact it's a bit of a sort of London buses job because uh Northamptonshire hadn't played Hampshire in a championship match for some years um, and then they played them right at the very end of last season and got them then twice in a month <laughs> coming up soon so we um, see plenty of plenty of Hampshire yeah, 25th of July if that's, if that's what Trevor you were talking about the four day game between Nottinghamshire at Kent up at Trent Bridge get to see your beloved county as strange as you are so far away <laughs> here's Berg starting a Another over to Leaning, who immediately opens the face, runs it down through backward point for single, fielded by the man coming in off the cover boundary. One more to Leaning, who's 41, Kent to 178 for three, and the runs required ticks down under 50 now, 49. Kent need to win. It's almost a, somebody giving, giving voice, a bit of vocal musical encouragement from somewhere. Here's Berg, keeper standing up, bowls to Compton, who's pushing that up to mid-off. Proctor fields, and there's no run. It sounded a bit like Lancashire, la la la, but they're not playing, so it obviously wasn't. Did Kent have a particular battle song, Matt, or is it... Uh I think mainly shouts of, come on, you super Kent. Ah, so right, yes, okay. Yeah. So long as we know. Here's Berg. Bowls to Compton and first false shot from Ben Compton for a while. I think he was looking to work that on the onside and it just came off a, a hint of a leading edge and finished up at mid-off where Proctor feels no danger to Compton but one's so used to seeing everything coming out of the middle of the bat going exactly where Compton intends. It's a bit of a shock to the system. Compton on strike again. Berg bowls to him and that's much more like the Ben Compton we've seen today, driven crisply out to extra cover where Keogh fields, and there's no run. Jack White going through his full warming up routine, so I imagine he's going to possibly come into the attack fairly soon. Hasn't been a really hasn't been Jack White's day today so far. Still has a chance to make a name for himself. Is Berg in bowls to Compton, who whips that away through the onside field, past Cobb at mid-wicket out to the man sweeping on the boundary, James Sales and they're through for another single, Compton to 94 and Kent to 179 for three, needing 48 to win and Jack White 14 overs, two maidens, no wicket for 42 today, having picked up four wickets in the first innings field changes round for the right-handed Jack Leaning Lewis McMahon is still standing up. Slip in and now where's Salazad going? He was in there at leg slip. He's now in there at sort of short mid wicket position as Berg comes in, bowls to leaning, plays that up to Proctor at mid on, and that's the end of another Gareth Berg over. One seventy nine for three. Compton is ninety four, leaning is forty one and Kent just 48 runs away from victory. Indeed, and they're obviously striving to make something happen here, Northamptonshire if they can. Kent, favourites to win at this point with 48 more needed. And uh, Jack White hands his jumper to the umpire. I'll try him at the uh, the Naki to Road end to try and get this victory. None for 42 from 14 for him so far. 
Northampton Chitty did so well to bat themselves into a position where they could challenge Kent on the final day. 331 all out it was, with 116 not out from Rob Keogh. That fabulous stand with Gareth Berg, who made 56. Kent took the three quick wickets they needed at the uh, in the morning. As this one's clipped away by Compton, out just forward a square on the onside, and that'll be a single for the left-hander. He's on to 95. But I stand by what we said before a ball was bowled today, that Northampton probably needed to bat for an hour. Um, and they, they needed to probably get, you know, 40, 50 runs to, to have any sort of chance to just take a little bit more time out of the game. But Kent did absolutely what they had to do mm. and knocked over the, the, the first three wickets quickly. And uh, uh, they're reaping the reward for it. So White down the slight slope. Leading takes two paces towards him and ends up almost cross-batted trying to slam it past the bowler and into the uh, the vacant area through mid-wicket. There is a mid-wicket but past him there's just wide open space. It ends up just back at the bowler as he mishits it high on the bat. Samazad has gone under the helmet but as a at a shortish gully. It's slightly in. It's a slip as well. Vasconcelos is there. Uh, it's angled away by leaning this next one from a good length, which just finds Rob Keogh in the covers, and there's no run 180 for three. But the chirp has gone out of Northampton a little bit as well, very, I think. Very quiet, isn't it? I mean, it's understandable, isn't yeah. it? It's a, it is a hard situation for them. They put so much effort into this game already. Not a particularly noisy side in the field, even when things are going swimmingly but it's very very quiet this afternoon in with a bound comes jack white oh it's flashed past the man at that shortish gully and uh i think he's got a hand to it maybe even two hands uh, but it's gone for four deflected away by hassan azad it came at him very quickly leaning well the old adage if you're gonna flash flash hard he really did that shot off the bat almost in defensively azad has got both hands up it's come off i think one of his wrists and gone off for four it, a yelp of frustration from Jack White. He's so close in there, isn't he? Yeah. As you say, a zero reaction time. It was just a question of whether it whether it stuck, and it didn't. It's a bit hard to just watch it on the replay. And yeah, Jack White's very frustrated, as though somebody's dropped an absolute sitter off his bowling. But I mean, if that had stuck, it would have been something. The way bowlers miraculous, are miraculous, but White to leading now. He goes for it again. That's a legitimate cut away past the man at a short gully. That shot away along the grounds and uh, very deliberate it's four more and now the victory target down to 39 Kent 188 for three seemingly closing in on it now um, plenty of overs left as well Northamptonshire need a breakthrough and they need it very very quickly just hasn't been Jack White today as it no. really was said before he's, uh, he's, he's, his figures are not, not awful by any stretch of the imagination but it just hasn't really worked for him today So back with Jack White into Jack Leaning then. Just that's a little nudge into the offside. And that will be Leaning's half century. 50 from 102 balls with five fours. And 132 minutes for at least, well, I'd say at least half an hour maybe more when Joe Denley had gone Jack Leaning just shut up shop he was just blocking everything out did exactly what was needed of him and it's been a fine inning so far 50 from him 95 for Compton at the end of the over it's 189 for three can need 38 more now for victory yes and uh, I'm just looking to see who's going to have a little bowl from this and I think Luke Proctor's bringing him is he bringing himself back on or is he going to give Somebody else a go. No, it's Luke Proctor. He's going to take the responsibility himself, and he's bringing himself back into the attack. To be fair, in terms of control, he's probably been the pick of the, the seamers today. Luke Proctor's been very accurate. Eight overs, two maidens, no wicket for 16 so far. So he's only been going at two and over. Chris Tremaine obviously has been a threat and picked up those two wickets. So he hasn't been a best day for Jack White today. I think bowled well, really well in the first innings. Here's Proctor back in the attack, bowling to leaning. No ball. Having talked him up, <laughs> there oversteps his uh, first delivery. Has a rather rueful look at the crease. Umpire Ian Blackwell standing out with his arm outstretched. 
waiting for the umpires, the uh, scorers rather, to acknowledge the signal, which at length they have. 189 for three. 191 for three. Here's Proctor in bowls to leading. He gives himself a little bit of room, steers that out into the offside for a single. James Sales, for once, doesn't pick up cleanly, but they've just settled for a single. Leaning to 51. Kent 192 for 3. Ben Compton on 95. And Luke Proctor switching his uh, angle of attack to round the wicket, changing the field with Ricardo Vasconcelos going from slip to gully. Hassan Azad going in at a sort of forward short leg but not quite in the batsman's hip pocket. He's, he's probably about 10 yards away, but he's under the helmet. As Proctor comes in, bowls to Compton, pulls it away past the aforementioned Hassan Azad. It goes out there for a single. Compton to 96. And Kent to 193 for three. 34 more runs needed. As we've been saying, time number of overs not remotely an issue still 27 left clock ticking round towards half past four local time as Proctor is in bowls to leaning slower ball just takes a bit of pace off that and pushed out into the offside by leaning where Cobb fields and uh, there's no run gentlemen in a orange high viz trundling round the ground at the Nackington Road end perform some urgent task or other. He's just stuck a ticket on my car. I don't know what that <laughs> is, but... Uh... <laughs> well, you're parked very close to me today, Matt, so it could be you and me both. Here's Proctor in bowls to Leaning, driven nicely yeah. by Jack Leaning, out through the covers. This could be four through extra cover. Gorgeous timing from Jack Leaning. And you say Leaning lent on it, and it raced away for four to the extra cover boundary. It takes Leaning to 55, and Kent to 197 for three, just needing another... 30 to win. James Sales with the task of just retrieving the ball from the advertising board down to our left in front of the Freeman House apartments. Yeah, it's been very tough for North Hampshire to make anything happen, hasn't it? This, yeah, this definitely has flattened out here. Here's Proctor in again, bowls to Leaning, who plays defensively this time up to Keogh at mid-on. Up to, over to you, Matt. Thank you, Rudders. Looks like Kent are going to take victory here. I was afraid to say it before, but they're just 30 away from winning now on the final day against Northampton during their opening county championship game of the season. A due in not small part, in very large part, in fact, a Jack Leaning who has 55 and Ben Compton four away from his century. 96, the opener who has anchored the innings. These two came together at 60 for three. A little bit of jeopardy when Joe Denley went just after lunch with Kent chasing 227 in total to afford victory but as I said those two have gone on from strength to strength uh, first cautious now opening up towards the end of the day as the pitch gets a little bit flatter and North Hand striving for a wicket not finding it Kent 197 for three seven wickets in hand and just 30 to win now commentary continuing while the game lasts via the BBC Sport website and app so end of the over and uh, there we are I've nailed my colours to the mask now and I look extraordinarily <laughs> stupid but the no, listeners I are used to that. I think you're fairly safe, Matt, to be honest. Stay with it, uh, Matt, because obviously Ben Compton's uh, very close. Thank you so much. As uh, White comes around the wicket, Compton uh, facing. Just uh, tucks that into the onside, up to mid-on. And uh, Luke Proctor fields. There's no run. His first ball of that over. Yeah, Compton... 96 from 171 so far and it's been another well I'd say another great start to the season last season didn't start too badly for Ben Compton it has to be said with the record breaking stays at the crease and run of centuries but uh, this one he could well have helped his side to victory against Northamptonshire into the offside and we'd have to say from a Northamptonshire point of view 
they had a rough ride on that first day. Yeah, it was interesting talking to um, a couple of the members of the coaching staff yesterday downstairs, and and um, they said they felt that they'd had they'd had two good. I said, you know, good day today, and he said mm. he actually he, th- he felt that we'd had two good days. They they they, thought they bowled well. A little bit more luck could have bowled Kent out probably for rather less than than 222. I'll come back to that in a second. There's White bowling to Compton. Compton flicked off his pads. This won't be the four he needs. It'll be a, a single more out towards a backward square leg. And uh, 198 for three. So they felt they'd had two good days, but the, the fly in the ointment was the 26 overs on, on Thursday when they were 89 for seven. And going to take something probably fairly remarkable to, to come back into the game if you're bowled out for for 117 um, but no, there, there, are, there are clearly some plus points to take out of the game, Chris Tremaine's been very good very encouraging debut from, from him as White bowls to leaning leaning, settling on that I'll drive into the offside fielded by Keogh Rob Keogh, excellent with the bat, obviously Gareth Berg played well. Hassan Azad on debut uh, worked really hard for that s- that 50 in the second innings. Luke Proctor got some runs. Ricardo Vasconcelos played well in the first innings. So, you know, there's there's plenty of of, of good things there, um, but it just hasn't really come together. I d- and I do think that that was absolutely crucial what happened on the on the first day and the fact they didn't extend the the innings a bit longer this morning. White to leaning. Well, that's guided away back with a square for him on the offside. And that'll be a single, one more to the total. That said, Matt, it does make you wonder, um, as you quite rightly say, that it does seem to have got very flat. Um, how many Northamptonshire actually would have needed to try and yeah. put any pressure on Kent at all? Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe psychologically 250s, you know, a, a little bit more to to think about but um, they've played this very very well these two especially Compton three away from his uh, century will be his 11th in first class cricket if he gets there and that's uh, another lovely shot gliding through the onside again with very bit, little back lift just timing that's a 200 up for cut Kenty takes the single there and they are now 27 away from victory and you feel it might not be very long there. They're freed up, and you can understand why these two batters as well, aren't they? They're playing with a, a, a degree of fluidity. Yeah, they know they're close, and this is very hard now for Northamptonshire. So Luke Proctor will strive once again from this uh, pavilion end. So interesting to see, um, to touch on this earlier, what the selection will be for the match against Middlesex starting mm. at uh, Northampton on Thursday. Um, whether, let's see, Emilio Gay, we know, is not going to be fit for it, but uh, whether... Ben Sanderson and or Tom Taylor come back into contention with a safe Zabe. They think about bringing him into the side somewhere. As Proctor bowls to Compton, just defends that off the off stump. And there is a no run. Just looking at um, record fourth wicket partnerships for uh, Kent against Northamptonshire, and obviously a very long way away from it. His two names to conjure with a record 296 by Kenneth Hutchings, of course, killed in the First World War, and Frank Woolley, who we were talking about earlier at Gravesend in 1908. It's Proctor to Compton, and just into the onside, just turns it with the angle coming round the wicket. No slips in now, just a, a gully. Though again, they've got men, well, got men close on the leg side this time for Proctor for that angle. Shortish square leg and mid wicket. Rob Keogh is warming up his shoulders, doing some twist and turns, rolling the head to get the next supple. So he may well be coming in for a, a last dart as Proctor keeps a little bit low on Compton, but and he's turned it straight to the man at mid-wicket and there's no run. I think I remember attaching the, uh, the copy to a pigeon on that uh, on that occasion at <coughs> bat and ball ground in, in 1908. <laughs> yeah, some time ago now. Surveying the field is Ben Compton. 98 from his 176 balls faced and uh, defending straight back at Proctor, and there's no run. It was lovely in the press box. We were talking about it with um, Peter Burrows when we were at lunchtime to see the the plaque to uh, to Dudley Moore, who was a great man of the, uh, the Kent press box. And I remember him 
very well and whenever still the score goes to 333 for free it's still known as a Dudley around the circuit Proctor from the pavilion in bowling to uh, Compton as he beat the man on the offside he has not Gareth Berg stops it athletically in the covers another dot ball it's lovely to see those uh, those plaques to the yeah. the great and good of the uh, County Press Corps around the, the circuit. We have one at Northampton to my predecessor as um, Wisdom Correspondent, Fred Speakman, who did a job for many, many years. Great character. Proctor once more, final ball of the over to Compton. Compton works that into the offside, just takes a single. He goes on to 99. And the score on to 201 for three, 26 to win Kent. Uh, theoretically 24 overs left in the day uh, to do it in and doesn't really strike me as a nervous 90s kind of person Ben Compton it all feels no, very very level headed isn't he yeah very aware of his own game Worcestershire have beaten Derbyshire by right. 8 wickets at Derby uh, 193 was the target got there for the loss of just 2 wickets um, the other games in division two you would think are heading for draws Glamorgan 76 for three against Gloucestershire still needing another 255 to win Leicestershire 245 for three against Yorkshire needing another 144 don't know how many overs there are to go but uh, make a decent fist of it so Compton to face Keogh he needs one for his ton and what an innings it's been whatever happens with this delivery Keogh has a short leg in Hassan Hazard a slip as well Vasconcelos He's got a, oh, a deepish gully there. Backward point. And a man at uh, cover, extra cover as well. Trying to work away to get past Compton. Keo to Compton. And uh, just dead bats that back at the bowler. Again, he doesn't look at all jittery on 99. I mean, I know he's, he's already played a massive part in this, but it gets into the players' heads. They love those... Uh, landmarks Compton faces then Keogh leaves it outside the off stump and there is no run just the uh, bowels whipped off by Lewis McManus replaced now Keogh comes in to Compton a little bit wide would he get a single from that no he won't pierce the field on the other side I thought that was it's the one shades of yesterday isn't it when <laughs> Rob Keogh was on 99 for about it 20 did. minutes I just felt it's a little bit wide that one perhaps a little bit short but Keogh comes now into uh, Compton who's on 99 Compton oh has he beaten him is that the edge I don't think he's straight outside his, his uh, crease attempted stumping by McManus as uh, rattled the stumps with his gloves yeah quick bit of work by McManus yeah. just, just did him in the air a little bit there didn't he Rob Keogh right. yeah it's deceived him two, ball, two balls of the over to come Keogh comes in now to bowl to Compton given width Compton still can't get past the man at, uh, <laughs> at cover he'll give it even more force this time it's looking around the field final ball of the over Will this be the one for Ben Compton? It won't. Good full length delivery and he's just uh, blocked it out to uh, to mid on. And there is no run. A maiden for Rob Keogh slowing everything down. <laughs> 26 to win for Kent. 201-4-3. Keogh number 25 from his nine. In that Leicestershire innings of 246 for three so far. Rishi Patel was 105 not out. Colin Ackerman made 72. All three wickets falling to Don Bess is already into his 23rd over. Three for 101. But uh, well, Leicestershire have got to have that, in fact, is T at, at uh, right. Headingley. So it's quite late. Yeah, I suppose they've still got a bit of a shot. I think Leicestershire again with a lot to take out of that, uh, a lot to take out of that game with the performance of uh, young Josh Hull in particular. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he said without a slightest hint of well, Handletown Cricket Club <laughs> bias. But um, you're right in any case. No, he's, he's had a, he's had a good game when he picked up three wickets in the second innings and. I think all test players, I believe. I haven't looked at the scores yet. Sales to Leaning. Who starts off to Jack Leaning with a single. In fact, they're going to come back for two as he punched that away through the covers past Rob Keogh. Goes out to Josh Carby once again. Finds himself 
sweeping on the cover boundary. You really would think he could pull rank and uh, get in the ring rather than having to run around in the outfield. Did himself no good in the first innings when he clattered into the into the boundary yeah, and true. just jarred his shoulder. Anyway, two to leaning. Who goes to 58? 203 for three. 24 to win. Leaning on strike. Sails in bowling to him. Cracks that away through the covers. More running for Josh Cobb to do, but this time he's just going to be running to retrieve the ball from the other side of the boundary rope because that's powered away to the rope by Jack Leaning for four. He goes to 62. 207 for three. James Sales again, rather we'd be saying about Jack White, it hasn't been his day, it hasn't really been James Sales' his day either with uh, with the ball. And the field changing now, they're bringing a man over from the leg side to reinforce the cover field. Gareth Berg is now in a, a sort of short extra cover position. The Sales comes in, bowls to Leaning, who drives and goes out to Keo in the covers. Keogh's in an orthodox extra cover position and Berg now on the drive with Proctor at mid off and Cobb sweeping at deep cover. The fielders were still moving around when James Sales bowled that previous delivery, but obviously Jack Leaning didn't notice. His Sales in again, bowls very full, dug out by Leaning. It bounces over James Sales' head, rolls up to mid off where Proctor Field sends in a return to Lewis McManus. It was nowhere near the stumps. <laughs> but it was that sort of just reminding the batter that he's still there leaning on 62 Compton on 99 partnership now worth 147 for the fourth wicket here's Sales in bowls and leaning is pushing forward up to Jack White at mid on and there's no run Somerset have lost another wicket, 147 for 6 now at Taunton, so they are 39 runs ahead with 4 wickets remaining. Still a little bit left in that one, I think. Here's Sales in again, bowls to Leaning, pushes it up to Jack White at mid-on. They come through for a single and Jack, Jack Leaning has nicked the bowling with... Ben Compton on 99, Leaning is 63, Compton 99, end of the over, 208 for 3, 19 to win. That's Jack Leaning is going to try and make sure that Ben Compton doesn't get another ball. 208 for 3, 19 to win, and, well, question of just uh, when, not if, I think now. Yeah, absolutely. James Sales brought on to see if he could get himself a wicket. Just put some late jeopardy in here, but 208 for 3. These two have uh, gone from a very stubborn start and opened up more. And looks like Kent could win this with a uh, with time to spare here. 22 overs minimum remaining. 19 to win. Leaning faces Keo now. Comes down the pitch to him. They take a a gentle single as he's just angled it into the onside. And a lot of applause. There. I'm looking down at my pad. I'm not quite sure what that's for. They enjoyed the 64, the 64th run, perhaps. I'm not quite perhaps sure. Perhaps just getting Ben Compton back on strike. <laughs> it could be that, couldn't it? Certainly. He's on 99. Is Ben Compton heroics last season, and started off with a century in his first match for Kent, and he'll try and do the same the start of this season. But he leaves this one outside the off stump a bit. Lower arm from Keogh has uh, bowled that quickly to um, Compton. Keo turns back. There's a slip in and uh, a short leg as he bowls to Compton. No, he's not beaten the field on the offside there either. So Josh Cobb with a scrum half pass more or less, two handed to uh, to Keo. Keo round the wicket now to Ben Compton. Compton, oh, has he beaten him outside the off stump? He has. McManus takes the uh, the bales off once again. Compton's not charging him so he's inside his ground but that's another dot ball and Ben Compton well maybe he'll just be going through his mind now Ben Compton that uh, he's been on 99 for a, a few balls now but Keo bowling to Compton goes to sweep and that will be his hundred and a little punch of the air by Ben Compton supporters around the ground on their feet saluting the Kent opener 
103 he goes to, 190 balls, 12 fours. And anchor Kent through this innings, an important time through losing uh, three batting partners quite quickly as they try to get towards the 227 they need to win. Kent here, and Ben Compton has gone a long way to taking them there. The partnership, he and uh, Jack Leaney, has gone to 150 as well, 153 between the two, 213 for three, 14 more to win. And after that, he leaves the next one, end of the over, 14 left to win, and uh, congratulations to Ben Compton, his 11th century of his first-class career. Yeah, well played. He really has done the job perfectly for his side. And you just look at the strike rate. The first 50 off 99 balls, second 50 off 91 balls. He hasn't looked to step it up. He's just done exactly what he had to do. His game awareness is superb. We mentioned earlier that he'd soaked up pressure, soaked up pressure, and then it was that little over, was it just after lunch when you know, the, the, the scoring rate had just almost dried to a trickle and then just a couple of loose balls of Jack White, wasn't it? Put them away, I think it was three, four, four, two, ten runs off three balls. The innings is moving again, and it's because he was patient and he was prepared to wait and he showed good judgment. It's been terrific innings from Ben Compton and thoroughly deserves to take Kent to victory as it will and he'll hopefully to be there he'll hope to be there at the end his sails then bowling to leaning who's on the back foot turning it up to jack white who has to make a bit of ground to his right from mid on so they're coming through for a single leaning is 65 kent 214 for three 13 more runs to win mentioned um, rory burns have been having a bowl with that game drifting to a draw at old trafford sorry against lancashire ollie pope's having a bowl now as well so not a particularly edifying spectacle, I wouldn't have thought. No disrespect to Wally Pope. Here's Sales in, bowls to Compton, plays it up to Proctor at mid on. And there's no run. There's the um there's still a bit of mileage in that Yorkshire Leicestershire game. If Leicestershire could win that. Gosh, what a start to the season that yeah, would be. Yeah, absolutely. Well against yeah, you know, Yorkshire a powerful county, relegation yeah. or no relegation. They'll be looking at that declaration, won't they? They'll be arguing about that at the moment. Here's Sales in, bowls to Compton, who's forced onto the back foot, plays it up to White at mid-off, and uh, there's no run. Oh yes, there'll be there'll be ructions if uh, if Yorkshire lose on a declaration. They they were very very conservative at Northampton at the beginning of last year, batted on and on and on, and uh, left Northamptonshire with a totally impossible target. But in the end, Northamptonshire managed to bat through best part of four sessions to save the match is sales in bowls to Compton works it away into the big gap at mid wicket they're going to come back for a couple of runs with Josh Cobb out there on the boundary two more to Compton he goes to 105 and a, sorry. 216 for three sorry well, here's man. a stat for you sorry on Ben Compton mm. thank you Liam in the office he scored a century on Easter Sunday in successive seasons oh, right <laughs> Lancashire day four here last year Sunday the 17th of April there we go wonderful <laughs> here's sales short pulled away by Compton for four that just sat up and asked to be dispatched and Ben Compton needed no second invitation pulls it away for four he goes to 109 and Kent to 220 for three just seven more runs required one ball to go in this over it's a bit like um, a bit like the the Berg Keo partnerships, isn't it? Two successive April the 8th in uh, in two years. Big partnerships between those two, but not enough mm -hmm. for Northamptonshire in this game. Here's Sales. Bowls again to Compton down the leg side. He's got something on it. It's gone away for four. It's four runs. So, well, James Sales hasn't really had a particularly marvellous afternoon. 11 runs off that over. He's gone for 30 off his four overs. And Kent now on the brink, 224 for three. Compton is 113. Leaning is 65, 224 for three. So three to win. See him home, Matt. Thank you, Radders. Yeah, it's been a great contest, this. Very, very exciting. I'm not just saying that as uh, obviously commentating on behalf of the station that follows the team around that looks like they're going to victory, but what a great four days we've had. It has, and, and again, it's one of those where the, we, we did mention earlier the the margin of victory won't really reflect what's what's happened no, in the game but Kent, at all. Kent Worthy winners bowled really well in that first innings built the lead um, and although Northampton had a terrific fight back yesterday to give themselves a chance Kent knocked over the three wickets this morning which they had to do and then they've 
After some early alarms and excursions, these two have done a terrific job. Keo then to uh, try and eke something out here, but just three to win for Kent as he bowls to Leaning. It's a, a floating, looping delivery there, given plenty of air. Leaning's not uh, going to be drawn into uh, charging it though, and he just plays it into the offside and it's defended. Keo's second ball of this over, Leaning it was more intent there. It's a misfield, a rare one for Northamptonshire and they trot through for a single. So Ben Compton on 113 may yet have the honour, and perhaps he should have the honour, of uh, of scoring the winning runs here. Having said that, Leaning's done a, a great job with them as well, did exactly what was required, and eventually, perhaps just the pitch flattening out too much for Northamptonshire to have real hopes of, certainly after the tee of a breakthrough, their... Um, I thought about to crowd the batter there, but actually, as has has gone to a sort of leg gully, Compton angled it out towards the offside, scores level then, and uh, applause for that, 2-2-6 two, two, for three, Compton on to 114, and Jack Leaning waits for Keogh to come over the wicket at the pavilion end. Everyone trying to save the single at this point. <laughs> Can't blame them for trying. Game to the end, Northampton really have played their part in this. Could easily have taken uh, victory. Circumstance being different on the first day, it feels like. It's a really good contest between these two sides. A defensive shot, or a, sorry, a gentle drive, I would say, into the onside. It's been stopped. And there is no run. Keo then to Leaning. Uh, leaning pushes in the offside and will that be the winning run it might be a run oh. out it is the winning run in the end it was a risky one but they have taken victory jack leaning goes on to 67 ben compton 114 these two to put together 167 for the fourth wicket to take kent home the victory target 227 never looked like it was going to be straightforward and when joe denley went just after lunch there were real fears that Kent might be skittled out on a tricky pitch, as it was. They've seen off the best of the bowling, Jack Leaning and Ben Compton. Leaning with a 50, Compton with a century to start the season and have taken victory here by seven wickets. They'll take themselves 19 points from this game as the players shake hands. It's an opening to the season, a victory for Kent here at Canterbury in the sunshine against Northamptonshire. Yeah, and as I say, well played. Congratulations to Kent. Congratulations in particular to, to Ben Compton for a beautifully crafted innings. Jack Leaning as well, supporting really well. As I say, Northamptonshire, as you quite rightly say, Matt, played a, a role, big role in this game. And, and certainly, I just think if they'd managed to maybe bat a little bit longer this morning, perhaps set Kent a little bit more. It might have been a different story. It might not have been, as you say. It, it has flattened out a bit, but... Um, these two played so well. Northamptonshire put themselves in a position at 60 for three just after lunch where they had a certainly had a sniff, needed then to break this partnership early. We did say at the time that Ben Compton was going to hold the key to it. He certainly has. Jack Leaning provided the support that he needed and deserved applause for Ben Compton and for Jack Leaning as he leaves the field, as you can hear. And the Northamptonshire players following on behind. Kent winning in the end with, let's work out how many overs there were to go, plenty. Um, about 20 odd overs, yeah, wasn't it, to spare? So yeah. Won it fairly comfortably, but uh, congratulations to Kent and look forward to seeing you at Northampton at the end of June. I think the return will be will be a great match. I mean, notwithstanding the first day, which uh, Northampton had the worst of the conditions, I'm not going to over egg that but I think these are two very well matched sides yes. so we could have a, a great competition they have been over the past couple of years as well haven't they we've had, had some, some great we've contests. had some terrific games of cricket between us so as we mentioned earlier I think they sort of brings th bring the best out of each other and uh, let's hope that's uh, very much the case not least because the first day of the uh, return match at Northampton will be former players day at uh, Wantage Road so that'll be a bit of a special day as well well, it's been a pleasure to work with you as always Andrew Rad Rad you Matt absolutely looking forward to uh, coming up to Wantage Road should I get the nod? It might be my colleague Ben Watts who will be 
chomping at the bit to get some cricket. As, uh, he comes back with us at the beginning of May. But uh, that's all to come. 2-2-7 two, two, for 3. Kent finish. Uh, they've won this one by 7 wickets. There'll be an update coming on BBC Radio Kent's radio frequencies very shortly. Thank you so much for listening, all of you, and for your emails and your tweets and just your company uh, through this match. Hope you've enjoyed it. It went this way and that. Northampton supporters. I don't think you'll be disappointed. But your side played really well in this one. And uh, just pit by Kent at the end. We look forward to your company in future matches. Northamptonshire next up. Uh, Middlesex at Wantage Road on Thursday. Kent will be at Edgbaston to play Warwick today. And our countries will both start uh, around about 11 o'clock on Thursday morning. Weather permitting, obviously, <laughs> in April. Thank you for your company. And for the moment, goodbye. <laughs>